basically, the way Arabic is now um, is is that it's um, Arab Arabic speakers when um, when people grow up speaking Arabic. Uh, they grow up in a situation which is, is called, technically, it's called diglossia, if you're interested. It's, it's called a situation of diglossia, um, which means, uh, means that there are basically two different languages. Uh, you basically grow up having to know two different languages. One language to, uh, to write and, and read and, and listen to the news in, and then another language to communicate daily and to um, um, talk with people in general um, and um, and that's kind of uh, the, the mother tongue um, basically is, is is one language and then in, or, in order to 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 learn how to read and write you have to go to school and learn a second language that's pretty much the situation of Arabic today in that um, there are similarities between written and spoken Arabic uh, a lot of it is, is very similar and a lot of it is the same, but um, they're pretty much different languages. Um, the spoken Arabic is, is um, for the most part, based off of the, the written Arabic. Um, but if you learn one, you would, would usually have, have trouble uh, understanding, understanding the other if you didn't have any experience in the other. Um, if, uh, now, the... The way that Arabic is, is written and read, um, that Arabic is typically called, um, or at least in, uh, from the Western academic perspective, called uh, Modern Standard Arabic, or MSA for short, Modern Standard Arabic. Um, so that's the Arabic that, that, that we're going to be learning. Um, if you spoke, if you learnt Modern Standard Arabic and then you went to say Cairo, for example, and you spoke modern standard Arabic to people in the street, um, they'd understand you. Um, most people are just generally exposed to, to modern standard Arabic. And like I said, it's, it's very similar to the Arabic that, um, uh, that they speak there as well, but they'd think, you'd be, they'd think you're quite strange. I mean, they'd, they'd tell immediately that you're a foreigner if, uh, uh, if you didn't already look foreign already. Um, and, um, and it would be like... Um, I mean, imagine, uh, imagine someone coming up to you and speaking like how Shakespeare wrote his poetry. How art thou? Alas! You know, it's, that, was, that was the kind of English that was there in, uh, in uh, a few centuries ago, 1500s, that kind of time. The modern standard Arabic is very much, the modern standard Arabic um, is pretty much the same as the Arabic of, of the Qur'an with a, a few differences of, uh, of, of grammar. They're pretty much the, the same language. A few differences in grammar, a lot of difference in vocabulary, but it's pretty much the same language. Um, and so the Quran um, was, uh, was revealed in the seventh century. And so that's more than, more than double the distance between the English we speak now and Shakespeare's English. Is, is what Quranic Arabic is to the Arabic that, that's spoken today. And so, and so it's, uh, a lot of change has happened in, in the language, and so it's, it's very... Um, um, it, would be, it would be odd for, for you to be speaking modern standard Arabic to, um, um, to, to regular people in, in the Arab world. Um, and then, just from country to country or place to place, the different dialects of spoken Arabic are, are very different. Um, Arabic is considered one language and then kind of modern standard Arabic and, um, um, and the different colloquial or spoken Arabic such as, such as Egyptian Arabic and, um, uh, and Moroccan Arabic and, and um, Levantine or maybe Lebanese Syrian Arabic. Um, they're all called Arabic but uh, we could view them as completely different languages as well, such that some of them are so different that they're as different as um, French, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, and Italian are, are different from, from each other. All of those languages come from Latin originally, but, um, but they, 
they're completely different languages. If you didn't have much ex exposure to uh, to another one of them, you you might not really be able to to understand what's going on. But what we're learning um, is modern standard Arabic, inshallah, and um, um, this is known in Arabic also as al fusha, al fusha. I write that on the board. Next thing here, al fusha. Everyone say after me, al fusha, al fusha. Um, so al fusha literally means the the most eloquent. The most eloquent, and um, and so it's um, this is it's considered the most eloquent speech. It's uh, it's a lot more. It, it I mean to me, it, it sounds a lot better. It has more of a structure, more of a of a, of a grammar. Um, you can make more sense of it than you can with uh, uh, more than you can with um, with colloquial with spoken Arabics. Um, so this is this is what we'll we'll be learning inshallah. The writing system in in Arabic, if uh, if no one is familiar with it, in in English we write from left to right, but Arabic goes. So for example, in the word al fusha, from. I apologize, the pen isn't that good from from this angle. Um, but the main idea, Arabic goes from right to left. And so when we think about this, this is the beginning of, of, of thinking about, uh, about Arabic from, from a broader perspective. The reality of this language is that it is, it is the language in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, exalted be he, chose to reveal his final, uh, it's the language through which he chose to reveal his final revelation. And the only revelation which, which is promised to, to last unchanged and, uh, uh, until, until close to the last day. And so there's a difference of opinion among the scholars as to whether Arabic is divinely inspired as in, it's a divine language that, that, uh, that Allah ultimately taught to Adam um, and then it, it came down and was preserved in a certain way up to the time of, uh, of Muhammad, uh, peace and prayers be upon them both. Um, there are some scholars who say, who say that's the case. There are some scholars who say, um, who say no, it's, it's a human language, um, but ultimately um, it, it has so much significance um, that um, that we can talk about many layers of its significance. In that it was it was the language that uh, Allah has um, uh, chose to reveal his um, his final message in. Regardless, it's it's the language of the Quran. It's the language that uh, that Allah and and His Messenger peace and prayers be upon him used. Um, and so and so there is a lot of significance in this language. Uh, a lot more than, than we could find in, in other languages. So, for example, when we think about writing from right to left, we can think about the significance of that as well. That's not, that's not just arbitrary. It's not that that's, that's completely without reason. When we think that on the last day, we get a book of deeds, inshallah, with all of us being good people with good intentions, we receive them with our right hand. Whereas those, uh, whereas those who have not done so well in life get them with their left hand or behind their back with their left hand. Um, and so we're always encouraged to do things with our right hand in our tradition, to, to, to eat with our right hand, to drink with our right hand, to shake hands with, um, with our right hand. And, um, and so there's significance that and significance in, in our tradition starting on the right is something recommended to do, something noble. And so therefore, even the writing system starts from the right. Another important thing to, to note about the structure of Arabic. Uh, 
the uh, two two aspects of, of the Arabic language, uh, which uh, uh, which are, are very important, both of which uh, give it meaning. Basically, every word, every complete word in Arabic can be broken down into two things. Every word in Arabic can be broken down into a form and broken down to its root. A form is kind of the, the ultimate uh, grammatical structure of that, of that word. Um, and then the, the root is the particular letters in, in that word that, that have meaning. And, and both of these provide that word with meaning. So I'll give, I'll give a few examples. Um, if, um, if we look at the, um, the intention of Imam al-Haddad um, that we have, um, we see, let's see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of the English transliteration of it. Um, so if we look at the, at the fifth line, it says Nawaitu. Is everyone there? If we see, if we see the, the fifth line. Nawaitu. So Nawaitu Ta'alluma. So so the the first word Nawaitu means means I intend. Or I have intended. Um at ta'alluma ta'alluma is uh, is learning. So the form for this is the The word learning is ta'allum. This isn't, uh, it isn't Im so important um, um, to, to know this word right now. Um, and so it's not, it's not part of the, the vocab list. Um, but I just give this an example. Ta'allum. Okay? Ta'allum. Now, now the, um, uh, the next word after that, it says nawaitu ta'alluma wa ta'alima. The, the wa and some of the other symbols, they're not really words in itself. Wa means and. So when it says, نَوَيْتُ التَّعَلُّمَ وَالتَّعْنِيمَ uh, It's um, learning and teaching. So the, the basic word that, that's in there, removed of, of the grammatical markers around it, is تَعْنِيم تَعْنِيم So, in these two words, these two words are words that have the same root. The same root, but not the same form. Same root, but different forms. The root of them is a. Ah. This is a letter in Arabic, like I said, we'll be getting to it. It's the letter ain. A, a, n, lam, and meme. A, l, m. Even though there are other words, uh, other um, letters that that are common between them, um, these are basically the the important ones: the a, uh, the lam, uh, the ain, the lam, and the meme. Who can tell me anything uh, on this pattern? Maybe another word you might have heard that. That is like this. That is kind of based on the same root. Knowledge. How do we say knowledge in Arabic? And? Exactly. Knowledge in Arabic is ilm. Is this is this big enough, Musa? You think? Okay. Okay. Right. Ilm. Ah. L. M. Same root. Word for knowledge in Arabic is, has the same root as the word for teaching and the word for learning. Any other words people can think of, maybe? Alim, good. One of the names of Allah, the knowledgeable one. Al Alim. Al Alim. Right, Allah, the knowledgeable, the knower. Also, we have alim. Alim. 
right? Alim is literally one who knows, or really uh, also a scholar, um, someone who, um, uh, someone knowledgeable. Ulama is the plural of that word. Ulama is um, is uh, literally um, knowers, um, um, though um, um, typically it means it means scholars, kind of in a, in a technical way. All of these, same root, different form. The whole root, what does the root have to do with? What does, what does, what does this particular root, what does it have to do with? It all has to do with knowledge, right. It all has to do with knowledge. And then these, these words are uh, derived from, um, from this root. Um, they all have to do with knowledge. So the most knowledgeable, someone who is knowledgeable. Knowledge itself, um, teaching, which is ultimately giving knowledge to others, making others more knowledgeable, um, and then ta'allum, learning, making oneself knowledgeable, right? All of these things. Now, if we now refer back to, to again, the intentions, here we have nawaitu ta'allum wa ta'alima wa tadhakkura wa tadhkira. So now we have <coughs> So Tadakura the both of these once again same root different form Here we go. The root is ذال كاف را ذك را. Do we know any other any other words that that kind of look like that? Vicar, right? Vicar. And the reason I that I underline the the dh uh, in here, um, and as I underline these, are uh, to show you that it's not it's not the Ikr, daha ikr, right? It's this is this is one letter in Arabic, the one that's being underlined. It's one sound, v, dhikr. right? So, what does dhikr literally mean? Remembrance, right? Remembering, remembrance, dhikr. So we can see tadkir, tadkir. When when we see nawaitu ta'alim wa ta'alim wa tadkura wa tadkura wa tadkira, if we skip down to the to the translation. Um, I intend to study and teach to remember and remind. So, tadakkur, reminding oneself, tadkir, reminding others, right? Remembering and reminding others. So, all of these words, these words, have to do with, um, um, have to do with remembrance and remembering. They all have the same root but different form. These two across here, same form, but different root. So we see here, we have tadakkur, sounds like ta'allum, right? The only thing that's different between those two is the root. A'l-m versus dhakara. Tadakkur and ta'allum. Tadkir and ta'alim. They sound similar, right? So the the form of them is is giving the meaning too. This general form of ta mm, a mm. Okay, it's a little hard to say without having anything in it. Uh, the general form here of let's see ta. See? See how this is kind of the general form? Tadakkur, ta'allum, ta'allum. And then the second one too. So that's the, and then the second one. Everyone see, see how that works out? Kind of. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in one place while writing this. Not the best handwriting. 
Um, so this is the same form between them, but different root. So this form has to do with you take the root and you're making others doing that or helping others with that. When we get down to the... Um, um, uh, when we know the root, we take that root meaning. So with alama, root meaning of knowledge. So we're making others knowledgeable, giving others knowledge. Root meaning of dhakara, remembrance. We're giving others a, rem uh, a remembrance, helping others remind. Uh, yeah, helping others remember, reminding. So reminding versus um, teaching. The one above them, same form. Form of... Um, doing something for oneself. Doing something that, that root meaning for oneself. So, vikr, helping oneself to remember, to remembering or reminding oneself. Ta'allum, giving oneself knowledge, in a sense, learning. Right? And there, there are, of course, other, um, many other um, uh, examples that. The possibilities are endless. Ultimately, that that if we have if we have a root that we know, um, and typically Arabic is a triliteral system, so typically you have three root letters. Though sometimes you'll find two or four, um, or potentially, I mean, potentially with maybe some foreign words, you, you'd find like a five root um, uh, five root word, but that's very rare. Typically, it's it's almost always three root letters, sometimes two, sometimes four. Um, if you have those three root letters, then you can put it into these forms and basically play around with it and make other words from, from the forms. So, for example, um, um, we have... Um, so long. Let's see, one, one good example I can think of. Um, if we if we take a form, say for example, um, I'm just blanking on, on something that that works out completely. Um, I can't think of anything concrete right now, but let's say kind of hypothetically, almost. Take for example, uh, imam. Imam. The root of it is is uh, hamza. Uh, mm, mm. Uh, mm, mm. So, so if we were to say, um, although I haven't really come across this word, if we were, if we were to say uh, tetmim, tetmim, it would mean to put someone in front, because the uh, mm, mm means uh, means uh, literally has to do with being in front. So this would be to put someone in front. If we said tetmim or uh, taammum, taammum, maybe to to make oneself in front right and so and so basically if you if you get um, um, you can if you take these words down to their um, to their root uh, you can play around with them and and this is how Arabic is formed basically form through meaning coming from form and root uh, one last example say for example al fusha I haven't really heard this in, in these forms, but if we put it, the root is <laughs> So if we put it in this form, tafsih, uh, tafsih, to make something or make someone uh, more uh, more eloquent, tafsih. So say you're um, uh, you're sending someone to Arabic classes. Well, and someone says, well, why are you sending your child to Arabic classes? Well, I'm, I'm doing it for that tafsih, so that they can be more eloquent, right? I'm making them more eloquent. That's just, just an example um, that, that you can put words in, into these forms. And that's how, that's how we gain, uh, we gain uh, the meaning in, in Arabic. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, uh, the all merciful, the most compassionate, um, and peace and prayers upon his Prophet and Messenger Muhammad and upon his family and his companions until the last day. So first we'll start with um, with three letters in Arabic. Um, the um,
When we get into, into writing Arabic, uh, it's important to, to understand a few things. One, um, one that in, in English, when we write English, um, typically each, each letter, we have, we have two forms of each letter. Right? We have a capital, we have an uppercase, uh, upper uh, capital, and lowercase. Um, and then what, how that's written is, depends on, you know, whether it's uppercase or, uppercase or lowercase, depends on the kind of writing we're writing or its position in the sentence, something like that. Um, in Arabic, basically there, there are potentially four different ways that each letter can, can be written. In, our, in English, we have a choice of, of joining up letters, joining them together or not. So, for example, um, when, when I first learned to write, I, I wrote my name like that, Adrian. And then, actually, what you learn in, um, in British schooling is you learn, you learn joined up writing, which is interesting. It's basically, it's basically writing everything like that, only linking the words. It looks like a rather messy form of cursive. Right? Joined up writing. But then also in, in America too, we learn, we learn cursive, which is easier. So basically, um, basically, in, in English, we have a choice between, between writing each letter separately or writing them together. And usually in certain contexts, we'll, we'll see it um, one way, like you typically won't see um, signs and things like that written all joined together. You'd see it with, with letters separate. Um, but in Arabic, uh, you don't really have a choice. In Arabic, we have to write everything connected. So, as possible, within a word, every, every letter connects to the one that um, um, connects to the other words around it. Now, there are some letters in Arabic um, that just based on their form, they can't connect to what comes after it. But every word, every letter in, in Arabic can connect to the letter that comes before it. That will make more sense as we go on and start practicing and we, we get examples and, and get, some of the, get some of the letters under our belt. The first letter that we'll go over today is ba. Everyone say ba. 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 Okay. So the name of the letter, the name of the letter is ba. The sound of the letter is, it's just like in English, b, ba, 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 right? Now it's important to, that we distinguish between the name of a letter and the sound of a letter. Because if I give you, once again, if I, if I say, if I give you this word, this word in English, we don't say this word is beity. Beity, right? We say it's bat. Because we understand there's a difference between the name of a letter. We understand this letter's named B, this one is A, this one is T. We don't say all the names together. Right? This is sometimes sometimes we, we make the, this mistake when when starting Arabic, we say the names of the letter instead of the sound of the letter. So the name of the of, of this letter is bat. Everyone once again, bat. Bat. But the sound it makes is b, b, b. Right? Okay, so every letter in Arabic can potentially have four different forms. One form is when it's, when it's alone, when it stands alone and isn't connected to any letters, it has a particular form. 
then when it begins a word, it has its own particular form too. I.e., when it's the first when it's the first letter in the word, and there are letters that are coming after it. It could potentially have a different form when it's in the middle of a word. And then finally, when it's at the end, i.e. there's a letter coming before it, but not a letter after it, then um, it, has, uh, it has a certain way to be written too. And a lot of the letters uh, are almost identical in, in these. Uh, most of them it looks pretty similar. Some of them, they look uh, kind of not so similar. So it just depends on the letter um, what, what you have to work out for that. So t take, for example, but but Bismillah. Just like as in Bismillah. Everyone say Bismillah. 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 Right, it begins with a bat. So bat alone its basic form, if you're just writing the letter, you start slightly above the line, you go down to the line, go now across the line a bit, like uh, along the line, just above it, and then curve up. You do that, and then you put a dot under it. And that's our bat. I'll do that a few more times. Start above the line. Go now on the line, come up above the line. So it almost, it, it kind of has a hook on either side. It's, it's a line on the line with a hook on either side. And then, very important, a dot under the line. Just like that. So we'll go through we'll go through the four forms of this, and then I'll come around and, and take a look at everyone, see see that everyone's everyone's getting it. So ideally, with each with each form that we learn to, you write out on your paper, write it out several times, um, so I can see how your handwriting is and, and see if there's anything to anything to check. When it begins the letter. It's basically going to, to lose um, that, that last part of itself, and it's just, it's just a tooth, pretty much. It's, it's basically a tooth. We have something sitting above the line, and then we go on. And the dot is below that tooth. So see here, when it stands alone, the dot goes in the middle of the whole letter. This is the whole letter, and we have the dot resting below the line in the middle of the whole letter. When it's, when it's a tooth, it goes just below the tooth. So we're going, and then this line means it's going on to the next letter, whatever the next letter is in the sentence. Starting above the line, now going on the line, and then on to the next letter with the dot under the tooth. Make sure it's not too tall, too. We say, you know, if we think about the whole length of the, of, of the line we have, this is, say, say this, this distance right here is the tallest that, that a letter possibly could be on the page. So make sure it's not completely going up like, like this. The pens aren't so great. Um, yeah, make sure it's not completely going up like that. Then it starts looking like another letter. Yeah, no, go ahead. The B is at the beginning of a word. Yep. A, when it stands alone, B at the beginning of a word, M in the middle of a word, and then E at the end of a word. <clears throat> when it's in the middle, we have that tooth again. Only we're coming into the tooth.
So, <coughs> excuse me. If we have a letter, if the letter that, it, that comes before it is connecting to it, then we're coming in from that letter, we go up for the tooth, and then we go on with a dot under that tooth. So coming in from another letter, up for a tooth, and then along to the next letter. In from the previous letter, up for a tooth, and on to the next letter. And then finally, when it's at the end of a word, it's like we're coming into the uh, the position where um, it's like we're coming into the form when it's alone. So we're coming in from a previous letter. We'll go up for a tooth, and then we go along the line, and then and then up again. And we have a dot. Now, just like when it's alone, we have a dot in the middle of the form of the whole letter. And also, if, um, um, if any sisters uh, or anyone is having a, having a hard time, make sure to, um, to, to sit closer. You know, we'll say if, uh, if any sisters in their back are, are having a hard time seeing, then, then perhaps you can sit on, on the side here too. Um, so there's kind of like front in general for brothers, um, a few feet behind for sisters, but then brothers will stick to like this general area, if any sisters need, need, then they'll have kind of that side too, if they need to be closer to the board. One more time for the end form. So we're coming in from a, coming in from a previous letter. Now we go up for that tooth, along the line, and then up for a final tooth or tail with a dot in the middle of the letter there. Okay, I'm going to come around and, and, and check everyone's right. You know, it says, as I've been seeing things, um, one, make sure that at, at alone and the end forms, um, the, <clears throat> the two teeth uh, uh, at either end of the bat, they're the same height. Um, and then make sure that, that the tooth of the bat isn't too high. It only goes up, once again, say, if the total... Um, height of the line is, is about up to there. It's only gonna, gonna go up about um, uh, a third or uh, maybe halfway up the total height of the line. It's not gonna go all the way up. There's some letters that will go all the way up, um, one of which we'll, we'll learn today. Um, so make sure it's not too tall. So now, the next letter that's the number two for today, is the ta. Everyone say ta. Ta. So the sound of it, once again, like the bat, the sound is t, t, t. The name of the letter is ta. Um, now, this letter, and then the next one will do as well, they have the same, they actually have the same basic form as the bat. They look like the bat, they differ in dots, in the way that the dots are placed. So I'll show you. So we have, when it stands alone, we have that same form of the bat, along the line with, with two teeth, sorry. Just don't do the dot below the line. Instead, we have two dots, above the line, or above the letter, sitting in that cup there, almost, the cup that's formed by the, by the way the letter is written. The same form as the bat, only different types of dots.
And now this is going to be the same for all the forms here. So I'm not going to go slowly through um, writing out each, uh, each way the form is. Um, just kind of um, copy what, what we did, how we learned to do the bat. Just make sure, once again, so if everyone could look up here. Now, when we're making the tooth, when it's just one tooth, so either when it's at the beginning of a word or in the middle, those dots are going to go right above the tooth, right above that tooth, sitting above it, not after it. The best way is to put them right above the tooth, just like how for the bat, we have the dot right below the tooth. For the third letter, like I said, it's going to have the same, same kind of form, only different dots. So we have that, well, first of all, the letter is called Everyone say, that. That. Right, so the letter is like the sound. Th in English, th, 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 th. And this letter has same basic form, but then it has three dots. Two dots and then one dot above those two dots. This is the th. So an important note about how to pronounce this letter. In English, uh, when, we have, when we have TH written out in, in English, TH can really mean uh, one of two sounds. It's not just one sound in itself. So, for example, if, if I say... Um, Just, uh... 
Okay. Let's say these words together. First, we have this. Then we have there. There. Then we have thief. Thief. Then we have theme. Theme. Can everyone tell there's a difference in the way these sound? The first two are, the sound is th. The second two, the last two, the sound is th. Right? The difference between them basically gets down to if your vocal, if your vocal cord is working on the letter or not. So, if I say one of the bottom ones, so thief. If I take the, the first sound in thief or theme and extend it, so I say I feel it's pretty light. There's a lot of air coming out there and it's all coming out basically right here. Air coming out here. If, however, I do the same with, with these two, the first sound in this or theme, or this or there, excuse me, I go there's more than air coming out. You can, if you put your finger, if you put your hand on your on your vocal cord, you can feel that there's vibration there. Everyone do that hand on the vocal cord. This, this, there, there, that, that. Does everyone feel that vibration there? So now try, now try feeling the difference between this and thief with your hand here everyone feel there's a difference there so that that is this one right here it's the second of the two the tha in Arabic here <clears throat> these these two sounds are actually they're both in Arabic so we'll get to the Arabic letter that corresponds to the th sound. But right now, we have the th sound, as in thief and theme. Th. So it's without vibration here. That's important to pay attention to because, because in English, th could mean, could mean either one of those. One more note now about, about writing the letters. Sometimes you, you'll find with some of the letters in, in Arabic, there's a, way, there's a way to write them that if they were completely printed out well, this is a way that you would see them written out or printed, say, in a book. But if you were to write them with your own handwriting, then there are some almost like shortcuts you do. You don't write them completely the same way. So, when we have these, these dots here, when we have these, um, uh, a number of dots, more than one dot, when we're writing the, the, the Arabic word in, in handwriting, we're not going to take the time to do all of those dots, actually. Some people do, but it's very rare. Native Arabic speakers and people who, who use Arabic a lot, they realize that it saves a lot of time um, to not pick up the pen to do each individual dot. Therefore, the dots get joined. So, so instead of having those two dots there, you have a line. You write the, the basic form of it and then like that. Showing that that's basically, it means there's two dots there. And this is basically for any letter in Arabic in which there are two dots on the letter, typically when you're writing it. And so what I, what I want to see now um, when I see your homework is, um, you know, I, I'd at least like to see at least for some time you try doing it with connecting them because it's a lot easier and that's where you at least have to get used to seeing that. Because if, if anyone writes Arabic for you, gives you something in Arabic and, and they've written it out, it's, it's almost always going to be with, with the dots connected.
Similarly for the for the fat, we typically don't write out all those dots. It becomes a hat almost. That's how it's connected. The three dots get connected by a hat. <clears throat> so it might be kind of tricky to distinguish between, between these three letters now. Three letters, same kind of basic form, only different numbers of dots. Well, how do you tell the, how do you tell the, the difference between them? There, there are various tricks that you can use. One, one way um, that, that I think about it is for bat, there's one dot where? Below the line, right, on the bottom or below the line. Bat, one dot below the line. For ta, we have two dots, right? Two dots for ta, and for tha, Three, exactly. Tha, three dots. Also helps you if you're having, having trouble remembering which one is it, the or th, that, that this letter symbolizes. You think three, because it has three dots. Th, three, right? One dot below the line for ba, two dots for ta, and three dots for tha. So any questions about, about these before we, before we go on to some vowels? Yes? Um, when you do this and you connect the dots, is it difficult to mistake those signs for the sakun or the, the vowel? Is it easy? How is, maybe, I don't want to go to test, but yeah, how yeah. is it distinguished when there's a vowel that may come with that? Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that today, inshallah. Yeah, because we'll be going over um, uh, some of the vowel signs and we'll show the difference between telling between, the difference between um, these symbols and the vowel signs. Yeah, inshallah. Okay. Uh, now, once again, the, this class, I'm doing it kind of packed, packed together. Uh, the last time I did it, it was two times a week. Uh, Wednesdays and, and Sundays. Um, this time I'm doing it only once a week because um, that I think works better for. Uh, it seemed it seemed like it was going to work better for people um, getting to the class and being it on. A, uh, it's it's usually easier to make a Sunday than it is a, a Wednesday evening. Um, but that also means that that it's going to um, we're going to be covering a lot of material in each Sunday. So I know that. Um, you might not be getting everything completely during this class period. Don't, don't worry, don't worry, alhamdulillah. We just make dua that Allah instills in us the knowledge and the understanding to, uh, to, to understand, understand the language of his book, the language of his prophet, peace be upon him. Um, and, um, and so don't worry if you don't immediately get it, but um, understand it, it's just going to take a bit of, a bit of work outside of class. And then, inshallah, we'll have we'll have the videos uh, online too. If um, um, if if you didn't get anything and you want to go back, go back to that and go back to the explanation. So last last class period, last Sunday, I had to we had to end kind of short because the battery ran out on the video. Alhamdulillah. Um, but I was going to go into some of the aspects of the um, um, of how kind of the history of the Arabic language and, and how the way it was written developed historically. In Arabic, when you typically see words on a page in Arabic, um, words, um, unless you know the word, you wouldn't really know you wouldn't really know how to pronounce it. In English, um, actually, in, in English, it's um, 
it's pretty, uh, I don't know, we have our own trouble in, in English. Like English, spelling, pronunciation, ba based on spelling, it's a complete mess when you think about it. Um, when you think about it, uh, this is one example I was given one time. If you write out, wow, this is a dirty red pen. Does that pick up on the video also? Okay. If you write this word out in English, okay, how would, how would you see this? First of all, has anyone ever seen this example before? Okay. Okay, so how do you think you would say this? Goatee. Goatee. Okay, that's a, that's, a, that's a reasonable guess. Right. Um, but, if you take the GH in tough, take the O in women, and take the TI in nation, now how do you pronounce that? What is this word? What is the word? Close? Close. Come on, come on. So we had, we had one person say fishy, that's close. Fish, fish, this word. If you, if you compare how these, how these letters appear in other English words, this word could be pronounced fish, right here, fish. Everyone look at this word and say fish, fish, right? Because if you take, because tough, the GH in tough is F. The O in women is I. And the TI in nation is SH. Right? So F, I, SH. Fish. That's just to show you that in English, when you get down to it, our writing system, pronunciation, it's a complete mess. It's a complete mess. Alhamdulillah, Arabic is not that way. English is actually a very tough language to learn in, in, this, in this way because, for one, we don't, like, we don't really have grammar. I mean, no, we do. I mean, we have grammar, of course. But there are so many exceptions to, to grammar. Like, you know, if, if, you have, if you have a present verb, a lot of the times you have to learn the present verb and then learn a completely different verb for the past. Okay? If I'm going today, what did I do yesterday? I went. What? <laughs> right? In most languages, those two words are pretty, pretty related, right? Plurals. What's, um, what's the plural of child? Children. Children. Okay. Not childs. What's the plural of goose? Geese. Okay, that's even stranger. Because you're not even adding something to it. You're completely changing the vowels around in the middle. What about the plural of moose? Moose. Same thing? What? <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, Arabic, Arabic is, not, is not so arbitrary. Arabic is, is based on rules. It has much more rules. So, so when you're learning Arabic, you have, to learn, you have to learn a lot more rules, but in the end, it works out really well because those rules actually do work. In English, you learn the rules and then you spend the rest of your time learning the exceptions to the rules and those take years. Um, if you're learning the language. Same with spelling. You learn the basic way to spell. You learn the basic way that, yeah, how you say this is goatee, but then you get to these kind of words and you're like, oh, what just happened? Women, it's, you mean it's not toga and woe men and neti own? No. Alhamdulillah, Arabic is not that way. Arabic when you write it out, first of all, the whole grammar and the writing system is based on rules. Hard and fast rules for the most part. Um, and, and so, Arabic writing, it's very phonetic. So when you see a ba, you know it's a b sound. 
When you see a th, you know it's uh, not a th. When you see a th, you know it's a th sound. It's always going to be a th sound. When you see a th in English, it could be th, it could be the, it could be t, right? And that's, there are probably other examples too. I don't know. Maybe th forms, forms other sounds too. Um, ch could be ch, could be k, could be, I mean, in some ways, yeah, it could be sh, could be ch. Really, I mean, technically, I mean, sometimes, you know, like we have uh, the German composer Bach, technically, or, or the Loch Ness monster, Loch Ness, right? Anyway, um, in Arabic, when you see a letter, when you see a letter, you know, you know, you get what you see in Arabic. You see a letter, you know how to pronounce it. Now, the flip side, though, is that Arabic has a unique thing in that not all of the vowels in Arabic will be written out. Not all of the vowels in Arabic are written out. So, for example, um, The word, the word meaning he scattered, he scattered is written this way. So this here, this is two letters in Arabic. We have two letters here. What are the letters? Ba and then? Ba and tha. Right. Ba and th. Here's a ba. And here's a th. Remember, it goes the other way, though. So if we're going to write it in English. Okay, I'll get to, I have to ditch this marker. If we're going to write it in English. Okay, how do you say this? The word itself is betha. 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 Because. The, the consonant, uh, the, the vowels in between the consonants aren't written out. Pretty much when you see letters in Arabic, you're seeing the consonants, you're not seeing the vowels. Some vowels are written out. We'll get to that today. We're going to be going over the vowels, inshallah. Um, but some vowels are not written out. Um, so when, originally when Arabic was, um, was, was written out, at the time that the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, we had um, the the first way that the Quran was written out um, in the time of uh, just um, well even in the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, there were parts of the Quran that were that were written out, and so when it was written out, for example, um, we had this word uh, batha. Betha would have been written like this. Just like that. So you can tell that there are two letters here. There's a tooth for one letter, and then, and then this part for another letter. Now, beyond that, we don't really know what's going on. We don't know... We don't know what the dots are. So we don't know if the first one is a ba, is it a b, is it a ta, is it a th? Same for the for the second one. We have no idea. Just looking at just looking at the writing. No idea. Not only that, but we don't know the vowels that come between it too. Say we know that it is a ba and a th. Okay, we know that. Now is it bath? Is it buth? Is it bith? Batha? Buthi? So, what happened was that originally <clears throat> the Quran was, was written this way, without dots, without vowels. And so, then as Islam began to spread and more people came into Islam, non-Arabs came into Islam, people who didn't no, didn't understand the Arabic language, they started making mistakes. 
Because originally the way the Quran was, was written, it was just as a memory, it was an aid for memory. People already knew the Quran, they just wrote down these, these lines on the page to, to remind them exactly what came after what. But then they started teaching Islam to others and bringing it to other, other places and, and pretty soon, pretty soon people started realizing that, that non-Arabs couldn't really handle this language. They were making all kinds of mistakes with the Quran because they saw this and they didn't know was that first one a ba, was it a ta, was it a fa? And there are actually other options too. We'll get to some of the other letters that are written similar to this, only with a different combination of dots. And so, and so the scholars came up with um, a way to write the vowels in between the letters, and they came up with, with the dot system. Um, and, and this is what, um, is what was able to preserve uh, the Quran and make sure that people didn't make mistakes in pronunciation. Although originally the Arabic language was written without dots, without vowels. So now a little bit of uh, yeah. Now that we've gone into into a little bit of, his, bit of history, we'll talk about the vowels. Um, is it okay if I? Um, if I erase the ba, ta, fa, everyone, everyone got that down, right? Okay. I'm going to need this room again. Okay. So in Arabic, in Arabic now, we have, basically have two types of vowels. One type of vowel will not be written out. Just like I gave you that, that form in which, in which we, we had no idea what the vowels between them were. Um, typically not written out, although there are symbols for them uh, that you will see, and you'll see them in the Quran. They're in the Quran so that you make sure to pronounce it correctly, but if you open up a typical Arabic book, you're not going to see the vowels in there. There are type of vowels that, um, that often isn't written, and then there, there are types of vowels that are written actually and are written in the text. So first we'll be going over the, the vowels that, that are written. The, the vowels that are written are the long vowels. In Arabic there are, there are three qualities of vowels and two lengths of vowels. So Lengths, for lengths we're talking about only two options, long or short, long or short vowels. So the first vowel we'll go over is the vowel, well first of all the long form of it is called, it's called alif, everyone say that, alif, alif, and the sound it makes is a long, ah, uh, whoops, a long ah, uh, as in bat. Everyone say for me, bat. Bat. bat, bat, right, that's the sound, ah, uh, everyone, ah, uh, ah, uh. uh. so this is the sound of alif. Alif. When you see an alif, you know it's going to be pronounced. Uh, uh. The way to write alif, it's one of the easiest ones to write. In the alone form, it's just a line down, a long line down. Start at the top and go down. And this is the alif. Uh, when it's at the beginning of a word, exactly the same. This letter will not connect to what comes after it. 
it doesn't connect to what comes after it, so it's just like that. You write a line down, and then you take your pen off the page, and, and then you go on after that to the next letter. And once we, once we go through the vowels, then we'll, we'll go through writing some examples so we can see how to put the letters together, inshallah. The alif. Now, every letter, although not all the letters in Arabic can connect to what goes after them, all of the letters can connect to what comes before them if what comes before them can connect to what comes after it, right? So if we're coming in from another letter, we're coming in along the line, and we go up for the alif. If we're in the middle of a word, we're coming in from a previous letter, and we go up for the alif, and then lift our, lift our pen. Coming in from a previous letter, up for the alif. And it's the same for the end form. So I'm going to come around now to uh, um, to see this. Um, I'd like to see. Writing the um, how you write the alif and then and then also the the ta and tha which I, I wasn't able to see before. I know it's going to be a lot of information, inshallah, if it's not all collecting right now. In the next in the next week, as you go through your notes, maybe look at look at uh, yeah, um, go through your notes and think about it. Um, then um, then it'll start start forming, start putting itself together. Um, so this is the long vowel, uh, everyone again, uh, uh, um, the, now each of the long vowels, all of the long vowels are written out. You'll see them written out in the word. The short vowels are the ones that are not written out. So every long vowel has a corresponding short vowel. So. Each short vowel is just, it's half the time of the, of the long vowel. Or in other words, the long vowel is double the time of each short vowel. So if I say, Beth, if I say, Beth, that's a short A uh, in there. If I say, Bath, Bath, that's a, that's a long vowel, okay? So everyone say it for me, Beth. Bath. 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 Now, bath. 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 Right? Bath. <coughs> bath. 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 Okay. So, the way that. Let's see. The way that the short vowel is written out. The short vowel corresponding to alif is the a ah sound. Instead of a, ah, it's a. Ah. Ah. It's a slanted line going down like this. I'll do that again. Like this. Above the letter where it appears, it's like that. Above the line. So I'm giving you this and then and then and then we'll go through a few examples, inshaAllah. One more important thing to remember about this, this, this symbol, short vowel a, a, is called Oh, all my pens aren't going exactly right. Now let's try something else. Oh, picked up the wrong one anyway. Okay. Here we go, that's better. His name is Fatha. Everyone say Fatha. 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 
right? The fatha in Arabic means literally opening, opening, fatha. Um, there, there was a series of battles that occurred um, after the, the Prophet's death, alayhi salatu wasalam, that opened up the lands from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to China. They opened them up to Islam. Therefore, those, those wars are called the, the wars of Fath. Fath. Also, in the intention that we say, um, the first thing that we say is, Ya Fatahu. Ya Fatahu. So, O opener, a Fatah, it's one of the names of Allah, the one who opens. Fatah, just like Fatha, opening. Um, we say the first line of the intention we start with is, Ya Fatahu, Ya Alimu, iftah lana Fathan Qariba. So, Ya Fatahu, O opener one, O, o opening one, Ya Alimu, O knowledgeable one, iftah, open for us, iftah lana. If open for us, if tahlana fathan, open for us an opening. If tahlana fathan, if tah fathan. This is a fatha, fatha. Why is it a fatha? Because when you say ah ah, everyone look at my mouth as I say ah ah ah. I'm opening, opening the sides of of the mouth. Right? Ah ah. That's why the scholars called it a fatha, fatha. So the short fatha is the short vowel for the long vowel alif. Alif is a. Uh, everyone say alif a. Uh. Alif a. Uh. Uh. Fatha a. Uh. Fatha a. Uh. So now putting some of the things that we've learnt today together. Okay, so everyone watch how I write this. I start with a bat in the first position. Now I'm going in to an alif and then I have a fat So how do we say this? Everyone, everyone try to work it out. Don't, don't say it completely aloud. Everyone try to work it out in, in your head. Okay, now, how do we say it? Bath. Right? Everyone, bath. Bath. Right? We have a bath in the first, in the beginning form an alif in the middle form and then a tha in the, well it's an end form but we don't have the hook coming in from the end form for the tha because the alif isn't, isn't joining to it the alif doesn't join to what comes after it okay if I write this, now we can compare it to Everyone look at this and try to pronounce it, but just to yourself for now, and then we'll do it together. This one. Whoops. Okay. Guesses? How do we say how do we say this? Beth. Beth. Everyone after me. Beth. Bath, right? Ah, as in bat. Ah, ah, ah. Bath. Everyone after me now. Bath. 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 Sometimes when it's learning the long and short vowels, sometimes it's helpful to kind of tap things out to yourself. So we have bath. That's two beats, right? Bath and bath. Bath, bath. So short vowels will be one beat. Long vowels will be two beats. It's important not to not to overlook this because it can have completely different meaning if you don't 
give the vows their proper, their proper right. So, first of all, if you're not thinking about, about the length of the vows, you won't be writing them correctly because long vowels are written, short vowels are not written. Also, it can really affect the meaning too. So, for example, we have um, when, um, when Allah brings the Qur'an down, in many, in many places it talks about how, how Allah speaking in the form of we, Allah speaking in the form of we says, we brought the Qur'an down. Nazzalna or anzalna, two different forms, uh, differ slightly in meaning, but pretty much the same thing. Anzalna, anzalna, it ends with an alif, anzalna. That na means we, we brought it down. Everyone say, anzalna. Anzalna. Whereas if I say Anzalna, everyone hear the difference? Anzalna. Anzalna. Right? The second one that I say is a short vowel. Anzalna means those women brought it down. It's a feminine plural. It means a group of women brought it down. So if you don't properly say, and this is actually one of the most common. Uh, mistakes that even when people know the Quran and they read the Quran, native Arabic speakers even, it's one of the most common mistakes to make when you have um, when you have at the end of a verb na, and people don't properly uh, properly extend the alif at the end na, they just say na na. If you say na, if you just say na, you're assigning things that Allah has has decreed of himself, you're saying instead of Allah doing it, it's a group of women doing it. Anzalna, anzalna, uh, anzalna uh, al kitab. Uh, right. Anzalnahu, anzalnahu means we brought it down. Anzalnahu, whereas anzalnahu means those women brought it down. A group of women brought it down. Anzalnahu. See, so, so this is just one example of why it, 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 we really need to pay attention when we're thinking about lengths of vowels because it completely changed the meaning. And scholars say that if we don't, when we're pronouncing the Quran, if we don't give the vowels their right, pronounce long vowels as long and short vowels as short, then it's, it's actually haram because we're changing the word of Allah. It's important as we, as we begin things not to, not to get so caught up in this um, because everyone, we're all struggling. We all can't immediately pronounce everything correctly in our salah, when we're reading Quran, all these things. But still, just to have in the back of our minds that it, it's a serious matter. Right? This is a serious matter. And so, and so we want to make sure to get this right. But the flip side, when we do get it right, there's immense reward in it immense reward that, that we get and that we get for that struggle in trying to get it right too. One more example. Okay. So everyone just take a oops. Everyone just take a moment to to look at these two words. These are two different words with different sets of vowels. So in a moment I'm going to say one of these and you have to you have to tell me which one it is. Either number 1 or number 2. All right, so just take a moment and try to read read this yourself. Try to think how we might pronounce this. Okay. Number one, number two. What I say is Thaba. Thaba. Which one is it? One or two? Thaba. One or two? 
Baba. Baba. Exactly. Number two. If we were to write this out, this one would be. See, we have a fa, we have a ba, and we have a alif. And then in between the tha and the ba, a fatha. This one, we have a tha, we have an alif, and we have a ba. And then on the ba is a fatha. Right? So everyone say for me, tha ba versus tha ba. Tha ba. Tha ba. Tha ba. Tha ba. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Okay, now, moving on to, um, we're almost done, pretty much. Um, Arabic, uh, Arabic language is a beautiful language, and it's, I mean, it's hard, it's hard. It's considered one of the hardest languages for English speakers to learn, but that shouldn't hold us back because, for one, we get immense reward from learning it, and for another, it's hard, but it's actually not that hard. Vowels could be very difficult. There are some languages that have a dozen or more different vowels. English has, uh, I'm not exactly sure how many. English has a, uh, quite a few vowels. And then you can have different combinations of vowels too in English. Arabic, just three. So one we have, uh, uh. Everyone say for me again, uh, uh. Okay, another one we have is, Ooh. Ooh. As in the English word boot. Everyone say for me, boot. 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 So the sound is ooh. Ooh. Once again, the long vowel will be written out, the short vowel not. The name of this long vowel is wow. Everyone say for me, wow. 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 Yeah, we also have that in English. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> name of the letter is wow. When you see it, at least for now, you're going to pronounce it ooh. Okay. The way that it's written is When it's alone, we start on the line, everyone looks, we start on the line, do a circle back above the line, and then a tail down below. So a closed circle above the line, and then tail below. And just like Alif, it has no dots, just like that. And it's going to look this just like the alif as well, doesn't connect to what comes after it. So it's going to look exactly the same when it's in the beginning. Close circle above the line, a loop going below, or a little tail going below. Now when it's in the middle, and there's a letter that's connecting before it, we're going to be coming in from that letter and then go to the wa. So just like the alif, we're coming in along the line, go back to make a closed loop, and then a tail down below. Coming in from the letter, loop, tail below. In from the letter, loop above, tail below.
And it's the same for the beginning and the end, just like the alif. So I'll make one note now about the about the short vowel, um, and then we'll go on to the final vowel, which actually isn't that hard to um, that hard to write. Um, and then and then I'll take a look, inshallah. The long vowel, ooh. Everyone say again for me. Wow, ooh. Wow, ooh. Wow, ooh. Wow, ooh. Right. Um, so the long vowel is ooh. Short vowel is going to be ooh, ooh. Everyone say for me ooh, ooh. This one now is basically a little while above the line though, like this. So if we give some examples now, okay, everyone look down below. It's okay if you haven't completely copied everything, it's, it's okay. That there'll be time for inshallah when I, when I go around to copy down everything. This right here, everyone try to say um, to yourself, number one and number two. Try to work out what it is. Now, any volunteers for number one? Go ahead. Thauba. Thauba? Okay. Close. Anyone else want to try? So we have, we have three letters in this word. We have a fat in the beginning position, we have a wow in the middle position, and we have a bat in the final position. So we have fat, right? Then a wow, then a bat. So how do we say this? Thub, right? Thub. Everyone with me. Thub. Thub. Good. Now the second one. Anyone want to try this? Come on. Give you a hint. It's almost like the first one. How does it differ? What's the difference between these two? Long and short. Long and short. Good. So if we know that this one is thub, what's this one? Good. Thub. Thub. We have a fat and we have a bat, and between them, a bomma. Sorry, the. The word for this symbol, too, is. It's called, everyone say it for me, bomma. 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 Sorry, D A M M A. 
Yeah, capital D A M M A. Adama literally means uh, has to do with enclosing and hugging, because when you say it, you go ooh. When you say ooh, your lips are. It's like your your lips are making a circle. They're enclosing, going out, and you're forming a circle with your lips. Ooh. Whereas with the fatha, we were opening our lips. We're going ah. When we go ooh. Make a circle with our lips. Almost a little hug for the air with our lips. Ooh. Ooh. Bamma. So if we have a tha, and then we have a ba, and in between them a bamma, we have tha and ba, and in between them ooh, we have thub. So everyone, everyone say this to me. Thub. 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 Okay? Now, just a little bit of, of review for the, for the letters before we go on to the final letter. Right? The three letters we learnt first were Ba. Everyone after me. Ba. 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 Then we learnt ta. 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 Then we learnt fa. 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 So ba. ba. Ta. Ba. Fa. Ba. 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 Ta. Ba. Fa. Ba. Now the the vowels that we've learnt so far are alif, right? Alif and wow. So the sounds we say alif a. Alif a. Fatha a. Fatha a. Wow u. Wow u. Bamma u. Bamma u. One more time. Alif a. Fatha a. Wow u. Bamma u. So finally, any any questions on on that? By the way, and one more point: we had the the question uh, a few minutes ago um, about how we tell the difference between um, say we have a ba and then we have a fatha, a fatha on the ba. The fatha is going to be slanted like that. It's not going to be like the dots on a ta, because the dots on a ta are just right across, whereas the fatha is slanted downwards. Slanted down like that. That is ba. Everyone after me. Ba. Ba. Whereas if we wrote this, it would be ba. Ba. Okay. Now, finally, fortunately, we don't really need to. Oh wait, no, we do. Okay, never mind. Scratch that. Um, the the final vowel is in Arabic. We have a, we have u, and we have e. Everyone say after me. E. 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 As in beet. Like sugar beets. Beets. Beet. Everyone say to me. Beet. 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 So the vowels in Arabic. Bat. Boot. Beet. Bat. Boot. Beet. Bat. Boot. Beet. Bat. Boot. Beet. Okay. The name of this letter is Ya. Everyone say for me Ya. 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 I'm going to go to when it's written in the beginning and the middle because these are these are slightly easier than the other two. When Ya. 
is written. First of all, when we say aya, how do we pronounce it? When we see uh, when we see aya, what do we say? E. e. Right. When we see ya in a word, we say e. At least for now. It just looks just like ba, ta, and ta in beginning and middle. When it begins the word, when it's in the middle of the word, we have that tooth. Only difference is two dots below. Same tooth. This is the yeah. And once again, we can connect those two dots too. Yeah. Same thing in the middle. Up for a tooth and two dots below. Up for a tooth and two dots below. Yes. The ya yeah will. Just like ba, ta, and tha, the, the ya yeah connects to what comes before it. Everything connects to what, can connect to what comes before it. And the ya yeah will connect to what comes after it. Just like the ba, ta, and tha. So this line here that's coming after the ya, yeah, this line that's going down now along the line of the page, that's going to connect to the next letter. The way that it's at the beginning and the end of a word uh, is slightly different than the bat, ta, and tha. What we have is we almost start with like an English C. So we do that on the line. But then we go below the line and a hook below the line like that with two dots below it. So we start with this above the line go on the line for a bit and then below and a hook up above and when you end this hook everyone look everyone look when you end the hook make sure that the hook under the line first of all the length of it is is pretty it's pretty long there it's not going to be short like that no it's it's pretty long um, and and make sure that you end the hook the hook ends slightly above the line so when you do it, we go down below the line and then end the hook once we've passed back above the line. And two dots below the whole thing. Finally, I'll go over this, um, well, just two more points. Um, we have the short vowel that corresponds to this, and then the end position to go through. And then I'll take a look at how we've been writing well and, and yet. Yeah, I'll go around, inshallah. The way it's written in the end looks pretty similar to how it is alone, only we don't have this beginning part. So we're coming in, we're coming in from a previous letter. Now we do the hook under. The main thing is that we have that hook under the line or the tail under the line with two dots below it. Coming in from a previous letter and then under the line and a hook above. And when we see this, we say e.
Alhamdulillah, almost done. Almost, almost. Just one final thing. Corresponding short vowel. Just like how we have two dots below the line, this, this thing below the line when we write the ya, whatever position it is, we have these two dots, or typically they're combined into one line. Those two dots are combined into one line here, like that, below the ya. Similarly, the short vowel that corresponds to the ya is, it's slanted though, but it's below the line, like that. Whenever we see this, we know it's i. I. Ya is e. This one is i. And its name is Kasra. Everyone say it for me. Kasra. 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 Literally means breaking. Breaking. E. E. Because it's like the scholars talked about how you're almost breaking the sound. It's not, you're not opening your mouth with the fatha. You're not making a, a circle with your mouth like the bomma, you're going e. You're bringing the sound down, almost breaking it. E. Beat. Anyway. So finally we see that we see that the alif is a line down, but it the alif goes above the line. Therefore the fatha is above the line there. The dhamma we see the Dhamma is like a little wow above the line. And the Kasra, just like how the Ya has, the, has that line below the letter itself, the Kasra similarly slanted down like that, below the line. So now I'll come down and I'll take a look at this. Um, make sure when you're, when you're writing the Ya, in the final position, um, when you're writing it, it's, it's not just a loop down or a tail down below the line. When, you're, when you go down below the line, you hook back a bit and then go up. When you're going below the line, hook, hook back a bit. See, so this, this part is important there, where you're hooking back, going backwards along the line, and then... Um, and then along up and then ending a bit above the line for the yeah. And finally, example. Okay, now here we have two words again. So everyone take, uh, take a moment to try to work out what these, what these two words are here. Try to putting the letters together. Okay, who wants to have a go at the first one? Close. What's this letter? How many dots does this letter have? It's a fat. Yeah. So how do we say this? Close, close. How do we say the ya yeah again? E. Good. Everyone say beefy. Beefy. Versus, what's this one? Bithi, bithi, everyone, bithi, 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 okay, 
Just like this. One more time going through what we've written here. Thaba. 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 Thub. 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 Beefy. 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 Good. Any questions about about that stuff? Okay. And then reviewing the vowels now. Alif a. Alif a. Fatha a. Fatha a. Wow u. Wow u. Bomma u. Bomma u. Ya i. Ya i. Kasra i. Kasra i. So we have a. 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 U. 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 I. 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 Okay. Okay. Any final questions? All right. So, typically at the at the end of class. So for for each class, we'll. Um, uh, the main thing will be a homework sheet. Um, now, the the homework that I've made for today, it um, um, typically half half the homework will be just the sheet. Uh, sorry, the what's what's on the sheet, and then the other half is using the the DVD. Uh, yes. One huge favor. Yeah, yeah. Did you just write Disney um, In in Arabic, completely. Um, maybe after class. But um, yeah, because you wanted to see how it's written, or you want you want it on the board. Okay. Um, I'm yeah. I'm actually going to. We, we can do it after class together. But I just I don't want to confuse everyone because we're not going to we're not going to go over those letters. Um, right. Um, anyway. So the for the homework. Uh, the, the main part of it is, is on the worksheet, but then there's also stuff to do um, from the DVD. Now, I, um, the DVDs haven't arrived yet, um, and, so, and so inshallah we'll just um, we'll have to make do for this week. I apologize for that. Um, if you do um, have the DVD or the book, um, then you can do um, these exercises um, for, it, for, for those. Um, also, I... Um, uh, we'll see how this goes. I don't like to to waste paper, so typically I say like if um, uh, I'll hand out homework to those people who have difficulty printing things. But ultimately, if you can print, um, then I prefer just to to send it to you via email and then you print it yourself. Because what I found last uh, last time was um, I I printed a lot and then those pages just just got wasted, um, which which is a shame. I mean, I like to save paper as much as possible. And two, like. Some of it had words from the Quran or um, um, or the name of Allah on them or stuff like that, and we don't want to 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 make that and just have to throw it away in in the end too. So so first of all, is there anyone who um, raise your hand if uh, if you'd rather have me um, print them and give it to you uh, in class rather than printing them yourselves um, uh, afterwards via email? Okay. Okay, so just come up to me after um, in a few minutes once we're in class, and, and I'll give you the sheet. Um, the the homework for each each class period. I mean, I I expect that you'll spend at least an hour. I'd say if you if you need to if you really want to learn the material, I think it would take at least at least two hours of going through the material. Um, but obviously, it's all individual initiative, and I don't want to have anything keep you from being in these classes. Even if it, it seems like we're going we're going fast, it might be best for you to keep with the with the class so that you get exposed to this material. And inshallah, if you're not getting it um, throughout these few weeks, I'll I'll do my best to make sure we're all getting it. But ultimately, people learn it at different paces, so you might have to take who knows 
Uh, maybe you won't be able to put that much work in, so you might have to take another course in the future. But it will be beneficial, inshallah, to, to be exposed to, to all of this at least. Um, and as for the homework, this is all, everything that's on the sheets is there for your benefit um, to, to help you learn the material. Um, and so just do whatever, whatever is possible for you. Um, and I, uh, I'll see and, and we'll correct, in, inshallah, um, um, correct what, what you have done. Um, if, if you are limited in time and can't get to all the homework, I might just do a few exercises from each section. It's better to do a few exercises from each section than do um, a few sections completely and then the other sections not, not at all. Um, uh, that's not so beneficial as making sure to get to, to each exercise in, in the homework. Um, and then um, also I'm going to say this uh, now at the end. It's um, I think throughout the the class it would be very useful if if everyone um, I I would ask everyone to pick a surah pick a surah of the Quran that is at least ten ayahs long so not one of the very last surahs because we we want some substance in there it's not just a few words but a surah that is at least ten ayahs long and so preferably every day uh, at least once or twice a week. Um, you return to that surah, um, preferably if you, if you can, you have that surah written out in a Qur'an in Arabic. That's the, uh, that's the, the thing that, that must be there. But then also preferably you, you have a, a recording that you can listen to it as well. So that as we go on, these things will start coming together and you'll start being able to understand more and more. So that when, um, um, inshallah, after, after today's class, now you can start, well, you'll be able to tell the Baz, the Taz, and the Thaz, which is some of the, especially Ta, um, is one of the most common letters in, uh, in, in Arabic, uh, inshallah. You'll, you'll definitely see that all over the place. And then all the vowels, you see those all over the place. So even though we've only covered six of 28, 29 um, letters in, in Arabic, um, you'll see basically every every space of uh, of the page you'll see these symbols now once you go looking for them so the best thing would be that if everyone picks a surah at least 10 ayahs long and returns to it regularly throughout the course so that that way you can kind of keep track and start start learning things and seeing how things match up so after today now you can see the vowels see what the long vowels are see the short vowels then you can compare listen to it in a recording someone reciting it Um, so that, that would be incredibly beneficial. And then, inshallah, finally, and we'll end the class on, the, on this note. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going just a few minutes over. Uh, inshallah, I'll, uh, I'll end each class with just a, a little uh, anecdote of, uh, of why it's important to, to learn Arabic. So for today, some of you may be, may be familiar with this, um, but the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us that um, tells us that we have an immense reward for reading, uh, reading the Arabic of the Quran. And he said, for every letter that is in, of course, I'm, I'm paraphrase, paraphrasing this hadith too, but for every letter of the Quran that we say, every letter we get 10 hasanat, 10 good deeds, for every letter. He said, by a letter I don't mean alif lam mim, Alam is one, one letter. I mean every single letter. For every letter, ten harakat. So if we say, so for example, if we have um, um, the word batha, batha, I talked about that. That appears in the Quran. Batha, or I think it might. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure that verb appears in the Quran. Batha, two words, ba and tha, or two letters, sorry, ba and tha. That's 20 hasanat right there. 20 good deeds that are written for us. And that's the bare minimum. The more we start thinking about how to pronounce everything correctly and, and making sure that we're doing that and that we're conscious of everything and we try to take in the meanings as we're doing it too, those deeds, those good deeds that we get will be multiplied. The bare minimum is 10 good deeds for every single letter of the Quran that we say. 
So may Allah benefit us to, to get these good deeds and to, to see the whole uh, life of this world as just a chance to, to reap all these deeds and keep gathering them and gathering them until, until the Day of Judgment when they'll be shown to us and inshallah we'll be pleased. May Allah help us to be pleased on the Day of Judgment. Uh, may Allah facilitate us, um, facilitate for us the learning of His knowledge and of His book. Uh, and um, peace and prayers upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the Worlds. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi rahman rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina al-Kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. So if everyone has the, uh, the syllabus, does anyone not have a copy? Okay, we'll be reading off the, uh, the intention, inshallah, as we do at the beginning uh, of every class. So, once again, I'll read and then you repeat after me. Ya Fattahu Ya Alimu Iftah Lana Fathan Qariba Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Was Sallallahu Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi وصحبه وسلم نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى. Now all of us together. O oh, opener, all, all knowing one, grant us an opening soon. In the name of Allah, the All Merciful, the Compassionate. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the Worlds, and blessings and peace upon our Master Muhammad his family and his companions. I intend to study and teach, to remember and remind, to profit and bring profit, to benefit and bring benefit, to encourage holding fast to the book of Allah and the way of his messenger, to call to guidance, to direct towards good, and to aim for the countenance of Allah and his pleasure, his nearness and his reward, exalted be he. So before we get into any new stuff, uh, a bit of a review uh, from the stuff we went over last week, putting some things together. After sitting with, uh, after sitting with you individually, I just wanted to uh, go through some of these again to make sure we're on the same page. Once again, I, I went through a, uh, a few of these with, with you individually, but, um, but not everyone, so I wanted to, to make sure we get through this. Um, this one is an important one right here, um, because this has, it has a, not only the, the consonants, the, the letters written out, but it also has a, a, a short vowel here too. Actually, you know what, let, let's, take, let's take this last one. I didn't go over this, this last one with a lot of people. So. So first, if, if you're having trouble, then think about breaking, breaking it down, breaking every word you see down into parts and thinking in steps. 
and also right breaking each part into something that that you can deal with and so right now we might be at the stage where we know how to deal with every different symbol on its own but not putting it all together so let's look at every symbol individually this word consists of three letters three letters here so that divisions i'll use a different color the divisions of the letters are right here we have a tooth for one letter another tooth for another letter and then the final letter so what's the first letter okay. Ta. right it has two dots two dots that have been connected so two dots means it's a ta. And then we have a what? Okay, but what's just the letter? What's it called? A ta. Right? And then the last letter is? Ba. Okay. Now we look. So now we figured out the consonants. And we'll look at the short vowels. What's between the ta and the ta? A fatha. And the fatha, the sound for a fatha is? A. Okay, now between the ta and the ba, what do we have? Dhamma. And what's the sound of the dhamma? U. There we go. Now, after the ba, what do we have? Another fatha. Everyone see this? It's like how we have a fatha between the two ta's at the beginning. Another fatha. The sound of the fatha is? Ah. Okay, so everyone say this with me. Tatuba. Tatuba. Any questions about that? Okay. Similarly, the second one, I'll go through or the one above it, I'll go through this quickly. We have four letters now. First one is a that. And we have a ta, now an alif, and then a ba. And in between the tha and the ta is a kasra, which makes the sound i. Everyone say with me, fitab. Fitab. Good. And then the others, bat. Bat. Boot. Boot. Beat. 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 Any questions on any of these now? Okay. We'll get into the new stuff, inshallah. Um, quickly now. Oh, I need. Oh, here it is. Quickly now, as kind of a, a booster to help us get through the rest of this lesson. Um, I ended the last lesson with uh, um, talking about something to do with the, the benefits of Arabic. Who remembers, remembers what, I, what I talked about? Okay, that was kind of a, yeah, someone I, something I asked you to do, an assignment to do. There's one bit of information that, that I gave right at the end of, of last class period. Didn't have to do specifically with letters of the alphabet but a general thing within our tradition. Does anyone remember? Something about 10 deeds, 10 deeds, 10 hasanat. Every, every, get 10 hasanat for, what did you say? For every letter that you struggle in. Um, close, but it's even better than that. What I mentioned, what I mentioned is, right, when we, when we recite Qur'an, we're told by the Prophet ﷺ that for every single letter that we, that we pronounce of the Qur'an, we get 10 hasanat, and that's just a minimum. So, so you mentioned that if we struggle in it, we get 10 hasanat. Well, not really. I mean, if you struggle in it and it's difficult for you, then... Inshallah, if you have the right intentions, then, then it'll be multiplied even more than 10. 10 hasanat is the base form. If you say one letter of the Quran, 10 hasanat. That's the minimum. And that can be multiplied if it takes more effort or if you have a greater intention with it. 
if you're not just reading for yourself, but you're reading in order to eventually be able to learn this so you can teach others and bring this light into other people's lives. The bare minimum is 10 hasanat. Okay. So we have three new letters to cover, inshallah, today. Um, and then some extra things to say about some letters that we've already um, already talked about in the, in the last class period. So I'll make my chart now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Does everyone remember what A, B, M, E stand for? What does A stand for? Alone, right? When the letter is standing alone, that'll be the form B. When it's at the beginning of a word, M. When it's in the middle of a word, and E at the end of a word, right? So, after, in the alphabet, after we have Alif, everyone say after me, Alif, Ba, Ta, Fa, Alif, Ba, Ta, Fa. So after Fa, we have Jim. Its name is Jim. Jim. And the sound it makes, we can write it in English as J. Everyone say for me, Jim. Jim. So the sound is J. J. Just like the English word, we have judge. Everyone say judge. 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 So in this word, this word, judge, both begins and ends with, with this sound, with the J sound, judge. Now, take note that um, there's often, often when people are pronouncing Arabic, they don't say this letter quite right because if we're pronouncing Arabic, especially the Arabic of the Quran, the most correctly, the, the sound is the J sound, but often what you hear is a J sound, not J but zh. Um, and this sound is more, is more common in French, as in the word, the word I in French, zh, zh. Um, or, or red in French, rouge, right? Everyone hear the difference between zh and j? Okay. Um, if, I say, if I say this letter correctly, raise your hand. Right? If I don't say it correctly, don't raise your hand. Okay? So first, Jim. Was that correct or not? Jim. If it's correct, raise your hand. Jim. Incorrect. Jim is the correct way. Jim. Jim. Everyone, everyone say the incorrect with me so that we all understand. Jim. Jim. Jim is incorrect. The correct way is Jim. Jim. This is, um, it's, it's, it's a stop in kind of linguistic terminology. It's a, it's a stop. Although we might not all be familiar with linguistic terminology, we can understand pretty much what, what we mean when we say stop. That it's not, it's not something that continues. If I say, if I put it at the end, if it's the final sound in something, say I put a ah before it. Now, if I, if I say it the right way, I'm not going to be able to prolong it. I say edge. Everyone say after me, edge. 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 If I'm saying it the incorrect way, it's, it's not a stop. I can prolong it. Edge. Right? Everyone say edge. 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 Right, that sound we can, we can prolong. But the correct way to do it, we can't prolong. It's a stop. Edge. 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 Right. So the way that this is written is we start with a line going backwards just above the line of the page and then we kind of make a loop or a C that extends back down below the line. And everyone make sure you're looking. The final part, 
dot below the line. A dot that goes below the line, and in this alone form, it, it basically sits in that, in that loop there. So I'll do it a few more times. <coughs> This is the gene. Now, what happens when it's at the beginning is that this tail that goes below the line, we lose that tail when we're beginning a word. We lose that tail and we just continue on to the next letter. So everyone watch. I start above the line a bit. And it's a little more curvy going up, and then we have a point. Now, once I get to the line, instead of going down now, I keep going along the line, and there's a dot below it. Everyone see how, how that first part is basically, it's this minus that tail below the line, you see that? So I'll do it one more time, or a few more times. A little bigger, too. It almost looks like the head of a bird, too, in that it's kind of curved at the top and has a beak. Everyone see that, too? Um, not typically. It's easier to write it. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could curve it like that if you wanted to. Now, if it's in the middle of a word, we just come to the beginning position, basically. So we're coming from another, another letter, coming from another letter. So now we make this curve up, but now we have to go backwards and make that point there, and then go on. I'll do that again, a little bigger. So we, when we make this line out here, we have to retrace that line again, go a bit past that line, the first line that we made, and then go down and along the line. I'll do that a few times. And finally, if it's at the end of a word, we give it its tail. So we're coming into it. We retrace, go back. Now, instead of going on to the rest of the line, to another letter, now instead we go below the line and give it a tail or a loop under. So I'm going to come around now, take a look. So one thing I was, one thing I was seeing, which is a common mistake, was um, was not not doing this point correctly. So 
Um, we'll, we'll go through a few examples now. For example, if I say, if I say, Tujib, 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 everyone say after me, Tujib, Tujib. So what do we hear in the sounds there? We hear, ta, Tujib. Then after the ta, the ta, we hear a vowel there, Tujib, Tujib. Is that vowel a long or a short vowel? Short, exactly. Tujib. We hear that the second syllable is long, the first one is short. Tujib, tujib. So it's going to be a short u. Tu. Then we have a jim. Tuji. Now, now what? After the jim? What kind of sound is it? Tujib. Long e, exactly. Long e, then a. What sound? Tujib. Right, a b sound. Okay. So now, here's our line. First, we have a ta, and I'm going to put the dots for the ta in after I've written out the whole letter. So I have a ta. Now I go up to the jim, and then have a point out here and then down to the line. Okay, now pause for a minute. Pretend I, st I still have my pen on the page. Just a quick note. Okay, when we're thinking, when we're looking at long and short vowels, we don't write the short vowels, we do write the long vowels, right? Which is why when we're going to write this, we see that we have a short vowel here, tu, jib. We're not going to write the tu. It's going to be a domma. But this one, is this a long or a short vowel? Long. In my writing system, the long vowels, the, uh, all the long vowels are double, the double vowels. Either two I's, two E's, or two U's. Right, so we are going to write, so what's the name of the letter that comes next? Everyone? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, and finally? Ba. There we have our letter. Now we put the dots in. But here we go. To jeeb. What am I? What am I missing now? In this letter, or in this word, the dhamma. Right. So I put a dhamma with on the tat because it comes between the tat and the jeem. Tujib. That's not so clear. Here, I'll try and black ink now. There we go. Okay, so everyone say with me. Tujib. Tujib. So I want to make sure that I have this point right here. This point right here. I go up to the jim and then trace that back. Up to the to the jim, chase ch trace sorry trace that line back. Then I come out to a point and then go on down to the line and go on. It's not that I'm coming into that point like this. This is the wrong way. need to have that point that extends past the line that we that we trace back on. We're both at the beginning, right here, or sorry, not the beginning, the middle, right here, and the end, right there. We have those points. Okay? Any questions about the gene? Gene, it, it can connect on both sides. Right. Every letter in the Arabic alphabet connects to what comes before it. It can connect to what comes before it. Um, but um, uh, but uh, some of them do not connect to what comes after it. Right. And the gene always connects to what comes after it. If there's a, if there's a letter coming after it. Right. 
Okay, the next letter we have is the the ha. Okay, now I'm not going to say I'm not going to ask you to pronounce this right after me directly because we have a bit of explaining to do. The way we write this is ha with a capital H. Note that it's a capital H. This is going to be important on my homework and when you're transliterating, out, out, uh, transliterating things for me too. It's important to distinguish between this because in Arabic there's a difference. There, uh, basically in English we just have a H sound, an H sound. But in Arabic there are kind of two kinds of H's. The H, H, the sound that we have in English which is represented by an H that's there in Arabic. That would be a lowercase h. We'll get to that in the future, insha'Allah. This one is an upper uppercase h. Sometimes you'll see an upper uppercase h. Sometimes you'll see um, a lowercase h, but with a dot under it or something like that. Some way to distinguish um, that it's not just a regular h. So what's happening here is that. Regularly, everyone, everyone say ha, ha, ha. It's an English H. Ha, 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 ha. We can think about it intellectually. For some, for some of you, that might help. Um, then we'll give a few examples. What's happening with the ha, the H, is that it's, it's happening right at the level of the vocal cords, right down there, at the bottom of the throat. Ha, 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 ha. The way, the place where that stop comes, that uh, it's happening right here. Most, most letters that we pronounce, they happen inside the mouth. This is happening down at the bottom of the throat. The, this letter, which is pronounced ha, ha, happens higher in the middle of the throat. And so that's kind of intellectually how to think about it. Now, practically, when we think about puffing up a window, that's one example when often we make this sound without really thinking about it. When we go, ha, 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 Everyone, put your hand in front of your, in front of your mouth and pretend, pretend like you're puffing it up a window. Or, alternatively, when we imitate a dog, a dog panting, That's the sound, right? Everyone, everyone do that for me. That's the sound. It's a heavier H. It's not just It's Okay, one more time. I want to see everyone try this for me. Okay, try to pant like a dog. Right, okay. So now, try to make that a letter now. So make it into the name of the letter. Ha. 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 Ah. 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 Good. Good. Right. So now listen to the difference. The first one I say first, just regular English H. Ah. 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 Just just listen to it for now. Just listen. Ah. Ah. The second one is the heavier H. Ah, ah, ah. You hear that heavy, like dog pant almost, or puffing up window sound. Ah, everyone say now after me. Ah, 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 ha, ha, ha. And this is a very common letter too, and a lot of people don't know how to pronounce it properly. Anyone know an example of common Arabic word that this, this letter is present in? Okay, what did I hear here? Alhamdulillah. Everyone say Alhamdulillah. 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 Right, when we say Alhamdulillah, it's not just Alhamdulillah. 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 Right, it takes a bit more effort. It takes more effort in order to, to praise Allah as He ought to be praised. One more time, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. 
Right. La ilaha illallah. Then what? Wa Muhammad. Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammad. Same his name. If we're going to say his name properly, peace and prayers be upon him, then his name has a ha in it as well. Everyone say Muhammad. Muhammad. Right? Mu. Muhammad. Muhammad. Similarly, uh, from the same root, I mean, this is, this is all from the same root. Alhamdulillah, Muhammad. You see, it's ha, m, and da. All the same meanings. Literally, Muhammad, the one who is most praised. The one who is most praised. Alhamdu is praise. And Ahmed, everyone try to say that. Ahmed. 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 Similarly, the most praised, the most praised, Ahmed. Ahmed. Another name for Muhammad. So, this is the ha ha. Uh, now this, alhamdulillah. Uh, well, for better or for worse, uh, looks similar to the jim. For the jim, we had one dot below the line. For the ha, it's exactly the same, except no dots. This is the ha. I'll write it a few times. Ha. There we go. Ha. And since I've already kind of written along this list, in order to make the beginning, middle, and end ones, all I do is just erase the dot. You guys have to do the work, though, especially if you write in pen. You can't just erase the pencil marks that you've made for the gene. So it'll take a minute to, to write that out. Okay, so any questions about this? Any questions about the hat for now? Okay, we'll give one example. How do we say veil in Arabic? Veil in many different senses of the word. Any guesses? Hijab. Hijab. Here we go. We have a ha. Then hijab. 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 When we say hijab, is it a short vowel or a long vowel in between the ha and the ja? Hijab. Hijab. Right? We feel. Compare the, compare the two syllables, hijab, hijab, short, long, short, long. Alternatively, we can try tapping it out. That's another method to figure out if it's a long or a short vowel. Hijab, right? The second one, second vowel is two beats. The first one is one beat. Hijab, hijab, hijab. Okay, so... We're not going to write the e that comes in between the ha and the j. So we go into the g now. He, g, he, j. Then what do we have after the g? Hijab, alif. Right, because it's a long one. It's not hijab, hijab, but hijab, hijab. And then finally after the alif, ba. Now we can put in our dots. And there we have, once we put a kasra on the hat, or in between the hat and the jim. Everyone say with me, hijab. Yeah. Hijab. Yeah. Okay. 
Now I want to hear. I want to hear it individually from everyone too. Often, uh, using putting a kasra on the ha is one of the most difficult things to do. Hate, hate. But try it. Try it. Okay. What's that? Hijab. Better. Good. Good. Hijab. Okay. That's good. Hijab. Hijab. Good. Good. Hijab. Okay. Better. Good. Better. One more time. Okay. Start doing this first. Hijab. Hijab. That's good. There we go. There we go. Good. Good. One more time. Good. Hijab. First time was better than the second time. Good. 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 One more time. Good. Now, but in that, remember the jeem is j j hijab, not hijab. Right? I was almost hearing a j sound. One more time, hijab. 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 Good. Okay. Hijab. Go. Just go with me like this. Heavier. Okay. One more time like this. Just. Okay, now go hijab. Good, good. Now a little shorter. Hijab. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that's how we work on it. Okay. And then finally, with the final letter here, final letter we'll go over today. Similar kind of thing. It's, um, well, actually, yeah, first the name of the letter. And before we go into this, we have to make uh, a quick note. What I told you last time was that in Arabic, there are three vowels. What are the vowels? Not their names, but the way that they sound. What are they? A, then what? E and U. A, E, U, as in bat, boot, and beat. Right? So the alif, how does that sound typically? Uh, right. I'm gonna write over here. Is that okay? All right. So, the alif. Oh no. Okay, the alif. Uh, um, usually, sounds like this sound. Bat, bat. Except. In certain circumstances, i.e., after certain letters of the Arabic alphabet, the alif changes its sound. After certain letters of the Arabic alphabet, the alif changes its sound. That's why, what's the name of God? Allah. Allah. Right? And yet, I told you there were only three consonants. Which of those three are only three vowels in Arabic? That's not one of the three vowels I taught you. Allah. No, I told you that we had U, we had E, and we had A in Arabic. So, so why don't we just say it all? Allah. Allah. Hmm? The alif, when it's after certain letters in the Arabic alphabet, becomes like A, ah, as in Allah. And in English we have the word Father. Everyone say it with me. Father. 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 Right. That's the sound. Ah. Ah. So, typically, the alif is a ah sound. But after certain letters, the alif changes to ah. What's basically happening is that the, the ah, ah, is a wider sound. The ah 
is kind of farther back in the throat. So on letters that happen, in general, letters that happen with more, um, more filling up, well, it's, it's farther back in the, in the mouth. So letters that, in which the tongue kind of fills up the mouth, and we'll talk a bit more about this as the course goes on. These are the letters that Alif is going to go from A to A. So this one now that we have, this is one of those letters. And there are various kind of ways we can, we can term these, these letters. One, one way that I think is a decent way, and, and you'll often see in, um, in English books written on Arabic, is saying that um, letters in which Alif goes to A, those letters are emphatic letters. Now, emphatic doesn't mean necessarily that it's... Um, um, that these letters are emphasized more, though they, they are kind of. It's not, but not really that we give them more energy, but this is just a, a term, because R, R, we just think of it that after an emphatic letter, the A in Aleph goes to R. So in Arabic, we're going to be talking about how we have non-emphatic letters and emphatic. Another way to think about it is... Um, Maybe like at least the 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 alif sound can be said to be deep, like deep alif, deep alif versus frontal alif. Ah, that's a deeper sound than a. Ah. A ah is closer towards the front of the mouth. Ah happens deeper back. Everyone say for me a ah. a ah. 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 versus ah. Ah. ah ah right. So this letter now, both the way that the alif is pronounced after it and the way that this letter is pronounced, um, they're both kind of new things to learn today. So the letter is now is kha. This sound we don't really have in English. It's a very common letter throughout languages, um, but, but often we, we have to kind of figure it out, figure out how to produce it uh, anew. When we're, when we're learning Arabic. The ha happened in the middle of the throat. This happens at the top of the throat. And it's basically what happens when, when you're trying to remove, often we make this sound when we're trying to remove something from the throat. We go, ah, okay? So everyone, everyone make that sound for me. It's, it, it sounds ugly right now, but just go, okay. Now put, now put an ah in front of it. Ah, ah, ah. Brother, this means brother in Arabic. Ah, ah. Now, now the letter. Kha, kha, kha. Okay. Right, so this is the next letter. And I'm underlining the KH. To show that the KH is all one sound, it's not like a K and then an H put together. Because in Arabic we have Ks and we have Hs. So if you're pronouncing Arabic correctly, then you'll be pronouncing these letters correctly. A lot of people confuse between different letters. Some people confuse between the K sound in Arabic as in iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in in Surah Al-Fatiha um, between the ka sound and the kha sound right? kha. but one of the more common ones is that when people see that there's a capital H or an H with a dot under it then they say it like a kha they think it's a kha but it's not. So a lot of people say, for example, um, you sometimes hear some people say, Ahmed, Ahmed, right? Because it's not Ahmed, Ahmed, not quite. That's not the right ha. It's not the right H, really. It's Ahmed, Ahmed. But it's not Ahmed, and it's not Ahmed. It's between the two, Ahmed, Ahmed. 
Similarly, Muhammad. Right, and Surat Al Surat Al Fatiha. Al Fatiha. Al Fatiha. Right, this is in a ha, which is distinguished from a kha. Right, everyone say it one more time. Kha. And again. Kha. Okay, now this looks just like the other letters, only it has a dot above it. Same form, different dot. Now there are a few more things that we want to get done before before the end of class today. So um, since, since this is the same form, just a, a different dot, I'm going to, uh, to leave you to fill out your page for now and we're just going to go through an example and then finish up what we want to say today, inshallah. Um, so, we want to pronounce this word correctly. Okay. Now the first letter, what's the first letter? Kha. And then we have a? An alif. And then finally a? Ba. And on top of the ba is a? Fatha. Right. So, this is, anyone want to try this for me? Good, good. Everyone say it. Excellent. Everyone say Khaba. Khaba. Remember the alif comes after the kha. So it's not khaba. 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 It's khaba. Everyone say again. Khaba. Khaba. Right. Okay, yeah, that's all we'll, all we'll do, for example, on, on that one. Um, but similar, the, the name, common name, um, a, a, lot of people, uh, a lot of people have the name Khalid. Khalid. Um, it means everlasting, essentially, literally. Um, it's, a, it's a common name, but this is an example where the common dialect of Arabic has influenced how we, how we pronounce the classical Arabic. When people have this name, they typically say Khalid, Khalid. But if we were to pronounce it completely correctly, that A actually comes after the Kha. So to say it correctly would be Khalid. Everyone say after me, Khalid. Khalid. Now I'm not saying that everyone who has the name Khalid and says it Alid, Khalid, is, uh, you know, like they're pronouncing their name wrong. You know, it's their personal name, they, they figure out how to pronounce it themselves. But, but if you see this in the Qur'an, Khalid. It often appears in, in the Qur'an when talking about people staying in Jannah, staying in, in Paradise or in, uh, or in the fire. Khalidin fiha. Right, they're staying in there forever. Khalidin. Forever. Khalid. Khalid. One more time. Khalid. Khalid. Right. Okay. 
And then finally, a few notes to make about the well, about the well and the ya. Uh, the well and the ya uh, we talked about last time as being two long vowels, but they actually have other functions as well. If you see, um, one, one very important rule in Arabic, in, in, the Arabic uh, in Arabic linguistics, the way that the Arabs think about language is they say that it is physically impossible, physically impossible for anyone to start a word with a vowel. So in Arabic, when we're writing, we will never ever start a word with a vowel. So when we say words like A or Allah, what, what the Arab grammarians say is that it's actually starting like the first consonant, it starts with a consonant and that consonant is in the back, is at the bottom of the throat. Um, and it's, it's when uh, it happens at the vocal cords and it's where air gets stopped. As if when we say, uh-oh, uh-oh, you hear there's a little uh in between those, uh-oh, uh-oh, you hear there's an uh. In Arabic gr gr grammar, whenever you hear a word, you think a word is starting with a vowel, they say, no, it's actually starting with this consonant, uh, right? So, Allah, Allah, that starts here, the first letter is, uh, and then we have, ah. Uh, and then a fatha, uh, uh, Allah, Allah, Allah. Similarly, Islam. We start with, uh, and then we have uh, Islam. It's okay if that doesn't make complete sense right now. The important thing is that, why, does this, why is this important right now? It's important because if we ever see wow or ya at the beginning of a word, it's not u or e, it's now a consonant. Wow is now wa, just like in its name, wow, wa, wa, and ya is ya, just like in its name, ya, ya, wa, and ya. Everyone say wow again, wow, and then ya. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, for example, um, when we say something, there are various ways in Arabic to, to say something is obligatory, it's necessary. One, one word is wajib. Everyone say for me, wajib. 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 Wa. Right? Wa. A. J. I. B. Everyone say for me, wajib. 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 So you see how the wow, it's not an oo, it's a wa sound. Wa. Similarly, the yeah, um, to say to say it is necessary, as in it is necessary to do this, this thing. It is necessary is yajib. Everyone say for me, yajib. Yajib. To have ya, jim, and ba. And then a fatha and a kasra. Yajib. 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 So now this ya is a ya. Ya. It's not just e. If we switch them around, we can say, if we switch some of the letters around, mm. 
Now this, you can say, is jeeb, 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 jeeb. It's a long vowel now, yeah. So both for yeah and the while, they can be either a long vowel or a consonant. Jeeb. Now, sometimes when it's in the middle or at the end of a word, it will still, it won't be a long vowel. It'll still be, uh, it'll be a consonant. If there's any other kind of vowel, any other kind of short vowel, any other kind of vowel along, uh, uh, on either side of this yeah, it's not going to be a long vowel. I'll show, I'll show what I mean. So, here we have, if I put a fatha there, we have ja, we have ja, and then e, and b. So this has to be pronounced jaib, jaib, jaib. So if we have a fatha and then a ya, it's a. Everyone see that? A, e, a, a. And then fatha followed by a wow is ow. Everyone say for me, ow. Ow. And this brings me to the final thing I want to go over today. Last class period, we learned how to write the different short vowels. Fatha, Dhamma, Kasra, Kasra. There's also one more symbol that's important to think about when we are writing the vowels, and that is, or at least one. Um, the next important symbol is when there's no vowel. When there's no vowel on that letter, we have to write something special there. And it's called the... Here's my little box for the symbol. It's called Sukoon. Sukoon. Everyone say that for me. Sukoon. Sukoon. So, literally, Sukoon means rest because we don't have a long vowel on that word that we're saying. Sukoon. And its symbol is, happens above the line. So, if this is the line here, it's just a closed circle, a small circle. So in the word jab here, there's no vowel on the ya. So we put a sukun there. We say jab, jab. Everyone say it with me, jab, jab. Similarly, To say you have veiled, you veiled is okay. First of all, what's um, what are the? Don't look at the vowel markings. Look at just the the letters. What do we have here? What's the first letter? Ha. Then the second letter. Jim. Third letter. Ba. Fourth letter or last letter? Ta. Okay, in between the ha and the jim, we have a fatha, a. And then what sound do we have between the jim and the ba? Fatha. What about between the ba and the ta? We have a sukun, which just means there is no vowel there. So we're not going to write anything in the English. We leave that blank. There's no vowel in between there. And finally, after the ta, we have a? Ah. Exactly. So this now is 
Hajabta. Hajabta. Everyone after me. Hajabta. Hajabta. Right. Now we don't, all this means is that there's, there's not a vowel there. We don't like make, we don't put any extra sound or any extra, extra time there. Some people make the mistake of, of going like hajab and then they stop there, hajab, and wait a bit and then say ta. Hajab, ta. Hajab, ta. Right? No, it just means there's not a vowel there. Hajab, ta. One more time. Hajab, ta. Hajab, ta. Um, so, say Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidin Mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Wa ala man tabihu bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. If everyone could get the syllabus out, we'll start with reading the, the intention of Imam Al Haddad. Does anyone, does anyone need a copy? Does everyone have? You need one? Okay. Okay. There you go. You're welcome. Ah, uh, yeah. I think so. There you go. All right, so, Bismillah. يا فتاح يا عليم افتح لنا فتحا قريبا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله والسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى O oh, Opener, O oh, All-Knowing One, grant us an opening soon. In the name of Allah, the All-Merciful, the Compassionate, Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and blessings and peace upon our master Muhammad, his family and his companions. I intend to study and teach, to remember and remind, to profit and bring profit, to benefit and bring benefit, to encourage holding fast to the book of Allah and the way of his messenger, to call to guidance, to direct towards good, and to aim for the countenance of Allah and his pleasure, his nearness, and his reward. Exalted be he. Alhamdulillah. So as we start now, I um, wanted to touch upon again one thing that I mentioned in the first time we were going through the alphabet and then last class period as well. What do we get for, for every letter? that we recite when we read Qur'an, what's the reward? Ten hasanat, right. Ten, ten hasanat, um, there, there are some prerequisites, right? Like ten hasanat when, 
when we when we have uh, you know when we're facing the qibla and when we um, when we're facing the qibla we have all concentration when we're completely in everything right that that's only when we get the ten hasanat right ah we got a smart one in the back what do you say Yasmin? Right, well, it's, the specification is, we're told that we get 10 hasanat for every letter that we read. And so, and so that's unqualified. So, 10 hasanat is the bare minimum, like we said before. 10 hasanat is the bare minimum. 10 hasanat for every single letter that we recite. Every single letter, inshallah, that, that we learn. Now, now we know how many, how many letters have we learned. We've learned, we learned wow and yat, and we have alif, ba, ta. So, I mean, in a sense, if, if you just went through the whole Qur'an and you looked at, now we have nine letters, so that's about a third of the alphabet. Um, you don't know all of, the, all of the letters right now, but if you saw every time you, reckon, you saw a letter that you recognized, if you just read that letter, there we go, ten points, another ten points, another ten points, right? And that's the bare minimum. You know, if you consider other, other adab, other etiquettes of relationship with the Qur'an and reciting the Qur'an, such as trying to be in a state of wudu, facing the qibla, having presence of mind, presence of, of body, sitting in a good position, all these kind of things, really thinking about what you're doing, even more of a multiplication, more than ten. Right? Can I? Just think, yeah. <clears throat> so, first we'd like to start with the, uh, the order of the alphabet again. So first we have Alif, Alif, Alif. 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 Ba. 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 Ba, Ta, Ta, Ta. 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 Tha, 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 Tha. 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 Jim, Jim, Ha, Ha, Kha, Kha. Okay, one final point on this last letter. Notice that it's kha, not kha. Right? Kha. There are certain letters in the Arabic alphabet that, that we can label them as, right now, the easiest terminology for now is emphatic. Because that, that's kind of a, a common, uh, common term that you'll find, emphatic letters. Also, uh, heavy letters, raised letters. These are all ways to describe letters that the main thing to know is that after these letters, alif is not a, it's not the typical a, it's a. So one of them, the only one that we know so far is kha. So the one alif comes after ba, it's ba. When alif comes after wa, it's wa. But when alif comes after kha, it's kha. Everyone say one more time, kha. Kha. Right. Similarly with, with fatha, it's not a, it's kha. Khab. If we had just kha and ba with a fatha between them, khab. Everyone say for me, khab. Khab. Okay. So we'll try to go through these examples quickly. Um, the first one. Everyone say for me, thawb. Thawb. Right, we have a tha, wow, and ba. What's this guy that's on the wall? Sukun. What does sukun mean? No vow. Right. There's nothing there. Nothing there. It doesn't mean we just we stop. No, it just means there's no vowel there. Right? We don't take a long pause. Everyone again. Thaub. Thaub. The next one. Bawab. Bawab. Okay, now I want to spend a bit of time on this one. So, what's the what's the first letter that we have here in this word? That good. What's the what's the second letter that we have? Yeah. We have a yeah. Okay, we're gonna leave that for now. What's the what's the last letter? Okay. So, last time, actually two weeks ago, let's go two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, 
we were introduced to wow and yeah. And then last week, we also went over wow and yeah, but in different contexts. Because wow and yeah, they can be one of two things. What are one of those, what, what are those two things? That wow and yeah can be? Vowels or consonants, right, right. A vowel in a sense of, uh, consonant is, is a, uh, a letter that um, it has a definite place of articulation in, in the mouth or, or wherever it's, it's being pronounced, has a definite place. Vowels happen just, they, they fill up the whole mouth. And it's, it's things like ooh, ah, e, a. Those are all vowels, right? So wow and ya yeah can be either vowels or consonants. When wow is a vowel, what does it sound like? Ooh. Everyone repeat after that. When, ooh. Ooh. That's wow as a vowel. What about wow as a consonant? What does it sound like? Wa, wa, wa. Right, right. So the name for wow is has two wows in it, and they're both consonants. Wow, wow! Everyone say for me, wow. Wow. wow, wow, wow! That's the name of the letter, name of this letter. It's not ooh, uh, ooh, right? Everyone see that? It's not the wow, the two wows here are not vowels. It's not ooh, uh, ooh. It's wow, wow. wow. So. How do we know when, um, how do we know when wow or yet is a consonant? How do we know when it's a vowel? It'll be a vowel when, well, two conditions. We look at what comes before it, what comes after it, right? So if, if what comes before it is the same type of vowel, so for example, in Boot, the kind of sound that's coming after the bat is an oo. It's an oo sound. Oo, it's an ironic. On the bat is an oo sound. Right? So the, the vowel that is before the well is the same type of vowel. Same type of vowel. And after the well is nothing else. Uh, after the wow, the wow doesn't have any other kind of, of vowel there. Any other short vowel. There's no fatha, there's no kasra. Right? It's not, it's not bawat, and it's not, uh, it's not buat, and it's not buit. It's boot. Right? So in that case, in that instance, that when, that's when we know that wow or yeah are vowels. When the short vowel that comes before it is the same type as, as, as that vowel and when there's no other short vowel that comes on it. Right, so the question is, this ya yeah right here, is it a vowel or is it a consonant? Consonant, right. Because before it, right, so we know that it's a consonant so it's going to be written as ya. Yeah and not E, right? So we know it's a consonant now because what comes before it? What comes before the yet? Who says, who says Kasra? Who says Kasra? Raise your hand if you say Kasra. Okay, a few. Raise your hand if you say Fatha. Right, Fatha. Fatha, ah. Uh, Fatha is the one that comes on, on top, whereas Kasra comes below. Just like the dots on the ya, which is the same sound as a Kasra, on the bottom, and just like uh, the Kasra is on the bottom. Similarly with Fatha and Alif, same kind of sounds. Fatha, Fatha and Alif. Fatha goes above the letters. Alif also sits above the line. Right, that's one way to remember it. Anyway, right, so it's a fatha that comes before it. 
And what comes after the ya? I mean, what kind of symbol is, is on the ya? What is it? Sukun, sukun, right. Typically, if you see sukun, it means it's, uh, it's a consonant as well. Typically. Right, but this is enough to tell us that it's going to be a consonant because we have a different vowel before it. A different vowel before it. So how do we say this? Right, everyone after me. Thaykh. 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 Okay. And finally, this one. We have an alif after a kha. So it's not going to be, this alif is, is not going to be pronounced a. How is it going to sound? Ah, exactly. Khaba. Khaba. The patha comes after the ba. So that patha is going to be like normal, going to be a. A. A lot of people make the mistake of having this letter affect all the consonants that come around it, after it, before it. Right? So we're not going to say khaba, khaba. Right? Because the fatha is on the ba. Ba. Any alif or fatha that comes after ba sounds like a. Whereas if it comes after kha, it sounds like a. Right? So khaba. 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 Good. Good. Okay. Any questions? Questions or things after the homework or anything in general? Yeah. Um, Why are they Just trying to be clear on what two letters do you use to identify the three uh, long uh, the A, 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 Right. Oh, wow. You're talking about when we're writing in like with English letters. Right. Alif, I'm going to use AA, though you might see that that's often common as well. Right. And then for wow, right, what is it? U. Exactly. W, that's my system. And then for yeah, exactly. Right. A, U, E. A, U, E. Right. Was that it? Okay. Okay. Let's get to the good stuff. So just make my line chart now again. Right. So we have basically four letters to go over today. Um, good news is, yeah, I think there's only good, nothing but good news today, right? All of Arabic is good news anyway, but anyway. Good news today, uh, or I, sh I guess I should say the news, because all news about Arabic is, is good news. Alhamdulillah. The news is that we have, uh, we have four letters uh, to go over today, and then a few more symbols uh, once we're done with that, inshallah. Um, and, and all of these sounds are pretty much in, in English. The important thing is just being precise about them. Alhamdulillah, and, and all the shapes are not that complicated too. So, Alhamdulillah. First one. Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Kha, Dal. Dal. So, everyone say for me, Dal. 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 D, D is the sound, just like the English D. Everyone say for me, D, D. Right, Dal. Okay. So, we can pretty much say, right, this sound is just like the English D. The way it's written, the best way to think about it is, um, that it's basically two sides of a triangle, the two right sides of, of a triangle. So, we start about halfway up the line. If our total height of the line is, say, 
you know, this high. So an alif is going to be that tall. We start about halfway up the line. We go back a bit. I make a curve, kind of a pointed curve, and then across on the line like that. And that's it, like two sides to a triangle. And this all sits on the line. The dad sits on the line, like that. When it's at the beginning of a word, exactly the same. Just like the wow, the alif, this doesn't connect to what comes after it. So it looks exactly the same. We write the dal, and then we have to lift our pens up again to, to do the rest of the word. And then just like the Aleph and Wa, which don't connect, when we have a letter that does connect coming before it, we're going to be coming into the Dal. We come into the Dal, but then it doesn't connect to what comes after it again. So, we're coming in from a previous letter, we go up for that point of the triangle, retrace that point, and then go along the line. Once again, coming in from another letter, we go up, retrace that line, and then along the line. And then the, when it's at the end of the word, exactly the same as the middle. Now I'm gonna write a few examples down at the, at the bottom. Um, and we'll go from there. Take your time writing this down. I have to pop to the side quickly. So I'm just going to have this information all, all on the board and then, and then um, take your time trying to decipher it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so, go through these examples now, and then um, I'll wait to go around and, and check everyone's writing until we've gone through the next letter. So this one, any brave souls, this first word, what is this? Yeah, have them clean. Good, everyone, dadge. 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 Okay, this one. Anyone? Yes, me? Good. Jidah. Jidah. You can see that. Jidah. Um, and then finally, bed. Right. Everyone, bed. Bed. Okay. The next letter is the Val. 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 So we've already done the 
th. The th is the sound as in thief. Everyone say thief. 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 That's the th. But in English, th can also sometimes mean the vel sound. So in the word that. That's the sound that we're talking about. Everyone say that. 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 Thief. Thief. That. that. Everyone tells that there's a difference there? So the way we the way we write the that is just like the dal, only with a dot on top. On the top of the point of that triangle, we put a dot. So now everyone pay attention now with me. So the that. Val as in that, tha as in thief. The difference is that for the val, for the val, there's you're using your vocal cords on that on that sound. It's like the difference between s and z. Everyone, everyone say like an s sound. Okay, put your put your fingers on your on your throat too, and say. Now say does everyone feel that vibration now? Similarly here, everyone say as in thief. F, F. Now that. F, F, F. Everyone feel that for the that, for that, there's vibration there? Right. So that's the difference between that and that. Vibration that happens in the vocal cords right here. So, for all the forms, all four of them, just like the dad, only with a dot on the top. Whoops, it goes on the line. Now I'll write a few letters in English um, for you to write down as practice and while you try some of the practice then I'll, um, I'll take a look at your, at your writing as well. And then quickly, one, one note as well, um, I, I'm putting a, an underline under the DH, putting a line under the DH, just to show that it's not D and H, and that's all one symbol there, just like I did the that. So, first one, that. First we have, of course, first letter is a that. Followed by what comes after the that? An alif. And then finally, after the alif is a? Ta. That. Everyone say for me. That. 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 Next. What do we have? Wow. Wow acting as what? Vowel or consonant? Consonant. Consonant, right. And then we have what? Yeah, and then finally, that. Everyone say for me, weave, weave, okay. And then finally, first we have a, a jim, and then followed by a, that. And do we connect to the to the next letter or not? 
No, because dal and dal never connect to what comes after them. So what's the final letter? But what about this? This A, this letter A that comes after the ba, don't we put an alif in? It's a fatha, right, because it's a single A that I've written, means it's a fatha. If there were an alif there, I would put two A's, not a single A, so we have a fatha there, and then similarly, after the the, the we have a what? Fatha, and after the jim, we also have a fatha. Okay, so say it with me. Jadaba. Jadaba. Okay. Any questions on any of this? Okay, moving on. Next we have the Ra. Everyone say for me, Ra. 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 So we have we have ahs in uh, in English, but the um, the ah is um, obviously it, it differs from what kind of English you speak, and and many uh, many European and Latin based languages have an ah, but across them it's it's very different in terms of how it's pronounced. Well, the way the French pronounce it is, is very far back in the so er, er. Um, and, but then you could probably tell that I pronounce it differently from the way that most of you pronounce it too. So, for example, what you would sit on, what would you call that? Chair, chair, right. Whereas I would call it chair, chair, right. Anyway, there's a lot of variation in the way that we pronounce ours. Um, for now, um, for now, the typical ah, ra, 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 ra. For now, it's uh, whatever you do is, is is fine. I think though, though, keep in mind that it's um, eventually you want to get to a point where it's your tongue is ra, ra. Your tongue is touching the front of the roof of your mouth. Try to visualize that and then do that. Ra, 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 ra. If anyone knows how to roll the ahs, arr, it's that same, the place that you put your tongue for that, that's where the ra is pronounced for. Even though in, in Arabic, I mean, when you're pronouncing Quran, Quranic, Quranic Arabic uh, in the best way, uh, you wouldn't be rolling the ahs. It's not Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. No. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Right. Anyway, that's the ra. Everyone say for me. Ra. 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 Okay, good. So, did anyone notice anything about what that sounds like when we say the word, or when we say the name of the letter? Anyone notice anything? Compare it to ba, ta, ta, dal, val, ra. It's what? Exactly. It's ra, not ra. Just like kha. So when alif or fatha comes after the ra, it's going to sound like ah. It's that deeper sound. Because ra is emphatic. Ra is emphatic. So Allah is Lord of the worlds, right? Rabb. Rabbul Alameen. Rabb. Everyone say to me, Rabb. Rabb. It's not Rabb. Yeah, I had to think about that because it's so unnatural for me to, to say. It's not Rabb. Rabb. Right? Rabb. No. Rabb. Rabb. Rahman. Rahman. Right? Not Rahman. So any fatha or alif that comes after this is ah ah, and it's a pretty simple letter to to write. Just like the dal and the dal doesn't connect to what comes after it. When it's alone, 
it's written as kind of a, a curve that starts a bit above the line but goes down below the line. Starts a bit above the line, goes down below the line, like that. It almost looks like if you took the dal or the dal and kind of straightened it out a bit and then stuck it below the line. Or say if you took if you took the part of the dal or dal that lies on the line and then kind of twisted it down, pulled it down a bit. Yeah. Looks like a what? A comma. Yeah, almost like a like a backwards comma. Uh, actually, no, that would be the right way. And <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be bigger than yeah than than a comma. And then yeah, but it does kind of look like a comma. Right. And since it doesn't connect to what comes after it, the when it begins a word, it's going to look just like when it's alone. Look the same. And then finally, when it's in the middle or the end, we're going to be coming in from a previous letter, just like that and that. So we're going to be coming in and then make the rot like that. Into the letter, go up a bit and then down below the line. Going through these, uh, these examples I wrote on the board. Uh, let's start with the one at the bottom here. Anyone want to try this? What the? Close. What comes, what, what's coming after the, the ra? What's on the ra? Exactly. So not barud, but what? Yeah. Bari. Right. Ra with a kasra is ri. Right? Ri and then? Exactly. So. Okay. But not quite barid because the first, because we have. Because we're in at, we have an alif. So that's going to be the long vowel. Whereas kasra is the short vowel. Right? This is a short vowel here. This is a long vowel. So not barid. Here it's short, long. What you gave me was short, long, but long, short. Right, so how do we say that? Once again. Barid. Barid. Okay, everyone. Barid. Barid. Right. Long, short. Long, short. In terms of the vowels there. Right. Now the one above that. Um, comes right at the beginning of the Quran after Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام م ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه ريب أبون سيفمي ريب ريب Notice there's a fatha on the ra. So the fatha is going to sound like a. Ah. It's not raib, raib, but raib, 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 raib. And then the last one, everyone with me, bara, bara, bara. Good. Okay. And finally, the last full consonant that we have today, the last full letter we have today is, its name is Zay. Everyone say for me, Zay. Zay. The sound is this A. Yeah, I typically write my Z's like that. It's a Z. Z. Yeah. Sometimes they say Zayn and sometimes Zay. I've, I've never heard Zayn before. I've heard Zat. Um, some of the classical books have Zat. Um, Musa, have you ever heard Zay, Zayn? Have you, like with a noon at the end? Yeah. Of the letter? Really? Okay. Okay. The, the, standard way, the, stand, the standard name of the letter is, uh, is, is Zay. The most common one you'll, you'll find is Zay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, alhamdulillah, I learned something new today. Yeah. But the way you'll find it mostly is, is Zay, Zay. One more time, Zay. Zay. And this is just like the Ra with a dot over it. Same thing. That's the Zay. So let's try these two words that I put here. First, we have uh, raisins. Raisins. The Arabic word for raisins is what? Zabib. 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 Right. And then, um, what about this one? There we go. Zait. Zait. Just like raib, only for here the fatha was after the ra, so it was an a, aib, raib. Zait, everyone. Zait. Zait. 
right? Means oil, oil. So related to the word for olive too. Olive oil, zait zaitun, zaitun. Anyone heard of Zaytuna College? Has, has anyone not heard of Zaytuna College here? I don't know. Quick plug for Zaytuna. <laughs> if you know anyone of high school age, college age too, feels like they're not in the right place in college, consider Zaytuna College. I'm serious. Zaytuna is an important, it's an important thing that's, that's, that's going on right now in our community. Um, if you don't know much about Zaytuna, I really encourage you, um, if you're around the age of, of uh, wanting to look into college or know anyone who is, encourage them to apply. Right now, applications are coming in, filling, places are filling up fast. They have a four-year bachelor's degree program, liberal arts with a major in Islamic studies or Arabic. And then um, also, if you want to go on after this, there is the Zaytuna Summer Arabic Intensive Program as well. Um, so I just wanted to put that plug in. I, uh, during, during the week time, I'm the coordinator of student life at Zaytuna, so that's my take on it. But seriously, consider it and spread the word as well. Anyway, any questions on this stuff? Can you break down the first word? Um, the Zayt or Zabid? This one? Okay. I'll make it a little bigger. Um, yeah. Okay, so first we have what what is this? That's a Zay. And on the Zay is a what? A fatha. Then we have what are the we have now? We have three letters that come after that. Right. Ba and then the last one is a ba as well. And between them I could put a kasra on the ba as well. Zabib. Because the sound that comes after the ba is an e. E. Zabib, Zabib. So, if we know this is a ya, and there's a kasra, there's an i sound before the ya, and there's no other vowel on the ya, what do we know about that ya? It's a what? It's a vowel, it's a vowel. It's a consonant if there's a different vowel on, on either side of it. That's when it would be a consonant. If there's a different vowel coming before or after it, but since kasra is the same vowel sound as, as ya, i versus e, then it's going to be. And anyway, we can't really have we can't really have this combination in, in Arabic anyway. Zabib, zabib. We need we need some kind of we can't really pronounce that. It doesn't really work. We need some kind of consonant in, in that anyway. So you can kind of rule out that the ya is going to be a consonant because you can't really pronounce pronounce uh, oh that's horrible handwriting uh, zabib zabib no, it doesn't really work zabib zabib everyone one more time zabib zabib good so those are all the the full letters that we have to go through today. Finally, two symbols to go through before we're done. Two extra symbols. One, we have a symbol in Arabic called the Shedda. Everyone say for me. Shedda. Shedda. Literally, Shedda means strengthening. Strengthening. Shedda. Why? Because whenever we have this symbol on a letter, it's like a vowel symbol. It's like a vowel symbol. So if, if someone, if 
you're writing Arabic without writing all the vowels, you might not see the shadda there, but if you're putting all the vowels, then you will see the shadda there. The shadda means that it doubles the consonant that it's on. When it's on top of a consonant, it means that consonant is double. So I'll show you the, the sign for it, and then I'll, I'll give some examples. We'll pronounce a few examples. It basically looks like kind of a tilted W. It sits above the line, and it's like that. Kind of slanted. Slanted down to the left. So if it want a bat, like that. An interesting, interesting point now, when we combine this with vowels, a fatha or a dhamma sit, they sit right on top of the shadda if there is something. But the kasra, So we have a bat with a shadda on top of it for all of these. If we have a kasra on it, kasras normally go below the line, right? But if we have a shadda on that word, the shadda goes, uh, the kasra goes below the shadda. This is a kasra right here. Even though it's above the letter itself, it's below the kasra. Uh, yeah, the kasra is below the kasra. Thanks for that. The kasra is below the shadda. Even though it's above the consonant itself, it's below the shadda, which is what counts. Now, some examples. Um, let's see. What does this say right here? Rada. There we go. Everyone. Rada. 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 Now, if we put a shadda on the da, now it becomes radda. 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 Everyone hear the difference? If there's no shadda there, it's Radda. Radda. If there's shadda, then it's double. We have the, we have the, the constant gets doubled. So, Radda. Radda. Everyone say it for me again. Radda. 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 Right. Another example. So this one here, it means attractive. Attractive is jadzab. Everyone say after me, Jezzab. Jezzab. Right? It's not Jezzab. Not just Jezzab, but we stay. That The Zal gets doubled. We stay on that one. Jezzab. Jezzab. Right. Right. That's another example. Um, I could think of a good one. For this one here, we have a Ra, followed by a ba, and followed by a ya. 
What's the what's the consonant on the bat? What's the consonant symbol on the bat there? Uh, I'm way out of whack today. I'm sorry. The what's the vowel symbol on the bat? Is it? It's a kasra because it's below the shadda. It's below the shadda here, so it's a kasra. Right, so it's a kasra. Now, what comes on the ra? What's on the ra? Fatha. And that, what's being done to the ba right here? It's being doubled. So this means, my lord, my lord. Rabbi. Everyone say with me, Rabbi. Rabbi. Right, not Rabbi. Not Rabbi, but Rabbi. Rabbi. Right. Because it gets doubled. So Lord is a Rabb. Not just Rabb, but Rabb. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rabbil Alameen. Now if you look, if you look in, in the uh, in the Mus'haf, anywhere you look and you find Allah's name, I'm going to write it here, though I know we don't know all of the symbols yet. We don't know the La and the Ha sound, but Allah, it has a Shadda the Shadda, because it's not, it's not Allah, it's not Allah. It's Allah, right? Allah, Allah. Everyone say for me, Allah. 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 Right, so if you go look at Allah when it has vowels, you'll see that there is that shadda there on top of the la sound, top of the lam sound. Yeah. Um. That's kind of that gets a bit more complicated. I'm gonna when, when we get to uh, lamb and and hat and talk about Allah's name, I'll I'll say that. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about that. But good question, good question. Okay, good. Now one more symbol to go through. Um, this symbol is called the Hamza, the Hamza, not as in your name, your name is Hamza, this is Hamza, small h. <clears throat> Everyone say for me, Hamza, Hamza, Hamza. Hamza. right, this is, it's almost like a letter, um, because it's, it's, it's written out, but it's not really counted as a letter. There's a whole history behind that of has to do with the way it was pronounced in, in the Prophet's time, alayhi salatu wasalam, peace be upon him. Um, anyway, this, when you see this symbol, a hamza is, the technical term for it in English is um, glottal stop. Because we kind of have this sound in English, but we, we don't really think about it. So when I say, when something goes wrong, and I forget to say, Alhamdulillah, I might say, if I get caught up in the moment, I might say, uh-oh, right? Everyone say for me, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. This dash right here, it's basically, that's the Hamza sound right there. That's a glottal stop, a glottal stop. What it means is that it's, it's stopping, you're stopping in, at the place of your vocal cords. You're not saying, uh, you're not combining these two vowels here and saying, oh, oh, right? There's a stop in the middle, uh-oh. Your vocal cords close, uh-oh, right? Uh-oh, one more time for me, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Right. There's a break there. There's a break there in the vowel sound. And that's the Hamza. 
that's the Hamza. So the the way this is written is there are several ways it's written. We'll go over a few now and get to a few later on in the class. One is that it you you can see it on the line and it looks like so it's on the line like that. It's almost like a C with a line slanting down on the C, like this. <clears throat> and this is the Hamza. So, if you're meticulous and you pay attention to detail, and you'd be realizing how I've been writing some of the letters, some of the names of these of these letters that we've gone over already. So, for example, when I write out ba, I wrote out b a. A apostrophe. Apostrophe. The usual way that, that we write the Hamza in English is like a, an apostrophe. So that's because at the end, just like here, look, there we go. Wrote an apostrophe there because the name of the, of, um, the letter, the third letter that we went over today, if you were to write out that name, it would be Like that. Because at the end, we have a stop, a little uh, uh. Listen to how I say it. Ra, ra. Does everyone hear that? It's not just ra, ra, but ra, ra. It's easier to hear if, say, we put something on the Hamza. On the hamza. So, say, for example, we put a fatha on that, it would be ra, ra. Everyone say for me, ra. -a. Ra'a. 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 Similarly, say a lot of the a lot of the names of the words are like this. Everyone say for me, ba. 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 Make sure at the end there's a a bit of an uh, uh, sound. It's not so strong, but there is that ba. Ba. Everyone overemphasize it for me. Ba. 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 ba, right, because your vocal cords are closing at that point. No, this is the only. This is the when it sits on the line. This is the way you see it. It doesn't connect in any way to what's before it or after it, and it's not really a, a letter, though it kind of is. Any other questions? One final thing now about the Hamza. I mentioned this before about how in Arabic linguistics, the way the Arabs think about language is that they say that it is physically impossible for a human being to start a word with a, with a vowel. Right. It is physically impossible to start a word with a vowel. What they say then is that every time you think you're hearing a vowel at the beginning of a word, what's basically happening is that it's a Hamza starting that word and then you hear the vowel after the Hamza. Because before you start any vowel, your vocal cords are closed. So when I say A or U, the first thing I'm doing is that basically my vocal cords are closed. The first thing I'm doing is that they're closed, then I open them to say the oo. But before that oo, my vocal cords are closed, there's a hamza there. Oo. A. E. So according to the Arabs, and the way that they view their language, anytime you hear a consonant at the beginning of the word, that's actually a hamza beginning the word. And so that's going to be reflected in the writing system. What that means is that, um, unfortunately, Hamza isn't, it's not so easy now, Hamza isn't written exactly on the line when it starts a word. It always, 
has a seat of an alif when it's at the beginning of a word. What do I mean by that? A lot of technical stuff, inshallah, it'll all start coming together. It means that, say for example, we hear the word, um, we, hear, we hear the word, uh, Abi, Abi, my father, Abi. Oh, that's bad. Abi. Even though we hear it starting with a consonant, what's basically happening is that it's a hamza there. But when the hamza begins at the beginning of a word, it needs to sit on top of an alif. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see this. Abi. Everyone see this? We have, a, we have an alif with a hamza on it and then there's a fatha there. Abi. Similarly with the Dhamma. So, for example, um, why am I blanking? I'll just come up with a nonsense word for now. Um, Omi. Great. No, but they don't know the meme yet. That's the thing. Yeah, but we, we haven't done meme yet. Oh, yeah. Thing. yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, okay. Utab. Utab. Here we go. Quickly. There we go. Even though it's a dhamma, it's still every time that we have a kasra. At the, uh, uh, sorry, every time that we have a Hamza at the beginning of a word, it has the seat of an Alif. Seat of an Alif. So even though it's a Dhamma this time, Utab, Utab, we still have a a Alif for the seat of the Hamza and then a Dhamma on top of that. Utab, everyone say for me. Utab. 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 And then finally, and this is where we, inshallah, end today. Um, before we get into um, a bit of review and stuff to wrap things up. If we have a kasra sound starting, so in a lot of words that we might be familiar with, Islam, Iman, when you see that written out in Arabic, you're going to see it starts with a what? What does it start with? It doesn't start with a vowel. We just said it doesn't start with a vowel. Don't kill me, man. You're killing me. It starts with a Hamza, right. So we're going to see a Hamza. Except when we have an E sound, when it's a Kasra, just like how the Kasra sits below the line, the Hamza actually sits below the Alif when you write it. So you see it like that. This is for the E sound. So if we had, say for example, Ib, Ib. There we go. That's Ib. And just so you can see it, even though we, we haven't gone over the other letter symbols, I'll show you how to write Islam. Islam. So you see we have seat of an alif with the Hamza under it because it's a Kasra there. And that's how it is. I know it's a lot of information now. Like I warned at the beginning, um, we're trying to do this with going through once a week uh, instead of twice a week. So I'm trying to cram a lot of information in um, and, then, and then we'll work through it and build on it. And, and the last few weeks are all review so we can make sure that we're all kind of, it's all sunk in. So even if it doesn't sink, sink in immediately now, it'll come inshallah. It'll come. The majority of the time when you start a word with an alif? When you start a word with an alif? Yeah. 
there was always going to be a, not a majority of the time. There will always be an there will always be a Hamza there um, when when you start. Yeah, when you think you're starting a word with a with a vowel, it's always there's actually a Hamza there. Now, if you, if you were to say like Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, that starts with a, ah, right? Um, uh, there are times when you do write the Hamza, there's times when you don't write the Hamza. That gets a little complicated. We'll go over that towards the end of the class, inshallah. But there is still a Hamza there. In the mind of our Arab linguists, it starts, that word starts with a Hamza. Okay? Okay. Any questions about, about the Hamza? I know it's a lot of information right now, but any more questions about it? Okay. So tonight, do you do you want to do a bit of review and stuff? That's okay. I'll I'll finish it up. I'll finish it up. But I'll finish up the the homework if you do. You want to do you want to do some stuff, or would you rather not? Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, so a few points of review. Let's start with you guys. What, what would you like to see in terms of... Um, we don't have that much time left of class, but we could do me saying words in Arabic and you trying to... Uh, me saying words and you trying to write them in Arabic or... Um, me writing Arabic words and we try to say them together or writing English letters and you try to write them in Arabic. Anything anyone particularly wants to work on right now? Writing. writing. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's let's try some let's try some dictation then. So I'm gonna say something and you try to write it in Arabic as you hear it, okay? Okay, so hijab, 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 Okay, so finally, now to end, just a bit of encouragement. Um, we have a hadith, uh, a hadith from the collection of Abu Dawood. It's reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man qara al Quran wa amila bima fihi ulbi sawalidahu tajan yom al qiyamati, dawuhu ahsanu min daw al shamsi fi biut al dunya, law kanat fikum, fama zannukum bil ladi amila bih." So here we understand that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever reads the Qur'an and applies what they have read, then his or her parents will be given a crown to wear on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, on the, the last day. And the light of this crown is better than the light of the sun in this world. And so when we think about this, we think that the what we're doing here in learning this Arabic is, is not just for ourselves, it's for our parents, for our communities, and ultimately they'll get that reward and, and, um, and that pleasure uh, for, for the work that we put in right now. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, jazakum wa khair, subhanakullahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So first we'll, uh, as usual, read the, read the intention from Imam al-Haddad on the syllabus. Um, so if you're new, um, take a look at the, at the syllabus on the back. There's um, it's kind of a long Arabic thing, but then the way to pronounce it, the transliteration is, is right below it. You can read from that too. Ya Fattahu. 
Um, sorry, and then if you could, if you two could share. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Ya Fatahu. Ya Alimu. Iftah Nana. Fathan Qariba. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu. على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نويت التعلم والتعنيم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك في كتاب الله وسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى سنا I just want to ask some questions to get us uh, thinking about, about some things before we get started into, into the material. I'd like to go around and hear from everyone now, just, just returning to intentions now, why we're here. Um, so I'd like to hear everyone, from everyone, why are you here? What's going on here? So I'll start myself. Why am I here? What, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because I believe that, uh, first of all, I have, I have this knowledge of the Arabic, and so I, um, I feel a responsibility to pass that knowledge on to others. Uh, and second of all, I believe that there is, um, uh, there's great reward in, in helping people um, understand religious knowledge, understand the Quran, and, and I want that reward. <laughs> I'm not going to give up on that because I, I know that I'm, I'm in need of, of everything I can get in this world. This whole world is a vast farmland and whatever we can grow, whatever we can pick up and harvest, we need to get that done in this life and so that's why I'm here. Right. I just want to, want to remind everyone just Always, always be aware of your intentions, and then always, also be aware of, of the balance that that we have to find in in life. That that Allah has told us that this this religion is a religion of balance, and it, it's very hard to forget that. It's very hard to find the balance between between confidence in the knowledge that we do have and almost the uncomfortableness or the, the, the discomfort and the, the um, effort that it takes to, to acquire new knowledge. And it's easy to, to, to fall into one of the extremes, either to be satisfied w with what we have and say, this is all I need, you know, I'm set, you know, I got my knowledge, I got my five prayers I do, I know that's, that's going to take me to Jannah. No, we can, we can never really be satisfied, we can never really be sure of what what we're missing out on and what Allah has in store for us and what we can be doing. But at the same time, it's also easy to, to overburden ourselves and take this class and that class and try to keep up on everything. And you know, this, this session um, and this course, this 15-week course, 
is um, it, it's not for everyone. It's not not everyone is going to become is not is going to get all of the information in this course during this time. Um, and I'm trying to go pretty quickly through the letters as well. So not all of it is going to come immediately. But the importance is to put everything in perspective, not be overburdened by things, but understand how we can learn what we can learn from things and be able to take knowledge without um, without feeling the weight of, of all this stuff that we need to learn. Because, because it's true that, that uh, many of the scholars have, have said that learning Arabic, uh, or at least learning, learning um, how to pronounce the Arabic, and specifically how to pronounce the Qur'an, including with all the different rules, so beyond just the alphabet, but knowing all the different rules of Tajweed, many scholars have said this is an individual obligation upon every single Muslim. Meaning, if you're not working towards that, well, if you don't have that right now, and your life ends at this point, it's, you're missing something, and you could potentially be held accountable for that. There's that, there's that place where we find there's, there's that position. But it's not just that position that we need to pay attention to. We need to also pay attention to the fact that everything that we do, every way in which we strive, even, it, it doesn't matter what we accomplish in this world. What matters first is our intentions, what's going into what we accomplish, because we're not the ones who, who make the work happen. Allah is the one who, who makes the work happen. We, all we can do is just kind of manage to point ourselves in the right direction. As Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْلِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those who strive in our ways, we will guide to our paths. Uh, those, who, uh, those who strive in us, we will guide to our paths. And notice that, that when, when it says that, it's, it says, uh, when Allah says this, He says, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ uh, سُبُولَنَا Not سَبِيلَنَا سَبِيلَنَا is our path. Right? سِرَاتَنَا our, our path. But He says سُبُولَنَا Our paths. Because the number of paths to Allah is the number of breaths in the creation. Everyone, everyone has a different path. And so, but each path has to be, has to be sanctioned in a way. I mean, there's not, there is the one path to Allah. And we believe as Muslims that, that Islam is, um, is, is really the, the only way to really get to Allah if we're going to be serious about ourselves, that he has set this down, of this is what we need to do in order to get to him. But then within that general thing, within that one path, everyone has their individual things that they need to do, individual qualities that, that, um, that, they've, that have been placed inside of them that they need to take care of, and then individual lights and insights that no one else really has but they have and they need to develop those and, and let those shine and let those shine to others. So some of you, some of you sitting here have, have a talent with language and it might not be apparent yet, it might be apparent. And so for those, those people, those of you are going to become the, the, the teachers and, um, and the teachers of this language in the community, inshallah. But others of you have different things to offer and different, different things to work with. And so, and so we just ask Allah to, to grant all of us tawfiq in, in what brings us closer to Him and brings other people closer to Him through us. I mean. So first, uh, any, questions, any questions about the homework, immediate um, things, things burning in your mind, anything? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's um, that's a little tricky. It's um, because I think, as far as I could tell, the the DVD was more meant for a computer, and it's yeah, and it's really it's it's hard to. 
um, to, to, to use like a DVD player, it's just a, a general DVD player rather than a computer to, uh, to use it, yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't really know how to get past it. I mean, and um, all of the, all the work that's in the homework, the work on the worksheet and the, um, the DVD exercises, all of that, um, none of it's com completely necessary. They're all, they're all tools that, that I'm uh, giving you access to, uh, that I'm suggesting to you in order to, to work on things. Um, and I also want to say that just in case I, I forget um, about the homework uh, for, for today, um, that uh, the worksheets are getting kind of, kind of longer. Um, I think, and so now the the one that I made for today is is um, a full three pages, I think. But just understand that we all do what what we need and what we're capable of. Um, I'm I'm trying to the reason I, I make the homework and uh, yeah the reason I put the homework together is is to give you tools to kind of figure out what you need to work on and and to to give you the uh, the ability to work on certain things. It's not so that I can say, uh, it's not because I need you to fill out a certain number of questions, right? It's, and, so, and so the important thing is the effort that comes from your part. I don't, I don't really, what I care about at the end of the day is that, is that you learn the material as much as you can, not that you complete all the homework. I just want to make sure that clear, make sure that's clear if, that's, if that wasn't clear for anyone. Yeah. Well, if there aren't any more, are there any more burning questions on the homework or anything? Any stuff we covered? If not, we'll go through a, a bit of review using um, using these examples. Then we'll get to the new material, inshallah. Okay. So first, first these Arabic words. Um, this. Uh, and give it anyone give it a try. The first word at the top. Yep. Good. Good. Tahtaj. Everyone. Tahtaj. Tahtaj. Remember it's a this one is a ha ha. Right? Not just a, a simple ha ha. But a full throaty like we're puffing in the mirror. Ha. Um, actually, once again, before I forget, let's go through the alphabet too. Alif. 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 Ba. 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 Ta. 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 Jim. Jim. Ha. Ha. Kha. Kha. Dal. Dal. Val, Val, Ra, Ra, Zay, Zay. Okay. Next one, and then I'll talk about the first two. Anyone want to try the try working out the next one? Any takers? Okay. No. All right, um, I'll move these to the side here, just a minute. Okay. So what's the what's the first symbol that we have? What's the first letter that we have? Good. But what's the second letter? Ha. Good. Fourth, third letter? Wow. And then last letter? The and then between the ba and the ha is a dhamma. There we have it. Buhuv 
Everyone, buhuth, buhuth. Okay, now, I'm not trying to trick you, but there's something funny that's going on here. Um, in both of these, the ta and the ba isn't just starting on the line. One way we could write it would be to write it like, oh, this looks like a bad pen. Like that, see? So we have our line, and it's nice and neat. Ta on the line goes up to ha on the line. But one thing about handwriting is that when um, um, a few letters in in the uh, in the alphabet, um, for a few of them, other letters can actually get stacked on top of them. So this is what we're seeing here. We're seeing that we have a ha. And this form, jim ha kha, these letters for now, these are the only ones that, um, um, there are only few letters that, that work like this. But, but this general form of jim ha kha, these are the only letters so far that we know that, w that um, we can stack other letters on top of. And basically, any letter that connects to, like, is coming before the jim ha and kha and connects to it can be stacked on top of it. And you'll often see this in handwriting. I just want to expose you to this as well. So, does everyone see that? That the top of the ha pretty much becomes the, the line for, for what's coming before. You see that? So there's the ta, and then there's the ha. تحتاج تحتاج um, in handwriting yes yes a lot more common a lot more common yeah yeah right and so and so also I mean we could write it like بحوث. let's see if we're putting everything on the line We'd write it like that, um, but we can stack the bat on top just like we did with the tat there, like that. Or what you might see too is that it's just a convention that instead of that tooth going down, you might see that it's almost like it's a hook. So here we have, for example, tah. So even though we normally write a ta on the line and the, the, the tooth of it goes down to the line, here we have a tooth going up. The important thing is just you see that there is some kind of, there's some kind of tooth here. Even though it's, it's been flipped upside down in the handwriting, you can just see that there's, this, there's that tooth there. And we see that there's a dot under that tooth, which means it's a that. Hence, buhud. Everyone again, buhud. Buhud. Good. So, any questions on this, on the stacking? Yes, please. Yeah. I don't think. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure you won't see it in Quranic script, um, but in, in other kinds of, of printed scripts sometimes. Actually, uh, yeah, uh, there might be some instances in, in the Quranic script where, where, you'd, where you'd see this. Yeah, yeah, I'm not exactly sure though. Typically, it, everything tends to be written on, along the line, yeah. Just like how in Quranic script um, you'll see uh, instead, of they, you won't typically see the dots connected like that. They'll have two dots for the tat instead of the line, but 
but we need to be comfortable with this because this is how you'll see it almost always in handwriting. Same with stacking, when someone's writing. So when someone's writing a verse of the Quran and they have experience with Arabic or, or they, they're native Arabic speaker them, themselves or spend time in the Arabic world, they'll typically write it stacking and won't think twice about it. They'll assume that you, um, you can decipher what they've written on the board with the stacking. That's why I'm giving it to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on to, to this one. Anyone want to give this a try? Yep. Good, good. One more time. Good. Khabbaz. Everyone. Khabbaz. Khabbaz. Okay, so we have Khabbaz, but what's on what's on the bat? Ashadda. Hence the bat is doubled. So instead of just if we didn't have the shadda there, it would just be everyone say this for me. Khabaz. Khabaz. But when we do add the shadda, that doubles that letter. So it becomes Khabaz. Khabbaz. Khabbaz. Right. Um, also, um, if we think about the vowels here, we have a an alif coming after the ba, but then we have a fatha coming after the kha. And since kha is kha, even in the name of the letter, we don't call it kha. It's kha, which means that any time alif or fatha comes after the, the kha, it's not going to sound a, it's going to sound a. Right? Kha, kha, not kha, not khabbaz, 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 khalid. Right? Okay. Does the change the meaning of the word as opposed to it not having the uh, yes, Shadda can definitely change the meaning of the word. So, for example, um, um, yeah, a, a very common, very common example is um, if you if you have a basic verb, um, if you have a basic verb in its basic form, and then you just add a Shadda to the to the middle letter, you make um, you you make that verb more transitive. I'll give you an example. Alima, uh, Alima uh, means to know. Alima, Allama, Allama. So now I've doubled the l. Allama means to teach. So to make someone else know. Darasa. Has anyone heard the word dars? Like, oh, it's going to be dars. Dars. How many people have heard this word before? Dars. Yeah, it's like halakha. I mean, literally means lesson. Sometimes you hear this in, in Muslim communities, there'll be a dars after Fajr. Um, um, darasa means to study. Darasa means to study. But darasa, darasa means to teach. Right. So if you add, if you add a, a shadda to, uh, to one letter, that can mean uh, it can completely change the meaning. Definitely. That's why it's important. Okay, and then finally, the, this last example. Um, what, first of all, what's this first symbol here? It's a Hamza, right. It's a Hamza on the, on the seat of an Alif. It's a seat of an Alif, and then that Hamza after it, after that Hamza is coming a Kasra, right. So... We said before, in Arabic, um, and indeed in the minds um, of the Arabs, how, Arab conceives, how Arabs conceive language, um, you can't start any word, no word can start with a vowel. Always has to start with a consonant. And if, you, if it sounds like it's starting with a vowel, it's actually starting with a hamza, an a, 
down. Because you have your vocal cords closed first, and then you're making the sound come. So, um, so if we to if we were to transliterate this, we could put the um, the Hamza sound as um, as an apostrophe almost, and then go eh, tad. Um, but often you won't. Um, the the Hamza symbol isn't really necessary because we know that if we're seeing a vowel at the beginning of a word, we know there's, it's going to be starting with a Hamza because in Arabic we can't start a word with a vowel. Right. And then when we're thinking about the seat, the Hamza goes below the Alif when it's a Kasra. I, when we have the I sound, I. The Hamza sits below the Aleph, but it sits on the Aleph if we have a Fatha or Dhamma. It sits on top of the Aleph. So, for example, um, here we have Ab, Father Ab. Right? And then made up word, ud. Ud. Right? Okay. Any questions about that? Yes. Yeah, well, um, at the, um, the Hamza usually needs a seat. And when it's at the beginning of the word, the Hamza always has the seat of an alif. When it's at the beginning of the word, always has the seat of an alif. Um, but it's when, it, when it's in the middle of the word or at the end, it can be sitting on the line, but it can also have uh, a different seat, uh, different vowel service seats. And, and those, those different seats, we'll be getting to them in, in a few weeks, inshallah. Yeah, good question. Right. So if we write the name of the letter ba out, if we write that out ba. It is like this, with the hamza sitting on the line. Ba. Everyone say for me. Ba. 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 Similar to. Ra. 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 Remember, it's not just ra, but ra. 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 Now I'm kind of overemphasizing the, the Hamza there, but it's, it's there in the sense of that that R sound gets stopped. Ra. Right. Right. Okay. So four letters to go over this week, inshallah. Oh, um, also, if uh, now everyone could uh, pass their homework in, in that direction so that Juliana could take a look at it. So, four letters to go over today, inshallah. Um, two forms, basically. So, so for each of these, uh, there'll be uh, two sets of letters, and then they're going to differ in, in, terms of, in terms of dots. The first, first letter is pretty easy in sound. It's called the scene. Everyone say for me, scene. Scene. So this is just like a regular English S. Everyone say S. S. Yeah. So we have this. We have this sound in English too. The form of it now is. Um, it's a beautiful letter, actually. It has several different teeth. It has a few teeth and a tail when it's at the uh, when it stands alone. So here we see 
We start with a tooth. This is the scene right here. We start with a tooth. We go up for another tooth, then up for another tooth, and then a tail that dips below the line. And that's the scene when it stands alone. So basically it has three teeth up there and a tail. Three teeth and a tail. When it's at the beginning of a word, uh, beginning or middle, we lose the tail, basically. We lose the tail, but in place of the tail, there's going to be um, a length of line. So we have the, we start with these three teeth, and then go on a bit along the line, and then we go up to whatever next letter we have. So three T, and then along the line for a bit, and then the next letter. When it's in the middle, it's pretty straightforward. We're coming in from a previous letter. We go up for those three teeth, and then along the line for a bit, and then next on to the next letter. And make sure that there's this, there's this length along the line. That length should be about twice the length, at least, uh, of, of what it takes to, to make the three teeth. So a reasonable length along, along the page too, along the line. And then if it's at the end of the word, then we have that tail. So we're coming in from a previous letter. Make those three teeth, and then tail. And this is the scene. I'll be coming around now. Take a look at everyone. Okay. It's looking good. Now, moving on to the... Actually, yeah, let's do an example or two. Um, so the word... Um, a common colloquial word that you'll hear someone wants you to stop, or like, that's enough, something is, is bas, bas, or, <laughs> subhanAllah, um, we, we ask, um, we ask Allah to, uh, to relieve all the people of, uh, of Syria and all of the, the Muslims and everyone, everywhere, relieve them from oppression, everyone in the world, um, Ya Allah, farraj anhum, 
Muslimin Ya Allah, release Muslims in every area from from the their predicaments, the oppression that they're suffering under. Um, but I, one thing that um, was a slogan of the the government in Syria, it's probably still heard there, at least when I was there, I was there when the uprising was starting, um, was, um, what is it? Sorry, a shot, uh, uh, something like ah, uh, I don't remember exactly the rhythm now, but something like Surya Bashar or Bas, like Surya, Assyria, Bashar, who's the the president Bashar Assad, and that's all. Surya Bashar or Bas, that's all. Anyway, Bas is like that's enough, anything like that. So how we write that? Ba with the scene. So now, so now see we have a tooth for the ba. And then we have these three tooth for the scene and a tail. Bess. 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 Everyone say Bess. Bess. And then if it's at the beginning of the word. Sad, everyone. Sad, sad. All right, so we have seen. It could be a little longer, to be honest, actually. There we go. Sad, so we have seen. Alif, dal. Sad, sad. Now, the next down is the. Sheen, sheen. Once again, when I write this out, I put two lines under it, so it's not like, um, uh, it means it's not S and an H, but SH together. Sheen, sh, sh. Everyone say again, sheen. Sheen. sheen, sheen. So we have this sound in English too, although with English we have to use two letters together to represent this sound. Um, it's it's present, common sound in English. Um, the sheen now is just like the scene, except um, over the over the middle of the T, we have three dots, and that's the sheen. And then once again, these three dots, just like the that. They can be connected to form a little hat there. And that's the sheen. Sheen, sheen. So just like in English, we have, we have an S to represent this sound, this sound. When we want to represent the sh sound, we add a we add an H to the S. Just like here, we have these three two three teeth is the basic form of the of the scene. And then we add the hat or the three dots to make it a sheen. One important note too that we said that the full form of the letter, the full form of the sheen, is with these three dots here. And so in the most formal, unstylized way, you'd see these three dots. And you'll see the three dots in the Qur'an. Um, but almost always in handwriting, you'll see the little hat. Um, there's another interesting thing that goes on with seen and sheen. Basically, that just like how it's a little tedious to put all the dots on together rather than connect them, uh, it's a little tedious to do all those teeth. Go up and then up and up and up. 
So what actually you'll see happens uh, a lot of time in handwriting is that the scene and the sheen basically just become a line. So, um, how most people write it in handwriting is uh, for, for these when they're starting out or when it's alone, a little dip you almost, you come up from the line. Just like how we saw when we stacked the bat and the tat on top of the hat, we saw that it got flipped upside down so the tooth was pointing down. Here we have a little bit of a tooth pointing down and then we got up to the line. And look at that. It's a line with a tail rather than the three dots. This is a common way to see seen or sheen written. So here we have a scene, here we have a sheen. Similarly, when it's beginning, just a line along the... And, and this is the best one, when it's in the, when it's in the middle of the word, there we go, that's our scene. And our sheen? And then when it comes at the end, it's just a line and we make sure to give it its tail there too. Yes. So in uh, the statistics of that line, um, it's it's to to start just like how how this begins with a with a tooth. It's just to to start the letter. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's a convention. Yeah, that you start you start going up to the line. Yeah, just a bit. And so. Gathering, gathering. Um, this is a word that's that's found in several places in the Quran. Is who wants to say this for me? Anyone? Okay. Right. I heard. I heard Hasr first. Which would be true, except we have, right? So, here we go. Everyone say it for me. Hashur. 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 Right. Um, and then, to make someone feel is... Well, or some form. I mean, there, there could be a, a more common word for this, but, but this basically means to make someone feel. Here we have Hassasa. Everyone with me. Hassasa. Hassasa. So, here we have the hat is right here, then we have this scene right here, and then we have a scene and then another scene. So rather than just have a really, really long line, there's, there's this tooth up here to distinguish that, okay, we're starting another scene too. That's a hat, plus a scene, plus a scene, and that the middle letter has a shadda over it and in between each one, actually after each letter is fatha. Have one, one more time. Hassasa. Hassasa. Good. Any questions about this stuff? Yes. Yeah, it's more, it's more common in handwriting to see it as, as the line. So we, just, we all need to be just familiar with this at least. 
Even if you choose to write all the dots out yourself, that makes you feel comfortable, fine. But at least be able to recognize. Like if I if I'm going to write a word quickly up, I, I'll probably I'm not going to do do those teeth because I've been writing for years and that's what I'm used to. I'm used to, I'm used to writing without the teeth, just a line. Any other questions? Okay. So moving on. Now we have we have two more letters to do. And these two letters are actually interesting letters. They're letters the the sounds aren't really present in English, but they almost are. <laughs> so first we have the sod. Everyone say for me. Sod. 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 So now today we're learning lowercase s and we're learning uh, uppercase, a capital S. Right? These are two different sounds. So if I say we had actually here. Down here, I give the example of seen alif dal. Everyone say for me, sad, sad, sad. sad. And this one is sad, sad. Everyone notice the difference there? There's there's a difference in the, the difference is in the letter itself. But the but the basic way to tell the difference is that you tell that the vowels around it kind of uh, kind of sound different. So the sod is an emphatic letter because, which means, as we've spoken about before, just as we spoke with about the kha and the ra, we say kha and we say ra, not kha and ra, because these are emphatic. When, when alif or fatha, and those are the vowels, the a vowel is the vowel that we notice the most change in. When we have alif or fatha, normally it sounds like what? Ah. Normally it sounds like a, ah, but after the emphatic vowels, it, uh, emphatic consonants, emphatic letters, it changes to, what does it sound like now? Ah, as in father. No longer a ah, as in bat, but ah as in father. Like this one. Sod. Sod. So if we want to think technically about how to pronounce it too, the reason that the, the alif is, is being changed is because there's a change in the way that the, the tongue is really in the way this is being said. It's not just that s, uh, seen and thawed uh, are really the same letter and they, um, they just, uh, a lot of the times when we pronounce it as native English speakers, we just say seen and thawed. We're not really changing the way we actually say this. But if you hear, if I don't have a vowel over it, I'll say this one. This one sounds like This one sounds like What's happening inside my mouth is that if you think about this being the um, the bottom part of the mouth. So here are the teeth right here. Here are the teeth. And this is this is the tongue right here. For the scene, everyone go s s and if you feel inside your mouth, actually, just put just at least one finger in that. S, S, S. What's happening is that you are, you're putting your tongue on your bottom teeth like that, or close to them. That's what's happening. This is the scene. This is what's going on with the scene right here. S, S, S. With the sod, and indeed with all of the emphatic letters, the reason that this changes the way that the vowel around it sounds is because the tongue in the middle is, is expanded, it's, it's puffed up. So we have seen and we have sawed, sawed. When you learn to actually pronounce these letters correctly, you actually feel that the tongue is filling more of the mouth up. 
Sin, sod. Sin, sod. Everyone try that for me. Sin, sin, sod. Sod. So uh, normally this this can take uh, some uh, a lot of people it, it takes even years to to develop this to actually say these correctly and for a lot of us native speakers we might not be able to completely pronounce it correctly but but we can think right now think of the tongue filling up the mouth so like saying an s sound but the tongue is filling up the mouth so everyone everyone just say a basic s sound Okay, now try to think of the tongue filling up the mouth and it will sound like sa, everyone sa, 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 okay. So the form of this is, uh, it looks pretty similar to the, to, the scene, uh, to the scene actually, at least in the alone part. Um, we start on the line, then we go backwards above the line, and down now along the line, and we have a little tooth right after that loop that we make, and then a tail. So its basic form is that there's a loop there formed going backwards and then a tail. Loop backwards, up above the line of it, and then tail that ends above the line. And remember that this isn't look closely at how I wrote it. It isn't completely like a it isn't like a circle. It's, it's thinner on the left side and rounder on the right side. Or it's more, more of a, a point on the right side and rounder on the... Uh, uh, more of a point on the left side, rounder on the right side. Now when it's at the beginning of a word, We lose the tail, just like with the scene in the sheen. Have that beginning part, so we have the loop and the tooth, and then and then we go on to the next to the next word. We don't really have to have a, a long line. That was just for the for the scene. So once again, loop, tooth going up, and then on to the next uh, to the next letter. Sorry, next letter. Loop. Next letter. Make sure that after the loop you have this little tooth right here. Some people you might see starting starting a little below the line almost like that. I don't like that. I think that's ugly. Um, yeah, it's a pretty small tail. Yeah, I mean, if you make it, let's see, make it a little taller. Yeah, this looks a little ugly to me, but fine. Whatever you like. When it's in the middle of a word. We're coming in from a previous letter. We go a ways along the line and then make that loop back um, and then the tail. So one more time, we're coming in from a previous letter, make a, uh, we go along the line a ways, make a loop back, then retrace that line along the line of the page and then the tail and go on. So we end up once again in the middle of a word with a loop and a little tooth.
So did I say tail before? I might have said tail. I meant tooth. Loop and tooth. So it's almost like a little tail wagging up there. It almost looks like a fish, don't you think? Yeah. A fish head? Yeah. Yeah. And finally, if it's at the end of a word, um, instead of just, uh, instead of right after we, when we make that tooth and going on to the next letter, we'll have the tail again along the line. And tail. Okay, so for an example, we can say, we can just write the, uh, the letter of uh, the, write the name of this letter, which is, that's what it looks like, right there. Everyone say, sod, sod, so when it begins the word here, we see there are two essential parts to this letter. There's that loop, rounder on the right, narrower on the left. We have a loop and a tooth here. Even though it's still kind of small, there's still a little tooth that goes up after the loop. And then we go on to the other. Sod. Sod. Um, and then, let's see. A lot of these words I just kind of make up, by the way, just as an example. Anyway, he's, everyone say for me, he's, he's, yeah, it's, it can be tricky putting a, a yeah and then a sod, he's, he's, but yeah, you get the idea. So, finally, and this is the, the last material we'll, we'll get to. We don't have to go over any extra symbols or anything today. Alhamdulillah. Is the, um, this one. Is the bod. Everyone say for me, bod. 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 So, we've already learnt, we've learnt dal, which is lowercase d. This one is bod, which is uppercase d. Um, now, we said that, <clears throat> just like how we have lowercase s and uppercase s, um, this is kind of similar in that we have the d, and then we have a more emphatic b. But the sound that actually is, is making, I mean, it's helpful to begin with to think of it um, just like with the scene with the, with the da. Everyone say da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. The, um, let's see. Here we go. Here's the, uh, the top of the, of the mouth here. If I could straighten, there we go. Top of the mouth, so here are the teeth, right here are the teeth, and then tongue is in here. What's happening for da is right there, da, da, da. It's, tupping the, uh, it's touching the, the back of the front teeth on the top, back of the front top teeth. But then for the baud, one way of thinking about it is to say the da 
but then the tongue once again fills, it goes higher up in the mouth, it fills the mouth more. So, da, da, da ma, ma. Remember, it's not a v sound, it's not a v sound, it's, a, it's, more, like, it's more like a d sound. If we're going to approximate with any letter in, um, in English, it's more like a, a, a d sound. Um, but when the when many uh, Arab linguists talk about this this letter, they talk about it being a combination, a cross between the d, the dal, and the l, the lam, l. Everyone say l, l, la, la, al, al, and then ad, 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 al, ad, al. So some Arab linguists would, would say that when you combine these two, that's the sound what this makes. Everyone try that for me. A lot of theoretical stuff. I mean that's where once again this is one of the this is one of the trickiest uh, sounds in the Arabic language and I, I don't claim to completely pronounce it correctly. I mean, I, I've been told by native Arabic speakers that I pronounce it quite well. Uh, but, um, but still, even, even Arabic speakers today, if they were to talk to the, the Arabic speakers in, in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, they'd probably be told they don't pronounce it quite correctly too, because there's been a lot of influence of uh, from native languages and, and um, um, Arabic is also known as the language of Baad, Logat al-Baad because many, uh, many of the Arabs said that this, this symbol, this, this letter, this sound was unique to Arabic and that you could tell uh, a non-native Arabic speaker because they, they can't pronounce this sound. Um, so traditionally actually um, it um, this, the linguists also speak about this sound being pronounced from one side of the mouth, usually from the left, left side. So it's like almost you, and now this is, I mean, you don't have to remember all of this, I'm just kind of giving you this because I find it interesting, Shala, you find it interesting too, but that um, um, some people will put their, or traditionally, originally there would be people who would put their tongue to the left, like and go, rod, rod, and that's an approximation. Once again, it's, it's, it was a very tricky sound to, to say. I've, heard, I've been with Tejweed teachers who are like very insistent, they're like, go like, uh, and then say it, rod, rod. Anyway, anyway, the linguists talk about it being, spoke, being said from the left side, which is the, the best way to pronounce it, or with the tongue from the right side, or with the tongue touching both sides of the mouth. But anyway, basically, for now, now it's, let's bring us down a bit. <laughs> bring us down from that theoretical world and the world of um, correct pronunciation and everything, all those things, linguistics. Um, <clears throat> it's like a D, only when alif is, is around it, alif or fatha, it becomes a, right? And this is the sound that we have at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha. Walad Malin. Everyone. Walad Malin. Right, right. If we were to say Walad Dalin, that means it, it means almost the opposite. Al Malin, Malin are the ones who have who have strayed. Actually, they're the ones who have who have gone astray themselves. Adalin, adal is is someone uh, is someone who guides, or it's a guiding thing. So really, complete opposite meaning: guiding versus going astray. Guiding is dalin, going astray, balin, and then um, let's see. Va Some people say valin. You might hear that. Has anyone ever heard that? Well, that valin, that actually means. Um, uh, it means people. It means remaining. It means uh, remaining or staying. So that's a, a, a different meaning as well. Valin. Um, some people even say it. I don't know. I don't know. There, 
there are many different ways, many different mistakes that people people make when making this word. But once again, well, that lean. Good, good. So, trickiest thing is is to to pronounce that correctly. The form of it is just like the sod, but with one dot on that loop. So the dot has a dot, right? Just one dot. So that's it for uh, new material today. Does anyone have any questions on any of these things today? Okay. Yes. Okay. Ah, I was hoping to get away with that. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, let's see. So this one, everyone say for me, Bajij, Bajij, right now you see I just did this kind of without, without thinking, I wrote it out and you'll notice that the way that, um, since I've been writing for several years, the way that I did it was stacking the dot on top of the gene. I could, if I were writing to, or like teaching elementary school children, then I might be writing it like that, with everything on the line, just all perfectly like that. But since the dog can connect to the gene, then things that can connect to gene ha can get stacked on on top of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, no, typically you, you anticipate, yeah, yeah, you would start everything, everything higher rather than putting, uh, putting, rather than starting something on the line, then putting the rest below the line, yeah, yeah. Um, but the crazy thing happens when, when you have lots of different things stacked on top of each other. I mean, that's as, uh, like, say for example, um, uh, if we just made up the word, long word, Bahajaja, Bahajaja. We could have ba stacked on top of a ha stuck bahajja ja. There we go. Bahajaja. Yeah. And here's our line, see? So we started the ba like way above the line. Because we stack that on top of a hat and that on top of a jeem and then that on top of another jeem, which is possible. But for now, let's not look at that. Let's pronounce bajij. Bajij. Right? And one more example with it being in the, in the end. Um, Here we go. 
This one. Can anyone say this for me? Yeah. Good. Close. Yeah. Abiyam. 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 Means white. Abiyam. Right. Yes. Was the 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 yeah with the kas? Well, first of all, what's what's on top of the yeah? Is it a kasra? It's on top of the yeah, right? Rather than below the yeah. So what what is this? What is this right here? Just like this one and that one. Right. And what do we call that? Good. Fatha. So you asking about the fatha? Yeah. Right, because it's being, I mean, the, the best way to pronounce it would be like abyel, abyel, but the, the dad is kind of affecting, is affecting it, because we're anticipating saying the dad. So you hear it, you hear it almost as, as like abyel, almost as like ya, ya, but that's because we're going into, into the dad, and so it's being affected that way. Abyel, abyel. Yes. Jim Ha and what, whatever you're comfortable with. The important thing for me is just the, that you recognize that when you see things being stacked, you can decipher it. When you see seen and sheen written as a line, you can decipher it. You know what's going on there. Um, it might be best right now since, uh, to to go ahead and write the teeth out for the seen and sheen. Um, typically, beginning students are more comfortable with that. Um, just like like not thinking about doing the stacking, just putting everything on the line for now. That's that's fine. But then if you if you do want to go ahead and just do stacking and do scene and sheen as it's a line right away, that's completely acceptable too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we'll have a bit of um, practice review reinforcement, inshallah, with. Rihanna. So if we could, um, yeah, I guess I'll do that. Do the conclusion. Um, yeah, Subhanallah, Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Sallallahu wa atubu alaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين In the name of God, the all merciful, most compassionate All praise is due to Allah, God, the Lord of the worlds and peace and prayers upon his prophet and slave Muhammad, his companions and his family Once again, starting with the with the intention of Imam al-Haddad and the syllabus. Ya Fattahu Ya Alimu Iftah Lana Fathan Qariba Bismillahi Ar-Rahmani Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Adameen وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمْ نَوَيْتُ التَّعَلُّمَ وَالتَّعْلِيمَ وَالتَّذَكُّرَ وَالتَّذْكِيرَ وَالنَّفْعَ والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله والسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى 
والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى O oh, Opener, O oh, All-Knowing One, grant us an opening soon. In the name of Allah, the All-Merciful, the Compassionate. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the Worlds, and blessings and peace upon our Master Muhammad, his family and his companions. I intend to study and teach, to remember and remind, to profit and bring profit, to benefit and bring benefit, to encourage holding fast to the Book of Allah and the way of His Messenger, to call to guidance, to direct towards good, and to aim for the countenance of Allah and His pleasure, His nearness and His reward. Exalted be He. Alhamdulillah. So up till now, we've gone through... Uh, let's, let's go through the alphabet together once or twice, okay? Alif. Ba. Ba. Ta. Ta. Tha. Jim. Ha. Kha. Dal. Dal. Ra. Zay. Seen. Sheen. Sod. Bod. Good. Oh, now all of us together. Alif. Ba. Ta. Tha. Jim. Ha. Kha. Dal, Val, Ra, Zay, Seen, Sheen, Sad, Bad. Okay, good. So that's how many letters? How many letters? Anyone counting? I'll give you a minute. Fine. Close. Ten. Fifteen. Good. Fifteen. How many letters are in the alphabet? Uh, Arabic alphabet total? Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Good. So, fifteen of twenty-eight, which means we're more than halfway done. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Everyone say Alhamdulillah. See? So, so we've, we've gone through, it's been, I mean, we've going, been going relatively fast. Um, but, inshallah, we'll get done in the next few weeks with the, the main things in the alphabet. And then, and then use the rest of the time. Let's see, in, according to the, uh, to the syllabus, uh, four sessions we have for going through and really applying that. So then looking at some Quran, looking at some, um, looking at some Arabic resources that we can actually think about getting into some things and, um, and, and doing well in this language, inshallah. So, put a few words up on the board here wanted to go over a few points. So first of all, um, the first one up here on the, on the right, uh, we talked about, um, uh, I talked about this word with, with most of you here. Um, just we'll go over it quickly again. So the first letter is what? Baad, right? Saad, Saad, if, Seen, Sheen, Saad, Baad, right? In the, in the order of the alphabet, the order of the alphabet is, um, uh, it's a well-designed thing because it goes from, um, it goes from letters that don't have dots to letters that do have dots in the order. And it goes from letters with fewer dots to letters with more dots. Or, actually a better way to put it, letters with dots under the line, then no dots, then above the line. So, for example, we have ba, Ta, ta, right, we have with, with ba, there's a dot under the line, ta, two dots over the line, ta, three dots over the line. Similarly, jim, under the line, ha, no dots, kwa, one dot over the line, right? So, so when we say seen, sheen, sod, bod, we know that sod doesn't have a dot, and then after it comes bod, which does have a dot. Bod has a dot. Right? So this one is what? Good. Baad. Dod. So three letters in this word. We have Baad, then, and Alif, then, then Ra. And what's on the Ra? Ashadda. 
Right, which means the ra is doubled. Right, so it's not just, if it were this, it would be just bar. Right? Bar. Everyone say for me. Dar. Bar. But, there's a shadda on it. So it's dar. Right? Everyone after me. Dar. Dar. Right. So right here is a bit tricky since it is doubled, but we, we want to, I mean, correct, correct the most proper form of Quranic pronunciation. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't roll the R. We don't go R. Right. It's just Dar. Right. Anyway. And then the second one, everyone after me. Basir. Basir. Right. Any questions on that? Specifically? Okay. Now this one, four letters here, what are they? Right. This is a scene. Notice how I'm doing it in the way that's typically written, handwritten, not with the, all the teeth there. The scene, then what? Alif, and then? Ba, and what's on the ba? Kasra, and then? Saad, right. So, when we think about this alif, we know that if we were to write it out, we would, or if we were to write it out in English transcription, it would be two A's to show that it's a long vowel, right? Doubly long, double the length of a, of a short vowel, a fatha, which is just a. But we know that alif has two different sounds. It can sound, normally it sounds like what? If, if alif is just in its normal position. Ah, ah. But after emphatic consonants, it sounds how? Sounds like ah, oh, ah. Oh. So what are the emphatic consonants that we've gone over so far? You want to tell me? Okay, everyone, raise your hand when you hear an emphatic consonant. I'm going to go through the alphabet. So raise your hand when you hear an emphatic consonant. Okay? Alif, ba, ta, fa, jim, ha, kha. Good. Kha, right? Because it's not kha, kha. Uh, dal, val, ra. Good. Zay, seen. Sheen, Saad, good, Baad, okay, right, so so far we've, we're, of the emphatic consonants we've had Kha, Ra, Saad, and Baad. This Alif, does it come after an emphatic consonant or no? No, it doesn't. Seen is not emphatic. So often, often what happens is, is that um, I mean, some native speakers will, will also, um, uh, this, this also happens when they're, when they're pronouncing words, that if there's one emphatic consonant, what's the emphatic consonant in this word? The sod, right, we have a sod here. Oftentimes when, when, when we're pronouncing words and we're pronouncing them quickly, if there's one emphatic consonant in the word, um, we, we let it affect everything else, but with the best pronunciation, with the most proper uh, Quranic pronunciation, only when a vowel comes after an emphatic consonant does that mean that it gets changed in any way. So, the best way to pronounce this one, the fatha is on the ba, which is non-emphatic, so it's basir, basir. Everyone say for me, basir. Basir. Though this is kind of tricky. I mean, the sod does often kind of affect it that way. When we say it quickly, we often say basir, basir. So that fatha here is almost like an ah, ah, because it's being affected by the sod. But the best way to pronounce it, basir, basir, basir. But it's, it's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky. Anyway, but this one clearly is, this one's a lot, a lot more clear. Because it comes after the scene. So it's not sabis, but 
Right, sabis, sabis. So if we were to write this out in English transliteration, we'd see that we have what in English are basically two different S's, one at the beginning, one at the end, right? So the first one is s, second one s. It's kind of tricky to hear for now, but we still need to pay attention to that. But this one is a stronger sound than the than the one at the beginning. So sa, everyone listen, sa bis, sa bis, sa bis. If we were to put a fatha on here, it would be sa bisla, sa bisla, sa bisla. Everyone say for me, sa bisla, sa bisla. Okay, good. Any questions on that? Okay, now one final point. Um, I'll go over this uh, this word here. Dubbi, dubbi, dubbi. Made up word, but alhamdulillah. Um, okay, first we have a dal. And then, and then what? A bomma, right? And then what? Ba. Right. It's not going to be two ba's together, but the ba is doubled, so it's going to be... We have a shadda on the ba. Right? And then what's the final thing that we have? Kasra. Right. Now where are we going to put the kasra? Anyone remember this? Underneath the shadda. Right. So it actually goes on top of the letter, above the letter itself but under the shadda. Normally the kasra would be completely under the, the letter, but when we have a shadda, it goes under the shadda. Right? Everyone say for me, dubbi. Dubbi. Right. I mean, it's not really a made up letter. Dub is, uh, is uh, ba in Arabic. So, dubbi, I mean, yeah. I won't go into details of the last last consonant there, but or the last last short vowel there. But anyway, everyone see that important note to make just about shadda. When we have a kasra with shadda, kasra goes under the shadda, but it's above the letter itself. Okay, alhamdulillah, and there's some good stuff, some exciting sounds, exciting letters this week. Even though it's exciting every week, actually, I shouldn't be saying that. Okay, so, two sets of letters today. Two sets of letters and um, one extra kind of symbol to go over. So first, last week we went over the, the, the sod and the baad, right? Which is the, the sod is like pretty much the emphatic equivalent of the scene, right? Sod versus scene. Now what we have is two letters that are the emphatic equivalents of two letters we've already seen. First we have the pa. Everyone say for me, pa. Pa. So ta is pretty much to ha what sod is to seen, right? It's a capital T. That's the that's in in my system of writing. Though you might see a T with a dot under it or something like that, right? Emphatic T. So it's like a ta, like a t t, like we have in English, like a T. But the mouth, or the the tongue, kind of fills up as much space as it can inside the mouth. Once again, ta, ta, ta. Um, this, is the, this is the top of the mouth, the teeth are right here. The, here's the tongue. So normally when we say ta, this is the tongue, ta, ta. But for the ta, tongue is filling up more of the area inside the mouth. So everyone say, everyone say ta, 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 ta. Now, ta, ta, ta. Now the way I'm seeing it, I'm kind of feeling the sides of my tongue and all in my tongue, it's 
filling up more of the space up there. Pa, pa, pa. Most important thing is that when Alif comes after this, it's ah, not a, uh, right? So that's the sound. The way to write it is, it almost looks like a sad or a dad, only um, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have the tail, um, and it has something extra as well. There we go. Alone, beginning of word, middle of word, Oops. end of word. Okay. The part is just like we started with the with the sod or the dot, we make that similar kind of loop back that's narrower on the left and around a more curved on the right. So we make that, but we stop there. We make the curve and go a little bit past the curve on the line. You see there's this section right here. It's a little bit past the curve. And then right after that curve, we have a vertical, uh, uh, right, a vertical line going down. I'll do it one more time. Curve out, a little bit past where we started. Then line down. Yeah. Looks like a what? Like a B almost. Yeah. The important things to, to realize. A B we would write like this. First of all, there needs to be this area extending more out here. And the circle of it needs to be narrower on the left and uh, and, and and more curved on the right. right. Yeah, do you have a question, Stephanie? Yeah, yeah. Good question, good question. When we put the vertical line on, we still we put the the vertical line right after the loop so that we still see this part that's I'm pointing to with this arrow. We still see this part that extends a bit beyond the loop. Good question. Okay, so when it's, when it's at the beginning of a word, this letter does connect all of the letters today. They do connect to what comes after them. So, we make that loop, and then we go on to the next letter. And then, when we're done writing that whole word, then we come in and fill in, we put that line down. So we go on to the next letter, and then come back to put that line down. When it's in the middle of a word, we're coming in from a previous letter, and just like the sod and the dot, we kind of backtrack, we go back with that loop, and then down along, and keep going, and then when we're done with the whole word, we put that line in. Now that's kind of ugly right there, I'll do it again. Okay, so we're coming in from a previous letter, and go back with the loop, there we go, that's better, then along the line again and keep going to the next letter, and then eventually put that line down.
And then finally, when it's at the end, pretty simple. All of the forms look similar. We're coming in from a previous letter. Make that line back. Trace back along through that line. Leave a bit there, just like we did when it's alone. Leave a bit past the loop. And then vertical line down right after the loop. Coming in from previous letter, loop back, and then keep going. Leave a little bit past the loop, and then down right after the loop. So I'll come around and take a look. Okay, so an example or two. Pay attention to how I write this, by the way. See, I'm writing out the skeleton of the word. Now I put in the dots, including the dots is that vertical line down. And then I'm going to put in the vowel marks. Okay. So, this means doctor in Arabic. Doctor. Anyone want to try to say this? Good. Everyone. Pabib. 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 Right. Pabib. Right. Good. Okay, since we have, uh, we kind of have a limited time, let's, I'll just give that example and we'll try to get through the, the next letter. So, next, similarly, uh, similar to the part, we have a letter that is like the emphatic version of the val. Hence, it's called the La, I put it in capitals to, to note that it's emphatic, and the line under it to show that that's all one symbol, the DH. So, everyone after me. La. 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 Okay, so say Val. 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 Now try to say uh, the the sound, but think of the tongue filling up more of the mouth inside. La. Right, so as I'm saying that, I'm really feeling the, the tongue inside. The Everyone after me. Right, okay. Now, this is just a part with a dot on the top. A lot above the loop, so we have that loop here. There's a line down, the dot under it, or on it, sorry. Oh, that's ugly. The same thing all the way through. Okay, so now at the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, at the bottom, I put an example, which is, uh, this is a city in the Arab world right here. This is the name of a city in the Arab world. Who can tell me what this is? Good. Everyone after me. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Often in English, I mean, we call it, the pronunciation sometimes varies in English. Sometimes we call it Abu Dhabi. Often we hear Abu Dhabi. But um, even, I mean, even the people who live there, because of the influence of the colloquial Arabic, they might pronounce it a little differently. Um, but the, the, 
the most accurate, the most eloquent pronunciation is Abu Wabi. Abu Wabi, right? Literally means um, father, father of the gazelle. Father of the gazelle. I like that word, gazelle. Wabi, wabi. Anyway, right? Okay. So, any questions about this? You are confused, then. Right, and then a yeah. Right, there's a kasra underneath the bat, and then a yeah. Just like how, how there's a, a dhamma on the bat, and then a wow. That's to show that it's an oo sound, and it's an e sound that comes after it. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that when when I write it out, this is going to be uh, okay. Well, we have a, a dhamma after the bat, and then a, a wow. No, it's not a triple triple u. It's just a a double u, not a double u, but a double u. Uh, it's just what? Right, right, exactly, exactly. Identifying that it's a vowel as well. It's showing that this is all the same sound that comes comes after it, right? If, if I mean, essentially, if we didn't put the dhamma or the kasra there, then it could be abau vobei. In which case the ya and the wa would both be consonants. Au and a yi. Right, with sukuns over them. Good point. All right. Any questions on the va? Everyone, once again, pa, pa, va, va, right. Notice that there's a difference, um, actually, even for native Arabic speakers. Um, uh, often one of the trickiest things in Tajweed is distinguishing between the la and the la. Sometimes native Arabic speakers pronounce these similarly, either both of them like la, or sometimes both of them like la, or both of them like la. Whereas this is la, and this is la, right? Laud, laud. Closer to uh, to a, a, an English D than than anything else, right? Hence, end of the Fatiha. Walad If we say walad walin, it means and not the ones remaining, which is kind of yeah, completely changes the meaning. Right. Okay. Similarly, right, right, and maghbubi, maghbubi, booby. There's a dod there, not maghbubi, maghbubi, adayhim, walad ballin. Did anyone, did anyone take a look at Surah Al Fatiha, by the way? See the dod there? Yeah? Yeah? Good. Return back to, to certain things, especially things that were. Uh, that we should be reciting over and over again. Uh, yeah, things that we should know, because then these will start opening up. You start realizing things. Like I said at the beginning of the course, make sure that there's some kind of Arabic text, preferably a surah of more than 10, uh, 10 verses long that you return to regularly so that you can see, oh, wow, yeah, we went over this letter the other day. Oh, I'm seeing all these different things. I'm noticing all these things, and I can actually start reading the Arabic now. Right. Okay. So moving on. The next two very interesting letters. Very kind of tricky letters, but alhamdulillah, it just takes time if we're not used to the sounds. Just a bit of time. Um, now this, the next letter is um, it's not really similar to much we have in English, and so it's usually um, transliterated as either this kind of symbol, but that's kind of hard to find on the keyboard, so I typically do it like a backwards apostrophe this way. And its name is, it's the consonant and then ain after ain. Basically, what this consonant is, is 
best way I can describe it is a strangling sound. Strangling sound. So if you were to be strangled, I mean literally what's, what's going on is that we talked about how the ha, ha, uh, the, the ha, ha, jim, ha, kha, the ha happens at the middle of the throat, above the vocal cords. This is the same place, this consonant is happening in the same place. Ha and the, the difference between D and T, the sounds T and D in English, we've talked about this before, just like the difference between, between Th and V, Arabic letters Th, th and Val, is that for the Val, there's vibration going on, on, um, on in the vocal cords, right here. Everyone say that again for me. Tha. 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 Put, put, your, put your hand on your throat. Say tha. tha. And tha. tha. F. 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 Right. That's the difference between the tha and the tha. Similarly, the difference between the ha and the a. So say ah. 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 Now, this is kind of, now, try to add the vocal cords in there. Make some vibration in here. It comes out as a strangling sound. Strangling sound. If someone were to put their fingers and, and squeeze right here, you'd sound. The sound is an. It's a tricky sound to get used to, but. But it's the, everyone try that. There's pressure going on here as I'm saying it. First I start with an alif, then I go. I kind of stra strangle the sound right in the middle of the throat here. Right. Okay. Okay, so I'll try that. Go ahead. Uh, okay, okay, keep working. Try that. Uh, good, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah alhamdulillah. All right, Georgette. Uh, okay, yeah, keep working. Okay, yeah, good. Uh, Good, yeah. Uh, really try to strangle the sound there, yeah. Uh, okay, good, good. Finally? Okay, yeah, that's all right. Uh, okay. So the sound, the name of this letter is Ain. Everyone try to say that for me. Ain. 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 Right. So since we don't really have this sound in English, it's often kind of lost um, for, for a lot of us. But it's important. Complete, it can have, uh, can change, change meaning around completely. Right. So, so it's important to, to work on that sound. Always, always think about working on the sound. It's a very common sound in Arabic. Indeed, the word Arabic or, or Arab, Arab is Arabi. Everyone say Arabi. Arabi. Right, so it's a very important sound in, in Arabic. The form of it, first, just like how a lot of the ways it's transliterated out is, is with almost like a little C above the, uh, like a superscript C, um, it starts with almost like a C on the line there. But then it has a tail that goes under the line, kind of a long tail under the line that way. And the C is kind of, it's slanted a bit. See that? Ah. My eyes aren't so pretty, but alhamdulillah.
Now when it's at the beginning of a word, we basically just lose that tail. Lose the tail, so we have that same kind of C looking thing. Now we go on to the next letter. What does this look like, by the way? It looks like a Hamza, yeah. Looks like a Hamza. Actually, the, the form of the Hamza was actually taken from, from the Ayn. Um, originally, when the Quran was, pre, was, um, when the Quran was, was revealed, um, there was no symbol for, for Hamza, really. And, and yet, um, the grammarians came up with it, and one, one grammarian, I believe it was Al-Khalil, rahim, um, he, he said, well, the Hamza is like, it's almost like an Ayn, just without that strangling sound. The Hamza happens at the bottom of the throat, Ayn is at the middle of the throat. So he took, he took this symbol and, and made that a Hamza. Now when it's at the, in the middle of a word, it gets interesting. Everyone look up here. We come in from a previous letter, then we go up, make a point, and then down again, and then keep going. So almost forms like an upside down triangle here. One more time, we're coming in, go up, make a point there, and then go down. Now we can make a, a point on the right side too, or we can make it kind of curved. The important thing is that we have a point on the left side. Point there, and then go on like that. Forming almost an upside down triangle there. When it's in the middle of a word. And then finally, when it's at the end of a word, we have, we have this form only with a tail. So everyone watch, we're coming in from a previous letter. Make that point, then go down and then continue on for a tail there. Yeah, question? Good, good, good question. Is, is Ayn emphatic? No, it's not. Um, a, a, everyone say again. A. A. So the sound, here we go. A. 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 Right, um, though we say, right. Um, Often, when you hear the sound of uh, the, the name of the letter, often people say like Ayn, Ayn, uh, as if it's emphatic, but the most correct way to pronounce the name of the letter is Ayn, Ayn, Ayn. Though a lot of native Arabic speakers say Ayn, Ayn. Right, but it's not emphatic, it's not emphatic. Right. The tongue, for all the emphatic letters, the tongue is filling up the mouth, and that's what's making and in fact, that's what's affecting the quality of the vowels around it. And so for the, for the ayn, the, the tongue is, is just kind of sitting down. And if this is the tongue, so here's the, here's the throat. So this is the base of the tongue right here, going down into the throat. The tongue is actually, it's, it's going, like, going like that. It's moving against the back of the, of the throat. So it's staying down, staying down. Whereas the kha actually happens at the top of the throat. And in order to do that, the tongue kind of needs to go back like that, so it's ending up kind of filling the whole mouth. Kha, hence the kha is emphatic. Now, kha, just like how we had, we, we talked about the difference between ha and ayn, uh, tha and dal, ta and dal, 
one without the vocal cords, one with the vocal cords. Now that's the same, that's the difference now between Kha and our next letter, Rain. Usually transliterated as GH. So this one is emphatic. And a way to describe the sound, the best way uh, that I've come across is a goggling sound. Everyone pretend like you're goggling. Right, actually one of the best ways to, to practice pronouncing this letter is actually to take some water and start goggling with it and then feel, okay, I have to make that sound. Right, the sound is Everyone try that for me. Rain. Rain. Okay. Yeah, and often it's it's hard to do with a sore throat too. Sometimes it can wear your throat out when you're getting used to pronouncing this pronouncing this letter, right? But once again, common uh, common and an important letter. So end of Surah Al-Fatiha. We have two of them. غير المغضوب right? غير المغضوب that's what's going on, it's a goggling sound there, at the top of the throat does everyone say خا خا now you're adding some vibration to it when you say that خا now غا أغ أغ right, right We've already pretty much gone over the way to write this. It's an ayn with a dot on it. There we go. Okay, so two examples, one for the Ayn, one for the Ghayn. Okay, first of all, this is an Arab man, Arab, Arab. It's close for the word, to, for the language, Arabic, but there are a few more things we have to learn before we get to that word. How do we say this? Good. Arabi. Arabi. Notice on the um, notice the ya has a shadda on it. It's actually it's a consonant here. Arabi. Uh, Arabi. We'll do a Aisha in like 15 minutes. Is this okay? Okay, okay. Okay. Now, this is an, uh, an important city in the Arab world. Who can tell me what city this is? Right here. Good. Baghdad. 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 Good. Right. Capital of Al Iraq. No, notice that in, in Arabic too, Iraq begins with an Ain. Al Iraq. Iraq. 
Now I'm not going to write that because we haven't learned all the letters in, in that word, but that's how it is. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. So finally, we have one extra symbol to go over. Not really a letter, kind of a letter, but not really. Its, um, its name is Its name is Ta Morbuta. Say that for me. Ta Morbuta. Ta Morbuta. Literally, it means um, like a um, a connected ta or a, a, a bundled up ta. We've already we've already seen the. Um, um, We've already seen the ta, first letter in the Arabic alphabet. Um, this, this letter is basically, it's the combination between a, um, well, yeah, it's the combination between a ta and a letter that we haven't seen yet, which we'll get to soon, inshallah, which is the ha, ha. The reason for this is because sometimes it's pronounced like a T and other times it's pronounced like a H, H. When there is a vowel, when we're pronouncing a vowel on it, when we pronounce a vowel on this letter, it's pronounced as a T. But when there's no vowel that we're pronouncing, it's pronounced like a ha, ha. So it's a combination of two different letters in, in Arabic, um, and therefore it's not really its own letter. It's a symbol. Hence, I have, I have two lines here. Um, one is the alone line. One is the end of a word line. So this, this symbol only comes at the end of a word, only ever at the end of the word, and it has a special meaning. Almost always it means um, it's a feminine marker. It means that this, this thing that the, the word is describing um, is, is describing a, something, something female. So in Arabic, words have to have genders, not just if we're talking about, about people or, or things with genders, but while they come to them. Oh, we'll start Aisha in about 10 minutes, inshallah. That's okay. Wa alaykum as um, So when... So Arabic is a gendered language. Um, words words are, are either masculine or feminine. Um, so feminine words... Um, if we see the ta ma burta at the end of a word, it means this word is feminine, almost always. There are some exceptions, but almost always this word is feminine, and it's generally a feminine marker. Feminine marker. Okay, so how does it look? Um, it's a combination between the hat and the ta. Basically, it's a hat with two dots. So even though we haven't learnt the hat, this is what the hat looks like alone. It's just basically a circle that we start at the top. Circle like that. So when there's nothing, when there's no, no letter connecting before the Tamabuta, it looks like this. And it has two dots on the top. That's how it looks. Like a circle with two dots on the top. And when it's, a, when it's connected to a letter that comes before it, that's when, see we're coming in from a previous letter, and we have like, we go up and then make a loop above the line with two dots on it. I'll do that one more time. Go up, 
then make a loop and the whole thing is above the line a bit not really on the line but above it with two dots that's if there's a letter that's connecting to it before it yeah but there will always i mean there'll always be a, a letter before this because it happens only at the end of a word that I'm writing uh, any time. I mean, this this category is basically. It's also for. It also works um, for when the letter that comes before it isn't connecting to it, and there's nothing after it. So, for example, if we have Elif Rain, then the Rain is going to be written like that, even though there's a, there's a letter before it. Or say Dal. Uh, say Dal. Ain. We have the ein written in its alone form because the dal isn't connecting to the ein. So, one more final thing. This um, this letter or this symbol, it always has a fatha before it. Every single time we see it, it always has a fatha before it. Always fatha before it. And so, in conclusion, whenever you see this symbol, this hat with two dots on it, it's either if we don't have, if we're not saying a, a vowel on it, after it, it's going to be pronounced as ah. Ah. Everyone say for me, ah. Ah. If there is a vowel on it, so say we have here, we're putting a dhamma on here, it becomes at, so atu, right? Everyone say atu, 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 atu. atu. okay? So, example, here we had this word here, what does this word mean again? Anyone remember? Doctor, right. Pabib. Everyone say for me, Pabib. Pabib. Now, female doctor would be this. Everyone see this? I don't have to write the fatha on the ba because I know every time you see a tamil buta, there is always going to be a fatha before it. But I can, just because we're learning. Pabiba, right? So everyone say this for me. Pabiba. Pabiba. Notice it's it's not just a fatha, but it's an ah sound. We have a little ha sound, right? Pabiba. Pabiba. Right, but if I were to put, say, a kasra on it, or below it, what does this become? Good. Pabibeti. Everyone ask me. Pabibeti. Pabibeti. Okay. Now, how do we say, how do we say an Arab woman? We talked about how to say Arab man. How about Arab woman? Arabiya. Right. Here we go. Arabiya. Arabiya. Sorry, that's those two are kind of close together. Oops. Everyone see that? Arabiya. Everyone say after me. Arabiya. Arabiya. Now if I put, say, another fatha after this, now what does it become? Anyone? 
Look at her on top of the Tamabuta. Fatha. Good. Arabiyata. Good. Arabiyata. Uh, sorry, there's a shadda here. Arabiyata. Arabiyata. Good, good. So, any questions about this? No? Okay. So, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to um, to finish the homework and, and print it off for tonight. I'll be sending uh, I'll be sending that out um, probably tomorrow at some point tomorrow, inshallah. Um, and then, of course, you have two weeks to do it now because the next class will be two weeks from today, inshallah. We have we're taking two Sundays off as kind of a spring break. Um, and so the next class, as printed on the on the syllabus, will be the fourth of April, inshallah ta'ala. So Wednesday the fourth of April. I'll see you next, inshallah. Um so um for those who who prefer to take the the homework sheet from me from class in a physical copy, um is, is there anyone who, who would need that who wouldn't be able to print it out during this time? In which case I'll I'll bring it here in the next day or two and leave it somewhere at Lighthouse. Is there anyone anyone who needs me to, to print it off and leave it here? Okay. Okay, in that case, uh, it'll be emailed out, inshallah. Um, okay, so just to, to conclude, just another two minutes, inshallah. You can, it's okay? Okay. Yes, question? Sorry? <laughs> good question. Can you erase the board when you're done? Good question, good question. Right? Yeah, well, remember, I'm thinking about adab. Right, we don't want to let the, let the ustad... Um, uh, as much as possible, we don't want to let the Ustad erase his own board or her own board, right? Good. But um, uh, also to conclude, um, well, one a quick note. Alhamdulillah, we're all continuing. Um, we, um, I did want to want to read a full hadith. Um, we don't really have time for that though, because we want to pray Isha and then get going. Um, but I'll just give you the the, the gist of it. Um, the one who reads the Quran with difficulty gets double reward. So even if we think that that we are, even if we think that we're taking more time or we're never going to get there, we're just wasting our time because there's so much to think about in terms of Arabic. We know that if we're struggling with the Qur'an, our reward is actually greater. And so even though other people might be able to get through the Qur'an faster, read Arabic faster, the very fact that you're trying and struggling, Allah sees that and rewards that accordingly, rewards according to the struggle. As we've said before in a previous class, الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَالَّذِينَ جَاهُدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُّلَنَا But those who strive in us, as in Allah is speaking here, those who strive in us, we will guide to our paths. So, as long as we're keeping up these things, and even though it might seem hard, a lot, a lot of material, as long as we're keeping it up, Allah will take care of the rest of the way, inshaAllah. Right. Right. Okay. Um, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanak, uh, wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa rahmani wa rahim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidin mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. وَعَلَى مَنْ تَبِيعْهُ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ It's that in the name of God, the all-merciful, the most merciful. Um, all praise is due to God. He is the owner of praise. And we send peace and prayers upon his prophet Muhammad, his family and all his companions. 
and everyone who follows him until the last day. So as usual, we'll start with the intention from Imam al-Haddad. Ya Fattahu, Ya Alimu, Iftah lana, Fathan qariba, Bismillahi ar-Rahmani ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu Ala sayyidina Muhammadin Wa ala alihi Wa sahbihi Wa sallam Nawaitu at-ta'alluma Wa at-ta'alima والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى O opener, O all-knowing one, grant us an opening soon. In the name of Allah, the All-Merciful, the Compassionate. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the Worlds, and blessings and peace upon our Master Muhammad, his family and his companions. I intend to study and teach, to remember and remind, to profit and bring profit, to benefit and bring benefit, to encourage holding fast to the Book of Allah and the way of his Messenger, to call to guidance, to direct towards good, and to aim for the countenance of Allah and His pleasure, His nearness and His reward, exalted be He. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, we'll, um, we'll take a look at these words I put up here to begin with. So first of all, this first one we have in black. Four letters, right, four letters here. Um, the first letter, what's that first letter? Right, this right here is a scene. Remember that in, um, remember that when we see it printed out, we'll see it printed with the three teeth, like that. But often, usually when it's written, it's written like this. Just a line. If it's beginning the word, then we have a little hook that comes from under the line and then, and then goes on along the line. Um, um, also, I just wanted to correct something I, I said previously. When we were going over the scene, um, I talked about how you want to have this distance after the teeth to be about twice the, uh, the length of, of the teeth. That's not necessarily so. I mean, you could... Um, you know, you could have a relatively short scene and have that be it, as long as you have those three teeth. But make sure if you're writing it out um, and without the teeth, then give it, give it some length there. Right, so we have... Whoops. The pen's not so good. Okay, so we have first a scene. So, s, an S sound, right? Oh, that's horrible too. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Bismillah. Oh, this doesn't even have a nib. Oh, here we go. There we go. That's all right. We have seen, then, what, then? Adif. Then, oh, I'm writing really ugly today, sorry. And then, and then Ghain, yeah. Kind of almost looks like a yeah itself. 
but we see there's this dot here and we don't get the loop going back so much. There's this C formation above the line. Right, so we know it's a line. And then what? And then yeah. So we've been writing that out as double I. So, Sari. Everyone say that for me. Sari. So the last time that we met, we, we went over two kind of tricky, um, two kind of tricky sounds. Uh, first one was Ain. Remember that was what? How did we say that's pronounced? The Ain. What was the the way that I described that sound that might help you? Choking, right? Or strangling, right? Not really choking. You don't make much of a sound when you when you're choking. What? Right, it's strangling. Right, everyone go. That's the ain. That's the ain. Right, everyone try that for me. Okay, good. So this one, body. Say after me, body. Vod ra ya ain. Body here. Right, with the strangling sound at the end. Um, and then the, the second sound we went over was the Rhein. One interesting note about the Rhein. Well, first of all, if Ain is the strangling sound, what is the Rhein? What do we talk about? Good. Gargling. Right. Right. Bismillah. That's the sound. Right. As you as you're learning to to pronounce this sound, it can be helpful just taking some water and try trying to gargle with it that way. Um, one other way to um, to get to pronounce this sound correctly is uh, to know the the difference between the the line and the uh, the kha. Say if I were to write this word out again, but with a kha this time. The difference between the ghain and the kha is that the kha, when we pronounce the kha, we're not using our, our vocal cords right here, but with the ghain we are. That's a technical way of thinking about it. Just like how, how when we say t, we're not using our vocal cords, but when we say d, we are. Everyone go t, t, t. Put your, put your hand here. Ta, ta, ta. Da, da, da. It's easier to feel it with the tha. Tha, f. Everyone say f. F. Versus the thal. Av. Av. There's vibration going here for the thal that isn't for the tha. When we say this, there's vibration right here. This, when it's not there for thief. Same thing here. There's vibration for the ghain and there's not for the kha right here. Uh, what that can mean practically is that um, it's often helpful uh, if we think of almost if, if we think of singing our way through this through this word, right? So we have sari sari. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna sing through it, you're gonna hear the same sound. You're gonna hear the same tone. So say if I could, I pick a tone like. Mm, you're going to hear that same mm sound continued through the line, but not through the kha. That's a way to test yourself to see if you're pronouncing it correctly. I'll do it first and then, and then we'll practice inshallah. So, listen to this. This first one with the kha, you'll hear that the mm sound, it goes away on the kha and then comes back for the, um, for the yet. Okay? sa just li just listen for now and, and then we'll practice. Okay, so that's that. You hear how it goes away for the clock? Now listen to this with the line. You hear that? You hear how that's extended through the line? Do you hear that? Sari. 
Okay. I'll give you one more comparison and then, and then we'll practice. First one. Second one. Okay. Now let's all try. First, the hot. That sound goes away. The tone goes away. Now, for the line. So the test of if you're if you're if you're pronouncing the line correctly is if that tone, that sound, the singing continues through. Um, so that being said, I'll, I'll go through I'll go through these very quickly, and then we'll pray Maghrib inshallah, and then and then we'll start with uh, with the new material. Um, first of all, we we went over this one. Everyone say after me, body, body. Now this one. Habibatu. Habibatu. Right. Now, if I didn't put this Dhamma here, if we weren't pronouncing the, the Dhamma on that, how would we say it? How was it? Habiba. Right. Right. Why? Right. Right. This is. Ta marbuta, right? Ta marbuta. So if there's a vowel on it, remember I said it's a combination between a ta and a ha. If there's no vowel on it, we pronounce it as an, like an H, like a ha. Pabiba. If we're not putting a vowel on it, pabiba. If we are putting a vowel after it, it becomes a ta. Pabiba tu. Pabiba tu. If we put a dumb, if we put a dumb there, right. And now, just so um, so you can see, this Arab woman is wait. This is also on the homework, I believe. There we go. Arabiya, Arabiya. Actually, it would be better. Um, transliterated with, with that H sound at the end because there is the tam, tam avurta there as well. Arabiya. Everyone say this for me. Arabiya. Arabiya. Right. If we put a dhamma on there, uh, let's put a fatha, uh, kasra on there this time. Arabiyati. Arabiyati. And then this one below it. Now instead of putting a double A here, I put an A with a macron over it, an A with a line above it. But same difference, right here. Everyone say for me, Iratidad. Iratidad. Right. Okay. So I know we don't have time to go through all of these. Um, Maybe if, if you're confused about these, then maybe ask, ask me questions afterwards. But uh, we'll pray Maghrib now, inshallah, and then, and then continue on with the new material. Bismillah. So, four letters to go over today. Um, the um, one is uh, one of them, is a sound that's not quite in English, but it's not as hard, certainly not as hard as, as Ain and Ghain for most English speakers. Um, so, it should be a good class today. And then also, um, we're nearing the end, more or less. Uh, we've already passed the halfway mark, of course. And uh, we have these four letters today. Then we have three letters on Sunday, this Sunday, inshallah. Once we get done with those three letters, that's the whole Arabic alphabet. SubhanAllah. So, so from that point on, then of course we have, we have some symbols. Uh, and other things that, that you need to know in order to be able to, to read Arabic, to open up the Quran and, and read it correctly, fully. Um, and so we, we have uh, two or three weeks of, of that. And then, um, and then some practice going over surahs and stuff like that, really applying our knowledge. 
Alhamdulillah. Do you feel good to be at this point? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Feel like you're learning something? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, before we start, um, I wanted to uh, just talk briefly uh, about about something that should should give us a bit of momentum as well. The many of the scholars talk about how um, about how important the Quran is for the Muslim, and especially how important recitation recitation of the Quran is, and correct recitation, correct pronunciation. We want to think when when we're learning about the the Arabic alphabet, we're we're learning about how to pronounce the Quran as well, and and pronouncing the Arabic letters is the main part of tajweed, of of pronunciation of the Quran. If you have the pronunciation of the letters down, that's pretty much tajweed. As uh, Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu uh, an. Um, it said it's 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 related that he he was asked what um, what recitation recitation meant. Um, um, actually, that's kind of a that's kind of a side issue. Anyway, the um, tajweed sorry um, tajweed the main part of tajweed and the trickiest part of tajweed is pronouncing the the letters correctly. And so if we have this down. There are just a few other rules to know about what happens when some letters are combined or when thing, something comes after another thing or just a few minor, minor details of Tejweed to, to get past to. Once we have this down, then that's the main thing that we need to know in order to pronounce the, the Book of Allah correctly. Now, many of the scholars talk about how being able to recite the Quran with Tejweed and most fundamentally, what that means is pronouncing the Quran correctly and reading it correctly. Many scholars have said that this is a fard ayn upon a Muslim, is an individual obligation upon upon a Muslim. I.e., if 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 you leave this world and this hasn't been done, you're you're essentially accountable for that. Um, one of the scholars, a, a scholar of uh, recitation of the Quran. Uh, who wrote a, a famous uh, a famous poem uh, about Tajweed, uh, Ibn al-Jazari, rahimahullah. Uh, he says in his poem, وَالْأَخْذُ بِالتَّجْوِيدِ حَتْمٌ لَازِمُ مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ الْإِلَاهُ أَنْزَلَى وَهَاكَذَ مِنْهُ إِلَيْنَ وَصَلَى So, taking up Tajweed is a um, is a definite, uh, unquestionable obligation. Al akhub tajwidi hatun lazimu. Man lam yusahih al Quran athimu. Whoever does not pronounce the Quran correctly is sinful. Because why? The anhu bihi al ilahu anzala. Because this, with tajweed and with pronouncing it in this way, this is how Allah brought it down. وَهَكَذَ مِنْهُ إِلَيْنَا وَصَلَىٰ And it is in this way that it came to us from him. And so, and so when we're in these classes, when we're learning Arabic and we're trying to pronounce Arabic correctly and reading it correctly, we're, we're fulfilling an individual obligation. So one way to think about individual obligations is that we can think of it as a series of lists of stuff that we have to do in this world. We can look at it from that perspective of like, okay, well, Allah has, has said that we need to be praying five times a day and, and we need to, to give a zakat if, uh, if we're eligible for it every year and we have to make sure to do the hajj at one point in our lifetime if possible. And now, and now we're learning that we have to learn Arabic correctly. There's one, that's one perspective to think of it as a list of like, ah, oh, got to take care of this, got to take care of that, got to take care of that. Another way to think of it is through... Uh, what we have from from a hadith of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, that the way that he, he tells us that the best way to get close to Allah 
is to do the things that he has made obligatory upon us. And then after that, to do the things that he has recommended for us. And so, in a sense, many of us reach points throughout our day, throughout our lives, when we, when we think, I want to be close to Allah. I want Allah in my life. I want, I want to feel what I'm doing. I want to, to, to really feel Islam and live it out right. And, and when we feel like that, one of the best things that we can do is figure out how to perfect the things that, that, have, made, that have been made obligatory upon us. And this is one thing that many of the scholars agree is, is, is an obligation for us to, to learn Arabic. And so, any time during this course, or even after this course, when you're reviewing some of this material or trying to, to do well, if there's any point you reach when you're thinking, I just... I want to be close to Allah. I want Allah in my life. I want, I want to live Islam and live the Quran and what, what Allah teaches me to do in this world. One of the best ways to, to live that out is to get out your Arabic materials and make sure you've got that down. Just think about that when, when we're learning it, that there's, there's, there's something powerful going on here. There's something powerful going on here. If only we knew if only we could, we could see it and feel it. I'm talking, I'm talking myself as much as I'm talking to you as well. Because it's, uh, it's truly, it's, it's an honor to, to help everyone on, on this path too. Alhamdulillah. So, that being said, now the new material. First, two letters that look somewhat similar, just distinguished a bit by, by dots. First one, a word we have in English, or a sound, sorry, sound letter that we have in English. It is the fa. Everyone say for me, fa, fa. Okay, right. So it's the sound is just like the English f. F happens upon the contact of the lower lip with the top teeth. Fa, fa. So the way that this is written, first, when it's alone, we have, we start with the pen on the line, and then we go, we make a loop backwards above the line, a circle backwards above the line, then we go down along the line again, and a slight hook up above the line, and it has, above that circle, a dot. That's off that, right there. One more time. Make a circle backwards along the line, or uh, above the line. Now go along the line a bit, a hook coming up, and then a dot on there. And that's the fat. Now, when it's at the beginning of a word, the, the best way to write it, the way you usually see it, is with this circle. First of all, it doesn't have the tail and the hook. Um, and second of all, uh, the circle is, starts slightly above the line. So we write it starting slightly above the line. We make a a circle backwards like that, and then go down to the line, and then on to the next letter. So it connects to what comes after it. Once more, if everyone looks, if everyone looks, um, starting above the line, making that circle, and then going down to the line, and then onwards to the next letter. You may, you may see that circle when, when fat is beginning. You may see it on the line. 
um, but it's, uh, uh, it's more typical, uh, at least in my experience, to just to see it, to see it above the line. Completely above the line. When it's in the middle of a word, that's interesting. It's almost just like a loop. We're coming in from a previous letter, in from a previous letter, and we make a loop back around all above the line, and then we go on to the next letter. And then when we're done writing that word, we put a dot on that loop. Once again, starting on the line, then a loop or a circle backwards and then going back along the line. Make sure that this circle, this loop ends up above the, the rest of the, uh, of, the, of the line of the page and of the line of your writing as well. Because if, if it's kind of in, in the middle of it like, like this, it starts looking like another letter that we're going to come to. So it's above the line. And then finally, when it ends the word, It's like we're coming into what it looks like in the alone position. So when it ends, we're coming in, into the letter, make that loop, continue along the line a bit, and then have a hook all above the line, like so. I'll come around and take a look now. One, uh, who here has, has seen Aladdin, the, the cartoon Aladdin? You haven't seen Aladdin yet? Oh, you're missing it. Sorry? Oh, yeah? That's good. That's good. As, as much as, yeah. I, I have to say I, I don't completely disagree with that. <laughs> um, I respect your father for that. Um, um, but for those of us, especially my case, before Islam, no, I mean, not that, you know, Islam says anything against um, just watching movies, but, you know, there, there are considerations to things, especially with the whole movie industry and everything. But anyway, for those who've seen Aladdin, who's the main bad guy in Aladdin? Jafar, right, right. And that's a name, one of, the, one of the Sahaba. How do we write that name? Right here. Anyone say this for me? Yeah, yes, me? Ja'far, Ja'far. Everyone say, yeah, this is it. First we have a jeem with a fatha on it, and then an ayn. That's what this is right here, an ayn. And then what's this one? Fa, and then ra. Yeah. So, after me, Ja'far. 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 Right. Or as Disney would say, Jafar. Right. Alhamdulillah. And then what does the Quran say we're not supposed to tell what we're not supposed to say to our parents? You know? What do we not say to our parents? You know? Oof. Don't say oof to them. Right here. Oof. Everyone say to me, oof. Oof. Right, don't say that to your parents. So. That's explicitly in the Quran. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Ja'far and oof. Right? Yes? If we were to, to tran transliterate this out.
Jafar. Uh, sorry, I, I capitalized it because it's a name. Jafar. Jafar. There aren't different J's in, in Arabic, it's just the one, and yeah, anyway. But typically, yeah, if we're just going off transliteration, right, lowercase j, Jafar. Right. Whenever there's an ayn, yeah, you do the ayn sound. And it's not really a pause. What's happening is that the strangling sound is, 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 is happening there. So it takes some time for that to happen. Ja'afar. Ja'afar. A lot of the times when you, you have to develop the ear to hear the ayn as well. Um, because um, often when we're starting out, we don't hear the ayn. Then you'll start picking, picking it up. It's not just that uh, there's... Um, we have to be able to distinguish between the, the Hamza, a glossal stop, uh, uh, and the Ayn, uh, uh, right? So with just uh, starting with, with a Hamza, we ha uh, with a Hamza in the middle of the word, Ba'u, Ba'u, but with an, everyone say for me, Ba'u, Ba'u, with an Ayn, Ba'u, Ba'u. Right. Right. It, it actually, with many of these words, it takes some time to develop the ear, to, to pick up on that, to work on the ear so that you start hearing where the, where the ayn is. Right. So it's not that there's really a pause, the ayn is happening there. Ja'far. Ja'far. Right. One more time, everyone say for me. Ja'far. Ja'far. Okay. Radiallahu an. May Allah be pleased with him. So now on to this, this next letter is similar, well, first of all, the sound. So when we transliterate it out, we transliterate it as a, as a Q. So in English, typically when we, see, when we see a Q, typically it's no different from a K. It's a K, K sound. Um, we're going to get to Arabic also has almost a k sound. We're going to get to that today, insha'Allah. But but this sound is not just that. Alhamdulillah. Everyone say a k sound for me. K k k k. Think about what's happening in your mouth. To you try to feel what's happening in your mouth in your mouth today. K k. K. Everyone say for me, K. Do it consciously. Try to feel what's happening in the mouth. K. Ak. Ak. Everyone say for me, Ak. Ak. So what's happening is that if... There we go. Um, if these are the teeth right here, these are the teeth and this is the top of the mouth, uh, what's happening is that Okay, here we go. Here's the tongue. And um, so, for example, when we say T, T, the tongue is hitting the teeth right there. T, T, T. For the K, the tongue is hitting right there. It's almost in the middle of the mouth. Yeah, it's pretty much in the middle of the mouth. K, K, K. Now, this one is the Ka, 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 Ka. It's similar to a K sound. But what's happening is that you're bringing the tongue farther back, and it's hitting farther back. If anyone, if anyone watched cartoons growing up, that, that often when, when a cartoon character screams, it goes, ah, and it shows, it shows that there's this, um, like if you look at their mouth, it shows there's this, this little thing that, that waggles. Is, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, right, right. So if this, is the, if this is their mouth, then often we see in, and there's this thing that's dropping down at the back of the mouth that's waggling when, when cartoon characters scream, scream. What that is, is that's a, a, it's a flap of skin at the back of the throat called the uvula. Right at the back of the throat. Farthest back you can go. And, and so the cough is basically when the tongue hits back there. 
So one way, it's kind of a tricky letter because we don't have it in English. Um, but the best way to think about it, if you're thinking in terms of letters that we do know, is to take the k, k and bring the tongue farther back so that k, k becomes qa, qa, qa. Everyone try to say that to me. Qa, 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 qa. Aq, 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 aq. Okay, okay. Now try that for me. Aq. Aq. Okay, one at a time. Aq. Aq. Qa. Qa. Okay, good. Aq. Aq. Qa. Qa. Good. Aq. Aq. Good. Qa. Qa. Okay, right. Good. So, what's one thing? What's one thing now that we notice about this? If we think about how we hear the the alif in there when we say qa, what's one thing that we can imply from that when we say the the name of the letter qa? What do we know about that letter? A quality of that letter? It's emphatic. Good. It's not qaf, qaf, qaf. No, qa. So that when Fatha and Alif um, come around it, but specifically after it, ah instead of a, ah, just like la, pa, va, ra, kha, right? Pa, ra. That's the sound. That's the ka. In terms of how to write it, uh, it looks quite similar to the fat, but not quite, not exactly the same thing. So first of all, when it's when it's in the alone position, we start once again. We start on the line and make that loop backwards on the line. But now instead of going along the line with a, with a line along the line, we go under the line and then end with a hook that reaches just above the line. And then it has two dots. One more time. Make a circle above the line. Now go under the line. And then end above it with two dots or a line to to combine the two dots. Now, when it's at the beginning or the middle of a word, it looks uh, it's, it's basically just a fat with different dots, okay? So we start above the line again, make that loop back, and then go along the line. And then we have two dots there. Or a line above it. Similarly, when it's in the middle, we have that loop going backwards on the line. Uh, and above the line of the writing. Like a nose and two eyes with a mustache. I like that guy. Now when it's at the at the end of a word, once again it's going to look Similar to the fat, but we have the loop, uh, the, 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 the hook or the tail going under the line again. So we're coming in from a previous letter, make that loop back. Now we go under the line and then end just slightly above the line. So now, uh, one or two examples. Uh, anyone know how we say truth? In Arabic, truth. Anything? There's a there's a brother who was signed up for this course, uh, um, a leader in the community. His name is Haji Abdul Haq. Abdul Haq. Has anyone heard this word before? Haq. Haq. Right. Right. So Allah is the truth, the reality. Al Haq. So how do we write that?
like this. Haq. Everyone say for me. Haq. Haq. Right, there's a shadda on the qaf. So that qaf is doubled. It's not just haq, haq, but haq. Right? Everyone try that again for me. Haq. Haq. So if we, put, if we were to put a, a fatha on the haq. Haq. Right. Now, if we were to um, now the name of the letter is this. That's how we write the name of the letter. If we were to write it out in Arabic, right? Qaf. Everyone, look up, look up, and say for me. Qaf. Qaf. Right? Qaf. Alif. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, alhamdulillah. Moving on. Now, after qaf, we have a, a sound that we do have in English now. Again, the kaf. So this is um, it's not exactly similar, but it, it's pretty much, or it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty much the English K. 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 Everyone say calf. 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 Right. Pretty much the English K. A. And the way to write this, it's a beautiful letter actually, subhanAllah. Uh, really interesting. When it's alone, we write it, we start with a line going down onto the line of the page. And then we go along the line of the page and have a slight hook. And then sitting inside of that is a Hamza, actually. It's interesting. It's a beautiful letter, actually. Um, one more time. And then put a Hamza in there. Don't ask me why. I mean, when I was starting out Arabic, I heard something about um, the origin of the letter and how, um, yeah, I don't know. I heard, I heard just a little like tingle of, of, of some meaning right when I was starting Arabic and I haven't heard anything since. So if you do ever come across an explanation of why there's a Hamza sitting in there, please let me know. Do you know, Brother Musa? Okay. Right, so one more time. This is the calf. And now, when I started writing it like, uh, like I'm about to show you, my, uh, uh, my teacher got a little annoyed. I don't know. She, uh, one, one of the ways that I, I first learned it was um, almost getting kind of lazy on the Hamza. I mean, it looks beautiful with the Hamza, Hamza in there, but one way that it's not as common, it's certainly not as common as seeing the scene written as a line and the dots all joined, that you'll almost always see in, in Arabic handwriting. But one way that you might see, and it's kind of easier to write, is you might see the calf written like this with a little squiggly inside, which is how I often write it. Just because it's, it's easier. But for the most part, you can probably see it like that. Although note that this is sometimes a, a handwritten way of writing, writing the calf, is joining everything together there. As for when it begins a word, um, kind of different. Once I said this is an interesting, it's a beautiful letter. First, we, we begin above the line, quite above the line. Then we go back quite a ways, slanting, almost like a 90 degree angle. 
and then go on. And then when we're done with that, and when we're dotting things and, and putting extra um, dots and lines on the other letters, then we come back and do a line going down onto the calf like that. So the full form of it is basically three lines in a zigzag, but we start with just two, and then when we're done with the word, we put that third one on top of the calf. So starting above the line, slanting back and going on, and then finally coming in to put that tough guy on. One more time. Now I've labeled it here, see, so this, this line comes first, then that line comes second, and then this line comes third. When it's in the middle, similar to, to, to when it begins, so we're, once again we're going to do these two lines first, and then we're going to come back to the line above it. So we're coming in from a previous letter, we go up, for that line now, trace that back down to the line of the page and then go on. And then, when we're done writing the word, we put that line above it one more time. Coming in from previous letter, make a slant to the left, retrace that slant, and then go on to the next letter with a line above like that, when we're done with the word. And then finally, when it's at the end of the word, we look similar to when it's alone. We're basically coming into that alone position. So coming in from a previous letter, go up, and now retrace that down, make the hook at the end, and then the hums are sitting inside that. Or we can do my funky little thing of a squiggle. only if you incline towards that. Otherwise, leave it. So I'll write a few examples, give you a, a moment to kind of practice on your own, then I'll come take a look at the, at the writing for that one. Um, it's the, it's the same as the the alone, as the alone, yeah. Except that we're coming into it, right? Like many of the letters, it's the same as the cough and the fat. Two examples. One, how do we say remembrance, as in remembrance of God or mentioning of God, something like that. Vikash. Right, vikr, right here. Val, kaf, ra. Everyone say for me, vikr. Vikr. Right. Where does this word come from? Do you recognize that word? Surat al Fatiha. Good. So, how do we say this? Iyaka. Everyone reckon it sound familiar? Sound familiar? Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Iyaka. Right? So we have, first we have, we start with a kasra. Well, it's really we're starting with 
a hamza, then kasra on that hamza, then we have a ya with a shad over it, so e, e, and then alif and kaf with a fatha on it. Iyaka. Everyone say for me, Iyaka. Iyaka. So not just Iyaka, but Iyaka. Right. Right. And then finally, we have the Lam. So just like in English, in the English alphabet, have J, K, L. Similarly, K, and then after K, after the K sound, we have an L sound. Pretty much the L sound in English. L. Someone say for me, Lam. Lam. Good. Now, when it begins, it's a line down, and then we go slightly below the line, or actually significantly below the line, and then hook up. That ends just uh, ends just above the line. That's the line. Almost like a big fish hook, in a way. Remember, this, this line going down is going to be straight. It's a straight line going down and then curved. We don't want to make the whole thing curved, like a, like a, like a U or something like that. No, it's straight line and then make it curved up. When it's in the mid, when it's in the beginning of a word, we just have that line. We have that line above, like going down to the line of the page, and then we go along the line of the page, like so, and connect to what comes after it. This is why it's important that we know which letters connect to what comes after them and which don't connect to what comes after them. Otherwise, if we connected alif to what came after it, it would look like this. That's two separate letters, right? Alif does not connect. If we were to say l, l, we would put an alif, then lift our, our pen, then go down for the lamb. If we write L like this and try to connect the alif to, to the lamb now, that's lil, lil, right? So the lamb connects to what comes after it, the alif does not. Now it's relatively simple in the middle of the word too. We're coming in from a previous letter, if everyone looks up, in from a previous letter. We're going to go up for a line, retrace that line down, and then keep going. So it's almost like an alif, but it connects to what comes after it. And then in this way too, it almost looks like an English L as well. In the sense of the main part is that vertical line there. It's like the English L in most cases. And finally, When it's at the end, we're just going in, uh, once again, going into that alone form. So we're coming in from a previous letter. We're going to go up for that line. Now retrace it down and go past down now below the line of the page. And then end 
just above the line with the hook up there. Or a tail. So I'll write a few examples if you want a moment to practice and then and then we'll be done. So. Okay, so um, has anyone uh, has anyone not been here for for Juma? here at Lighthouse for Juma at least once? Okay, what's the name of the uh, pretty much the regular Imam at Lighthouse? Yeah, right, Abdul Latif, Abdul Latif, the servant of the. Subtle is one way to pronounce the Latif, or uh, aware of subtle things, aware of details of things. Latif also, if you're saying someone's Latif, generally in Arabic it means means nice. We don't really say that, I mean, when you're talking about Allah, it's normally not like Allah is the nice. You know, it's, it's kind of more nuanced meaning, more specific. Anyway, this is one of the names of Allah, Al-Latif, the Latif, the Subtly aware or aware of subtle things, that kind of meaning. <clears throat> Latif, everyone say for me. Latif. Latif. It's not just subtly aware. I mean, yeah, there are many different ways that we could translate this, many different contexts as well. But anyway, this is the basic thing. Latif. Also, uh, when we send prayers upon, um, upon the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family, what do we say? So for example, right at the end, as most of us know, at the end of the tashahud in Salah, when we're sitting, when we're sitting down, after we say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu, Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad. Right, in this context, in that particular context, has a question on it. وَعَلَىٰ آلِي مُحَمَّدٍ كَمَا صَلَّيْتَ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَعَلَىٰ آلِي إِبْرَاهِيمُ So family. Also, third chapter of the Qur'an is what? Anyone? We have Al-Fatiha, then comes what? Al-Baqarah, then comes Al-Imran. Al Imran, the family of Imran, the house of Imran. Right. Right. Okay. So any questions about any of this material today? Okay. So my portion finishes here. I think we'll have a bit of uh, uh, of review and solidifying some things with uh, with our wonderful TA. Uh, and and uh, but I'll I'll stop here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidin Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم
وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد الحمد لله رب العالمين uh, So uh, first as usual starting with the intention of Imam Al-Haddad يا فتاح يا عليم افتح لنا فتحا قريبا Hamza, if you could um, share with, with the brother here. Okay. Um, Bismillahi ar-Rahmani ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi وصحبه وسلم نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والاندفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى O oh opener, O oh all-knowing one, grant us an opening soon. In the name of Allah, the all-merciful, the compassionate. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the world, and blessings and peace upon our master Muhammad, his family and his companions. I intend to study and teach, to remember and remind, to profit and bring profit, to benefit and bring benefit, to encourage holding fast to the book of Allah and the way of his messenger, to call to guidance, to direct towards good, and to aim for the countenance of Allah and his pleasure, his nearness and his reward. Exalted be he. Alhamdulillah. So first off, um, I, I understand uh, not all of us have uh, have been up to date with with the material, uh, and so we're going to uh, going to proceed on with you to finish the alphabet today, Subhanallah. Uh, and so I'd still like to to, to plow through ma the material because there are those um, who, um, um, who who kind of kept up and, and everything, and so I want to uh, make sure we're sticking to the syllabus as much as possible. Uh, and keep going through that. So make sure if you if you haven't gone through the old material, see the videos online, go through the worksheets. Uh, also, I must apologize that, alhamdulillah, uh, I actually uh, brought my whole backpack and not in my backpack today was the um, uh, materials and the answer key and uh, and my own syllabus like that too. So so uh, unfortunately, um, what does that mean? Actually, that, that doesn't mean much to you, <laughs> um, except I might have had some, some homework uh, from before that we hadn't given back, or um, uh, as well, um, Sana won't be able to, to uh, take a look and correct the, uh, the work from the book uh, from, from before as well. But if at this point, if you have any, any homework or anything that, that you haven't uh, given in, please give it to Sana and she'll take a look at least at the first section. Does anyone have any? Any homework? Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> um, and then apologies also for um, for the homework from Wednesday not not getting out. Um, alhamdulillah, a series of circumstances came up. These things happen, and uh, inshallah, I'll uh, I'll do my best to to get both the the worksheet for today and and for Wednesday out um, for this week. Do what you can. Uh, I know you might not be able to get through everything, 
uh, every week I give you a lot of, of stuff to do on the worksheet. The point is that you use that to your advantage, figuring out where you can use work, uh, what, what you need to, uh, to review and what you need more practice on, and so those worksheets can be a tool rather than a burden to you. That's the aim. So first of all, we'll go through these words that I put up. First of all, we have this one up here. There's a dot on the second letter, which might not be so clear to everyone. There we go. Okay, so what's the what's the first symbol we have here? Okay, Alif with what? The Hamza on the top of it, and on top of the Hamza is a Fatha. Right. So how would we write that in the transliteration system we've been using? Just an A, right? I'll put it below. Okay. What's the next symbol? Good. Next symbol is a val. Val. Now comes what? We have three letters remaining in the word. Three letters remaining in the word. So take a second to look at it and figure out what those three letters are. Okay, right. So what's the first one? Yeah. Kaf. Right here. One letter and then another letter. See? We see that this letter right here matches up with calf in the middle over there. Everyone see, does anyone not see that? Okay. And then finally, two letters left. Alif, right? So double A, long A. And then, Ra. So, how do we say this? Adkar. Adkar. Right. Plural of dhikr means remembrances. Right? If you have several bits of dhikr to say during the day, you'd say your adkar. Right. Now, this one. The next one. What's the first letter? Pa. Right. Pa. That's right here. And what's on the car? Fatha. Right. A fatha. And then we have? Ra. And then? Okay. Good. There's a kasra on the ra. And after it comes a? Comes a yeah, right. So this yeah, is it a consonant or is it a vowel? What, how do we know when something is, when, when yeah or wow are a vowel? When they're a long vowel, it's an oo sound or it's an e sound. How do we know? Yes. Right. Kasra is the short version of ya. Yeah. So if for both ya yeah and wow, well, if the same kind of uh, if the same kind of vowel comes before them and there's there's no vowel coming after them, there's no vowel on it, then it's a long vowel. Right? So we hear uh, we see here before the ya yeah is a kasra, which is the same sound. E and E. And on the yeah, there's no vowel written on it, right? So we know that this is going to be a long vowel. Qarib. Everyone say for me. Qarib. Qarib. Right. If we had instead this, if a different vowel came before the yeah, then we'd know that it would be a consonant. It would be written as a Y, and what comes before the Ya? A Fatha. So it would be Quraib. Quraib. Right, everyone say this for me. Quraib. Quraib. So we see, we have Qura, right? Uh, 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 sorry, Quraib. Quraib. We have Qa, Ra, and then E, B. 
Paraib, Paraib, Paraib. Okay. But that's not originally what was there. It's a customer. Okay. Now to make sure we'll get through everything, I'll just kind of go through these pretty quickly. This one, anyone want to, want to, want to say what that is? Good. Akil. Someone else? A brave soul for the next one. Anyone? Good. Rotor. Rotor. Everyone save me. Rotor. Rotor. Right. Ein and Pa and Ra. Finally, this one. Anyone? Anyone else? Good. Everyone say for me. Vilal. Vilal. Right, here we have two lambs. We have a lamb in the middle and a lamb at the end. First word is the va. Va. The emphatic equivalent of the val, which is up here. Val versus va. Okay, quick note here, um, and this is this is a note that um, has to do with lamb, when we have lamb and then alif coming after it. There's a particular way that that's written, um, both in handwriting and when you see it typed out as well. Lamb, when it begins a... Um, when it begins a word is like this, right? We had that bit of review up there. This is lamb. And then alif, when it comes after the lamb would be like that, right? That's typically how we write lamb alif. So how to say no in Arabic is la, la. That might be how we would write la, but it's not how we write la, to be honest. Because this, it doesn't look so interesting. I don't know, this three straight lines, I don't know, three sides of a rectangle, it's not that interesting. We want, you know, to, this is a divine language, it's a beautiful language. What happens? Well, you just have to learn that when you're writing, any time that Alif comes after lamb, so we have lamb, then we have alif. It's going to, if there's nothing coming before the lamb, it's going to look like this. Everyone watch. Here's our line. It's going to look like we do the lamb, but then we come down and do a little curve that way, and that's what it looks like. Some people in handwriting do it like almost like that. But the best way is when it's a little less crazy, like that. And this is all lamb alif right here. La, 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 la. Yep. Right, so we start with the lamb, but then before we hit the line, we go a bit more to the left, then we loop back, and then and then go up for the other. That's lamb other. Okay. Good question. Good question. When now when we have something before those two. So, for example, in Vilal, in Vilal, we have Lam Alif, but it's coming in the middle of a word, i.e. there's something coming before it that's connecting to it. Then, in that case, we would, we would normally think that we write it like, okay, here's our medial Lam, and then 
you put an alif after that, like that. But no, unfortunately not. Um, it's more interesting than that. We go up for our lamb, but then we kind of, as we're coming down, we curve a bit down and the alif goes in, down like that. Okay? Everyone watch again. I'll do this again. We're coming into the lamb, we go up for the lamb, but then before we get down to the bottom of the line, we make a curve to the left, and then our alif goes in and fits onto that curve. And in handwriting, sometimes you'll see that, that this way is how people write it when lamb and alif are alone. So sometimes you, you won't see someone writing it like, like this, when they just have lamb alif, like when they say no, or when they're writing no, la, you'll see that they'll write it like, like that. One more time. La. It might, yeah. But the best way is to, and the way you'll see it in, um, in printed is like, is like this, when there's nothing coming before the lamb, nothing connecting to the lamb, and like this, when there is something connected. So, finally, Bilal should actually be written like this. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. I'll come around and see the, the lamb alifs um, um, when I'm going around looking at the, the new letters we do for today. Yeah. Okay. So now let's... Um, Well, let's do one of these, okay. We have two names of, uh, of great companions, radiallahu anhum, um, in, in our history, companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, at the bottom here, or the last two words. First, we have Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, right? Do we know how to write Abu? We've had this one before. Abu, right? Now Bakr. I'm just going to go over it quickly. Ba, ka, ra. And there we have it. Any questions on that? Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Okay. Now for Ali, Ali, how do we write this name? First of all, what, what are the, the three letters in his name? What are they? What, what's the first letter? Ayn, right. First letter is Ayn, then comes what? Lam, then what? Then a ya. Right, so I just wrote out the full forms of the letters. Now if we're going to write the whole word together, this whole name together, we put them together. Ein, Lam, Ya. And now we have it. Ali. Everyone say for me, Ali. Ali. Ali, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, good, and then finally, everyone could try this one for me, one of the names of God, one of the names of Allah.
Okay. Give everyone else a second. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. So the first letter is going to be a an Ali. Right. Let's put that for now. It's not. But we'll put it for now because at the end of class we'll get to why it's not. Okay? Okay. But we'll put it for now. Hamza. Uh, I'll write it and then I'm actually going to take that Hamza off and I'll tell you why at the end at the end of class. Just a little teaser. Okay, but what's the what's the next letter now? Lamb. Okay, what comes after lamb? Ha, right? We have lamb and then ha. Okay. One interesting thing now. Lam, then ha, but anyone remember what we said, special properties about jim ha, ha? What about stacking? When, when does stacking come into play? When do we stack letters? When what's at the beginning of a word? When the ha is at the beginning of a word? Not quite. When jim ha ha. When do we when do we stack? First of all, what do we stack on top of? What is the thing we're stacking things on top of? Jim ha and ha. These three are the ones that get things un stacked on top of them. Jim ha and ha. Get things stacked on top of them. Yes. Not quite. But close. But close. Anything, anything that connects to jim ha and kha from, from, from before, anything that's connecting to them can get stacked on top of them. Anything. Anything that comes before jim ha and kha and is connecting to that can be stacked on top of the jim ha and kha. That's why, yeah, ba, ta and ta can be stacked on top of them. You're right, but that's not the only thing. Anything. So even seen. So if we have Saja, Saja, I can write it like this. They are not like all on the line, but I stack the scene on top of the gene. So Alam is connecting to the Ha, so I can stack it on top of that Ha. Does everyone see that? Al, al, al. Okay, so now what do we have? After the ha is a fatha. Good. Al ha, and then how many letters do we have left? Right. We're going to be writing one letter, but it's doubled, right? And when we have when we have a doubled letter, how do we symbolize that? By putting a shadda on it, right? So what's that letter going to be? Ah, and then with a shadda on it, right? So everyone say for me, al haq. Al haqq. Al haqq. Right. Good. Any questions on, on this? On that one? So if there's like a dot before the hat, you can't connect it. You can't stack it. Right. You wouldn't stack it. Why? Because it's not the message that you connected to. Right. If we if we have a ra before the hat, we would not stack that ra on top of the hat because it can't connect to the hat. Ra just like dal and dal and alif and wow and other letters cannot connect to what comes after it. Right? Okay. Let's get to our new stuff. Alhamdulillah. Today, inshallah, 
as long as we, as long as we can get through living to the past hour, to the next hour, which is never a, a sure thing, right? But inshallah, we finished the alphabet today. Everyone say alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So there's still, still when we, when we finish the alphabet, uh, there are a few more symbols and things to go through. Uh, but the, the end is nigh. Or really the beginning is nigh. Because this is the beginning of your journey into this beautiful language, right? Yes. So, today we finish the alphabet. And then we have a few extra symbols to go over today, and then more symbols uh, after that for a week or two. And then four sessions of review. Now make sure, don't check out in this final time. Remember that the end of this session is, is coming. The completion of this is coming. And then don't think that review, you won't want to come to that, because that will be very important, solidifying this. We'll be going over Surat Al-Fatiha and going over um, various important things and words and things that we should, we should know how to pronounce correctly uh, and, and know how to, how to read as well. So, with that in mind, three letters left. So first of all, fortunate for us, all three of these letters have, um, are, are present pretty much in English. So first, we have the meme. So the sound of this is pretty much the English M. Mm. Everyone say meme, meme. Good. That was right here, the lips, the joining of the lips. So meme, when it stands alone, Let's see if this one works for me. When it's alone, we have a circle on the line and then a dip, uh, a tail that goes straight down below the line. One more time, circle on the line going clockwise and then tail, circle on the line and tail. I suppose not, not exactly round. It's, it's flat on the, it should be kind of flat on the, when it touches the line. Right. But if you make it round, there's no, yeah, there's no problem in that. When it's at the beginning of a word, we have just that circle. No tail. So we make now, but pay attention when it's when it's standing alone. We go clockwise. We make it clockwise. But when it's this way, beginning, we make it anti-clockwise, and then go on to the next letter. So I'll do that a few more times if you want to see.
finally, uh, not finally, sorry, moving on. And I'll take a look at your, at your memes uh, all in one when I'm done going through all four forms of it. When it's in the middle, we're coming in from a previous letter. We make that circle going once again counterclockwise and then we go on. Make the circle and it goes above the line and then on. Now I have seen it. Sometimes you might see people go below the line, especially in handwriting like that. Sometimes. But typically it all sits above the line. And then finally, when it's at the end, we have that circle and the tail going down. So we're coming into the meme counterclockwise again, and then down. I've also seen, uh, I've seen people draw this circle and then go out a bit and then down, like that. You might see that. But I personally think the easiest way is just to take the circle and then go straight down for the... Okay, uh, an important note now when writing meme in the beginning, middle, and end. Um, when, we, when we write the meme, when we're coming off from the circle, so the line coming off from the circle um, should not be coming off from the circle right at the line of the page. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean like, for example, writing a circle like this and then going like that. See how the line is coming right, when, it, when the line comes off the circle, it's doing so right on top of the line of the page, same as, as here. if I do that, because what happens then is that we end up where we're writing something that looks like a fat or a cough. So make sure when, when it comes off, see, there's some distance in between the point where the line leaves the circle of my writing. That point happens slightly above the line of the page. Everyone see that there? Right here, there's some distance between the two. And right here, here as well. The main thing is, uh, the important thing is when it's at the beginning and the middle. Uh, alone and end, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. The point where the line going to the next letter um, comes off from the circle should be above the line of the page. That moment when you're writing should be when you are when your pen or pencil is above the line of the page. Okay. Next, next we have. Noon. Everyone say for me. Noon. 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 Okay, so this is just like the English N. N. Noon. When it's alone, it looks almost like a cup, a slightly tilted cup. All right, so we begin above the line here, and we dip below the line, making like a semicircle. 
and end just above the line, like with many of our loops. Now, pay attention that the distance above the line in the beginning should be ideally a little more than the distance that it goes above the line at the end. That's why I say a, a tilted cup, almost. And we have a dot on top of it. I'll do that a few more times, if you want to see. Now, if you just take a look at this guy, does he remind you of anything? Looks kind of like a bat, tat, tat. Good, good intuition. Because when it's in the beginning or middle, it's going to look exactly like a bat, tat, or that, just with different dots. So see, we've seen this before. Beginning, tooth, except now we have a dot on the top. Now this is starting to look like a, a val right here, but notice the, the, this, this, this line on the line of the page is the line going into the next letter, right? And it's, the, the tooth is less slanted than the val. A val is going to look like more like, more like that, right? Similarly, we've seen, we've done this before when it's in the middle, too. Just the two. And then finally, when it's at the end, we go into the form at the beginning, uh, the form when it stands alone. So we're coming into it, and we have that cup. So this is where it differs from that, that, and that. And then we have this cup that goes below the, dips below the line at the end. Now that's not that bad, not that complicated. I'll come in, come around, take a look, and we'll go over examples with these two letters once we're done with the final letter for today, which is ha. Uh, everyone say for me ha uh, ha. Uh. Okay. Now we've seen ha uh, before. We've seen ha. Now we get ha. It's pretty much like the H in English. So the H kind of floats around a bit in, in English, to be honest. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not really there, sometimes it is there. Difference between the ha and the ha is that the ha, which we've seen, the ha is at the same position as the ayn, which is the middle of the throat. Kha and ghain happen at the top of the throat. Ha and ayn 
at the middle of the throat and now at the bottom of the throat at the level of vo vocal cords we have Hamza uh, 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 and we have ha, 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 ha. ha is the, the, the breath that comes emanating from basically the level of the vocal cords so everyone say uh, everyone say Ghoin and Kha Ghoin Kha Ha Ain Ah Ah And Ha Ha Right So the Ha is lower than the Ha This new one we're learning is lower than the Ha which comes at the beginning of the alphabet in which we transliterate as a capital H, so you might see with an H with a dot under it. This is a beautiful letter too. The, um, it's, its seal, its ending, is musk, sweet smelling. It's a saying in Arabic, I mean it's taken from, from the Quran, Surah Al-Mutafifin. Um, last letter we have to do. Oh, quite a beautiful letter, actually. So, part of it we've actually seen before. Anyone remember when I was talking about the hat? I've mentioned some things about the hat before. Yes? Exactly. When I talked about the tamabuta, I said how the tamabuta is a cross between a ta and a hat. So take the Ta part from the ta mabuta and you're left with a ha, basically. When it's alone, like that. Ta mabuta without the dots, or just a circle, right? When it's alone, like an egg. Not a complete circle, often you almost see almost a, a point at the top if we're getting really picky. And sometimes people even have like a little, I don't know, like a little bit that, that extends over that. But yeah, but if you write a circle, then there's nothing wrong with that. That's the hat. And since we've already seen it, I'm going to jump to when it's at the end. We've seen this for the Tama Buddha. Remember this? We've gone over this before. We're along the line, then we go up, and then make a loop on the back of that line, all of which rests above the line of the page. When it's at the end of a word. Now when it's at the beginning of a word, it gets kind of interesting. Basically, big loop, inside the big loop is a small loop. What do I mean by that? There we have it. Sometimes people close the loop, that loop completely. It looks almost like that. But, I don't know, I tend to prefer more like that. It's almost like a backward C. And then you do another loop inside of that. And that's the hat. Everyone say it for me again. Ha. Ha. Yes. The difference between this and without the two dots on top. You've seen it with two dots on top. What is it if we put two dots on top? What is that? That's a tamabuta. Right. Right. So tamabuta is what? Not a letter. The difference between ha and tamabuta. First of all, ha has no dots. Tamabuta has two dots on it. Second of all, ha 
is a regular letter, can occur at any point in the word, tamavuta, only, only, ever at the end of a word. Another point, ha can exist in any form with any kind of vowels coming before and after it. Tamavuta always has a fatha before it, and then what comes after it is, could be, could be anything. Um, in terms of pronunciation, ha is always pronounced ha. Tamavuta, if we're not putting a vowel after the tamavuta, is pronounced ha as well. But if there is a vowel coming on, i.e. after the tamavuta, it's that, right? Okay. Quick fire, right? Alhamdulillah. Shoot me your questions, I'll shoot you back. Right. Finally, when it's in the middle, once again, it gets interesting. Uh, we actually have several options for this too. One way to do it, the way that I like, is everyone pay attention because it's kind of, it's interesting. Alhamdulillah. First, we dip down below the line. Now we go above the line and then make the loop back and on. I'll do it one more time. Dipping below the line, go up and then loop above the line and then on. But now pay attention, what else might you see? You might see not only a loop above the line, but a loop below the line as well. Some people write it like that. And then finally, you might not see any of that. You might see a dip below the line like this. All of these are ha. Although this is the one I prefer. I might not like you so much if you do another way. No, I'm just kidding. I'm the left. I don't like any of you. <clears throat> I'm the left. No, I love you guys. I'm the left. I love you all in Allah. We're all in this together, trying to learn His language, trying to work towards this. I'm the left. All right. So I will come around taking a look at those as I'm coming around. I'd like all of you to try your hand at some words, some very important words. Okay, so now, now going over uh, a few of these. First of all, the Arabic that I wrote. This is a name of Allah. Allah is noble and generous. Alhamdulillah. What is he in Arabic? Kareem. Kareem. Next, what do we have here? Mm -hmm. Good. Alhamdu. Notice, there's some stacking going on. So, in order to close up our whole discussion of, of stacking, we say that Jim, Ha, Kha, and Meem. These four letters. Jim, Ha, Kha, Meem. With those four letters, when there is a letter that connects before it, that can be stacked on top of it. And so what are we seeing here? We're seeing that a lamb is, on, is stacked on top of the Ha. And that Ha in turn is stacked on top of the Meme. So everyone say this for me. Everyone say this. Alhamdu. 
Alhamdu. Right? So here, if we were to put the divisions between them, that's the lamb right there. And there's the ha and the meme. Any questions on this? Right, it's stacked on top of the meme. Here, I'll write it again. Al Hamdu. Tricky, but it's beautiful. Alhamdulillah. Okay, now this the second one here, or Rahim. Rahim. First we have a Ra. Then we have what? Ha, actually didn't have, I didn't put any examples with the, with the ha up here, but anyway, alhamdulillah. And then, oh yeah, but now if we're doing the, if we're just doing the skeleton of the word, yeah, we have a what? A yeah, and then finally a meme, right, Rahim, there's Rahim. And now, finally, the name of our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, is written Okay, first we have a what? Meme. Now, what comes after the meme? Aha! So, we can stack it, correct? Now, what is the ha coming before? A meme, which we can, so we can stack the ha on top of that meme. Now, what do we have? The, and now we have it. What are the vowels on the, after the meme? What do we have? Bamma. Fatha. Good. Muha. Then on top of the meme, the second meme. We have a fatha and a what? And the shadda. Right. And now we have it. Muhammad. Subhanallah. Anyone noticed if you take a look at this? Very loosely. Let's see. Mm. Okay, here we go. So see this, even though it's kind of a messy way to write Muhammad. You see that? Allahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So any any questions about ha, noon, or meme, or any of this stuff, or stacking, or. Question about life, marriage, yes. Um, on the assessment, <laughs> on the assessment, um, I, the assessment will, I mean, if you don't stack when you're writing, uh, you just look like an elementary school child. That's that's all. I mean, yeah, that's my take. Just to, uh, everyone can understand you. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's just it's just like if you write the dots out and don't do lines. Like if you on the yet yeah, wrote two dots instead of a line. It's just it's a less conventional way of writing it out, uh, handwriting. But what's important is that when you see this, you can understand, it. right? And so it's helpful to practice now stacking because then you'll be able to, you won't have to think twice about how to, um, how to break that down when you see it, someone handwriting it. Right. Okay. Now finally, not really any symbols, but some kind of material to, to go over. And this is kind of the fun stuff. <clears throat> uh, 
what did I what did I kind of give you a teaser of at the beginning? What did I what did I say? The alif, right? What about the what about the alif? What were we talking about? What did I say? You one you guys were saying write it write something a certain way, and I said, well, not quite, but we'll get to that. Right. Right. Writing a Hamza and a Fatha on it. Okay, so, today what we talk about is a special type of Hamza. Hamza is an interesting thing. There are different kinds of Hamzas. This Hamza now is called... Hamzat al-Wasl. Everyone say for me. Hamzat al-Wasl. Hamzat al-Wasl. Hamzat al-Wasl means literally it's the Hamza of connecting. The Hamza of connecting. Now it's got a symbol. You'll only ever find it on an alif. And the symbol of it kind of looks like a sod on top of the alif. Everyone watch this. Here we go. That's the symbol for it. Just like how Hamzat al-Wasl, in the name of it, we have a sod, al-Wasl, Wasl. It looks like a sod that goes over it. Um, that's the way to, to write it. What does this mean? This means that when we're starting a word, you'll only find, only ever find, just like with the uh, Hamza on top of an alif, um, uh, actually, no, never mind, never mind that. You will only find this Hamza on top of an alif and in the middle, uh, sorry, and at the beginning of a word. You will only find Hamzat al-Wasl at the beginning of a word on top of an alif. Only, ever. And what it, what it means is when we're beginning this word and we're not saying anything before it, there's no vowel from a previous word that, um, that is coming before it, or really that there's no previous word coming before it, but we're, start, we're just saying, starting with this word, that's when the Hamza is there. Present. The Hamza is present. When we start with that word. And it's usually an ah sound. So it could be, we could have a kasra on it, we could have a dhamma on it. It's usually a fatha though. Now what that means is that when it's, is that it, it is absent, this Hamza completely goes away. When it is in the middle of words, i.e. when we're saying a word. Remember I said, this symbol only ever comes at the beginning of a word. So what I'm talking about is on the level of sentences now. If I'm saying a word before this word that has Hamza al-Wasl, that Hamza goes away. As in there's not going to be that glottal stop, there's not going to be the uh, uh, example. How do we say, praise be to God? Alhamdulillah, right. We can invert that. We can invert that and say, what, have you ever, have you ever heard the reverse? Not Alhamdulillah, but Lillahi Alhamdu. Right, Lillahi Alhamd. Often in some, uh, the, the takbir that we do for Eid, one of the lines of, of the extended takbirat, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd, instead of alhamdulillah, wa lillahi alhamd. So, 
here we have Ilahi Alhamd. Now, actually, after having done this, I realized there with this word, uh, Allah's name is a very interesting name. There are, there's lots of stuff that's going on here that might not make sense right now as to how it's pronounced. The important thing is, Lillahi alhamd, kasra before alhamd. Right now, I'm telling you, alhamd has a hamzat al-wasl on it. So normally we would say alhamd, correct? Alhamd, right? Praise, alhamd. But now there's a kasra before it, there's a word before it. So this Hamza, it's not, we're going, not going to have the ah uh, there. Lillahi, everyone say Lillahi, plus Alhamd, Lillahi, Alhamd, Lillahi Alhamd, Lillahi Alhamd. Um, what's another way? Okay, another one. And I'm almost running out of space, I apologize. Okay. Al Rahman Al Rahim. Rah. Man. E. Al Rahim. Sound familiar? Al Rahman Al Rahim. Yeah? Bismillah, your Rahman, your Rahim. We don't say Al Rahmani, Al Rahim. We say Al Rahmani, Al Rahim. And I've just noticed that something to do with this is problematic potentially. So I will go into the final thing that I have to say today, which ties into. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Anyone know how to say the in Arabic? When we want to say the something, we want to make something definite. The equals L. L. Right. And the form for this is it's Alif with a Hamzat Al-Wasl and then Sukun on the Lamb. This is L. And it connects to what comes after to, to what comes after it. So if I want to say if I want to say, for example, how do I say beloved? Anyone know how to say beloved in Arabic? Habib. Well, be, my beloved is Habibi. Right. But beloved is Habib. 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 Now, if I want to say the beloved, it's what? Al Habib. And it connects to that. Al Habib. Just like a truth or a right is haq. But the truth, Al Haq. Right? Everyone say this to me. Al Habib. Al Habib. Okay. A lot of information I'm throwing at you. I'm throwing this at you and we'll keep working on it, right? You might not get it completely right now, but this is such important stuff that it'll just be reinforced and reinforced and reinforced. So if you don't get it right now, eventually you'll get it in your system. Inshallah. And there are steps to this process that I'm taking you through, so please bear with me. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So we were talking about alif lam, alif lam al, meaning the, making something definite. One thing, alif lam connects to, to the word that it's a part of. Alif lam connects al, habib. 
the rotate connecting, right? One final point, and this is the important thing, that the letter that it's connecting to immediately, so the first letter of that word that we're putting Alif Lam before, if that letter is a certain group of letters, the Lam gets absorbed into it. What do I mean by that? Okay. In Arabic, there are thing, things called sun letters and there are things called moon letters. Anyone know how do we say sun in Arabic? Shams. Good. Here we go. Shams. Anyone know how we say moon in Arabic? Qamar. 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 Anyone know how we say the sun? El Shams. Except not quite. Why? Ash Shams. Not El Shams, but Ash Shams. The sun, Ashams. The important thing to note here is that we have a lamb, right? We wrote Alif lamb to make it the sun, correct? What's happened? The lamb has gotten absorbed into the sheen. So instead of saying El Shams, we have Ashams. Ashams. So the shim now becomes double. It becomes it becomes a uh, we we have a shadda on it. Right? Ashams. How do we say the moon? Al Qamar. Right. Al Qamar. Al-Qamar, Al-Qamar. Notice how we are saying the Lamb. So for these letters, which I'll tell you, the Lamb is just a regular Lamb. When we put Alif Lamb in front of these letters, it stays the same. When we put Alif Lamb in front of these letters, the Lamb gets absorbed into it. Al-Qamar, Hashem. So, now, finally, I'll give you those letters. Okay.
14 sun letters, 14 moon letters. I started here with, with Hamza because uh, Alif, Alif is a vowel, right? If we put uh, Alif wouldn't ever start a word, correct? So we would never be putting Alif Lam in front of a true Alif. But we can start a word with Hamza, which is why it's here. The distinction between these two is that Lam l, l, in the mouth happens with the tip of the tongue. Happens with the tip of the tongue. And all of these letters, Ta, Fa, Dal, Val, Ra, Ze, Sin, Shin, Sa, Da, Ta, Ta, Lam, Noon, all of them also happen with the tip of the tongue. And that is why the lamb gets absorbed into these letters. Because the lamb and these letters are pretty much in the same kind of position in the mouth. Whereas the moon letters happen elsewhere in the mouth, either at the point of the lips, or the lips and the teeth, or the throat, or back of the mouth, any of those points. So to illustrate that, when we begin, now I know you're probably still copying down the letters, that's fine. We can maybe stay for a minute or two just to, to copy down this stuff. Um, if everyone could, could stop copying and at least um, just be with me for a second. Ra, sun or moon? Sun, here it is, right? So when we say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, we don't say Al Rahman, we don't say Al Rahim, but Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Everyone, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Ar Rahim, and Alif Lam is. Alif Lam, the, uh, what's on the Alif is a Hamzat al wasl So if we're putting the two together and we have Ar-Rahmani and then Ar-Rahim, we don't stop there. We don't say Ar-Rahmani, Ar-Rahim. It's Ar-Rahmani, Ar-Rahim. See that? Combining two things that we learned today, Hamzat al wasl and sun letters. Everyone say after me, Ar-Rahmani, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Right, the E, the Kasra be between the two is, is a Kasra on Ar-Rahman and the Hamza al wasl the A uh, is going away for Ar-Rahim uh, for Ar-Rahim Right? Okay Just like owner of the Day of Judgment Maliki Yawm El Din El Din Ad Din Ad Din Maliki Yawm Ad Din Maliki Yawm Ad Din So if you look at Surah Al Fatiha now, you'll see all these. Well, if you look at any place in the Quran, you'll see all kinds of Alif Lams. And, and you'll see, especially in Surah Al-Fatiha, since you're all probably saying it regularly, you'll see what's happening there with the Hamza al wasl and with the sun and moon letters. So once again, lots of information today, but it'll all be reinforced as we go through reading Arabic in the next few weeks, inshallah. Right. Alhamdulillah. So I'm going to end my portion now. We still have, uh, that, that clock's a bit fast. Um, actually, oh no, it's pretty accurate. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, it used to be fast, so. Okay, I was going off of that. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, I'm going to end my portion now, and then um, we'll have a, a few minutes with, uh, with Sana, um, going through a few words. Uh, if you have to leave right, right at three, 
um, feel free to. Otherwise, um, we'll have like maybe five, seven minutes, inshallah, um, and um, um, and then we'll pray. Uh, we'll, we'll do duhr after that, inshallah. So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa ala man tabiyahu bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. All praise is due to God, Allah, and peace and prayers upon his Prophet and Messenger Muhammad on his family and his companions and all those who follow him to the last day. <coughs> Starting on the syllabus with the intention of Imam al-Haddad as usual. Ya Fattahu Ya Alimu Iftah Lana Fathan Qariba Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa ala alihi Wa sahbihi Wa sallam Nawaitu ta'alluma Wa ta'alima والتذكرة والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه Subhanahu wa ta'ala. O opener, O all knowing one, grant us an opening soon. In the name of Allah, the all merciful, the compassionate. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and blessings and peace upon our master Muhammad, his family and his companions. I intend to study and teach, to remember and remind, to profit and bring profit to benefit and bring benefit, to encourage holding fast to the book of Allah and the way of his messenger, to call to guidance, to direct towards good, and to aim for the countenance of Allah and his pleasure, his nearness and his reward, exalted be he. Alhamdulillah. Such a blessing to be here today, both for me and, and for you, inshallah. This there are so many people prevented from, from seeking knowledge, whether it's being prevented from, from the means of seeking knowledge or prevented from having some desire in their heart to, to seek knowledge. And so may Allah make us, make us always people who desire to seek the most beneficial knowledge, which is that which brings us closer to Allah. May Allah always make us people who desire Allah and nothing else. And the only reason that we come to classes like this, the only reason that we go to various things, do things in our lives, may Allah make it such that there is nothing in our heart ever, anything except the desire for Allah. In fact, even not even the desire for Allah. May there be nothing in our hearts but Allah. I mean, subhanAllah, that's quite a, quite a high station that we all aspire to, you know. Um, alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, this this is a means also for for all of you to to get closer to Allah. And if you ever feeling 
like it's like it's tough or you're not getting things or you're not motivated or anything just remind yourself of you know of, of why we're doing this or at least why we should be doing this we do it for Allah as um, and that really applies to anything too if we're, if we're feeling that that we're down in some way or not motivated all we have to do is reorient ourselves and place our heart where it needs to be our direction where it needs to be in Allah and as um, just a little aside as um, um, one of the uh, one of the wisdoms one of the hikam of uh, Ibn Atayillah who was an Egyptian scholar who lived several centuries ago he said um, may Allah have mercy on him Rahimahullah لا تستغرب وقول أقدار ما دمت في هذه ما مقول الأقدار ما دمت في هذه الدار. So don't don't get surprised that any time things you don't like happen in this world or tough things happen happen in this world as long as you're in this world because the nature of this world is that it's tough. The nature of this world is that it has problems, it has things that we don't like and things that don't work out. Even when we're journeying to Allah, when we're journeying to His knowledge, things happen that we don't like, things happen that we think. We think, yeah, Allah, we make this intention that, that we, we come to Allah and we want to, to approach His knowledge and yet things call in, come in the way. You know, we want to make, make our salah on time, but sometimes things come in the way. Even the Prophet ﷺ did not pray every single prayer on time. Things prevented him from doing so. Now we can't get in the mode of, of letting things get in the way, but there are certain things that we can't control. He slept through at least one prayer, we know that, because we have it related from, from him that we're told that whoever forgets a prayer or, um, or that Allah has, has forgiven what those, those of his ummah who, who forget things in, unintentionally or, or sleep through things. So there were times when the Sahaba, even the Prophet himself, slept through prayers unintentionally. And so they made them up when they could. Or when they were in jihad, they couldn't stop jihad to pray a complete prayer. And so they, uh, when they're in the midst of battle, so they missed prayers like that. And so things will always come, come in the way of us when we, uh, when we do things in this world. And the important thing is to understand as long as we have the right orientation, we, can, we can't help but be pleased with everything that comes because everything comes from Allah. And it's, it's, it's in His knowledge that it comes to us. And it's in His knowledge that He tries us with, with difficult things and misunderstandings and, and often reduces us to a complete state of helplessness because He wants to hear us calling upon Him and turning to Him. Anyway, so with that, there is every reason to rejoice now as we're, we're, we're nearing the end. Even if, even if all of these things that we've, we've gone over so far aren't completely taking hold in the mind or on the tongue as we're, as we're trying to pronounce this language, still we're covering ground. I know that... The, um, has anyone here not learnt anything in this course? Just be honest, just be honest. Has anyone here not learned anything? Okay. Inshallah, Musa, have you learned at least something? Okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I know I've learned a lot, you know, that's the nature of teaching. Teaching makes you learn things better and, and learn from others as well. So, Alhamdulillah, we've all benefited from this course. So, we've all come a distance and now, if we're keeping up with the course, the distance is that, what are the, the market is that we've we've now completed the alphabet and we're moving on to a few extra symbols and things that we need to know about Arabic before we can completely know um, the details of, of how to read Arabic and how to get through the Quran. So first, um, we'll, we'll begin now with um, going through the alphabet again, one more time or a few times. So, repeat after me. Alif, Ba, Ta, Fa, Jim, Ha, Kha, Dal, Val, Ra, Zay, Seen, Sheen, Sod, 
ضاد ضاء ضاء عين غين فاء قاف كاف لام ميم نون هاء واو يا الحمد لله Alhamdulillah, got some good sound effects too. Nice motorcycles outside the door, nice music booming above. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so we'll go through these things that, that I put up on the board. First of all, who wants to tell me how we say this guy, this first letter? Good, good. Everyone repeat after me. Assalam. Assalam. Okay. So take me through the different symbols and things that we have. First of all, what's what's this guy right here? Right, it's an alif, and what's what does the alif have? Hamza tell wasl. Everyone say for me. Hamza tell wasl. Hamza tell wasl. Right, almost looks like a Dhamma, but not quite. This is what a Dhamma looks like. Hamza al wasl like that. And so, right, Hamza al wasl which means that it's the Hamza of continuing, so if we have a vowel coming before that, and we're not going to say that Alif and that Hamza, it just completely goes away. But if we're beginning what we're saying with this word, then we begin with uh, with the Hamza and the vowel. And the vowel will almost always be a Fatha, especially in, when we have Alif, Lam. Right? It's going to be it's going to be a Fatha in that case for the for the Hamza al Wasl. When we have Alif Lam, meaning what does Alif Lam mean? V. Right. Typically, make something definite, a definite thing. So Alif and then. Lam, good. And on the lamb is a sukun. Then what comes next? What's the next symbol? It's a scene. This long line here is a scene. You know, if uh, if it were printed out, we would see the three teeth there. But um, but I don't I don't have it written because normally when you see it out in handwriting, it's just kind of a straight line going across the page. Seen with a what on it? Good. Fatha, then we have a? Lamb. Lamb, good. After the lamb is a? An alif. Good. So we have lamb alif here, which we talked about last time, written like this, not just as we normally see. Like say we have, okay, we're coming into a lamb. Oops. Coming into a lamb, and we go from that lamb, and then just into an alif like that. No, lamb alif looks like that if it's connected before, and then if it's not, something like that. Right, which we went over last time. Right, so that's what's going on here. Lamb alif, and then finally, meme. Okay. So. Something that's coming into play here. Nora, could you could you say this word for me again? How did we say we, we pronounced it? As salam. But but what what I see written there is is El Salam, right? El Salam. So you're wrong, aren't you? Right. Sun letter. Right. Last time we talked about. I'll write this on the side of the board too. We talked about sun letters and moon letters. 
Right. How do we say sun in Arabic? How do we say the, the sun? Everyone say for me, Ashems. Ashems. Right, Ashems. So here, Ashems, it's not El Shems, because on these types of letters, just like the name we have for the category, the lamb in Elif Lamb, the lamb, the U in El, gets absorbed into the next letter. So the lamb drops off, we're no longer hearing that sound, we're no longer pronouncing that sound. Instead, the sound that comes next gets doubled. So it's not... Right, if we were to vowel it out, we would put a shadda, and therefore in the Quran you will see a shadda on it. Right. Which means that that lamb has been absorbed into, into the next letter. So, we say ashams, which is different from um, if there were no shadda there, we'd say ashams, ashams. Right? Ashems. No, there has to be that shadda there. Ashems. Everyone say it for me one more time. Ashems. Ashems. Okay. Whereas the moon letters, how do we say moon in Arabic? Or the moon in Arabic? Al Qamar. Right, not Al-Qamar, Al-Qamar, no, Al-Qamar, the lamb is there, it's there, we don't have a Shadda on the Qaf, the lamb does not drop off, it's not absorbed into the, into the Qaf, it's Al-Qamar, Al-Qamar, Ash-Shams and Al-Qamar, Al-Qamar, okay, so, I'm going to go through the alphabet. You tell me whether it's a sun letter that I say or it's a moon letter. So, just like here, we have sun, we have moon. So if it's sun, raise your left hand. If it's moon, raise your right hand, okay? That makes sense? Because you're looking at the board. So if it's on this side, if it's a moon letter, it's a sun letter, okay? Okay, so, Adif. Okay, kind of trick question, actually. <laughs> because, uh, because we only put, uh, sun and moon letters have to do with Alif Lam. We only put Alif Lam in front of a complete word. So a complete word, uh, a word cannot begin with a vowel. So it can't begin with Alif, because Alif can only be a vowel. There's no consonant Alif, so... It's kind of a trick question, actually. Uh, but pretty much the consonant, well, in some ways, the, the consonant equivalent of the vowel alif is Hamza. So is Hamza a sun or a moon? There we go. You should be raising your right hand. Yeah. Hamza, right? Al ihsan, not al ihsan. Or al, you, you can't even do it. Yeah. Right. Also, all the sun letters, all the sun letters happen with the tip of the tongue. All the moon letters are everywhere else. Moon letters happen from the lips, or the lips and the teeth coming together, or back of the throat, or somewhere in the throat, or middle of the mouth. That's one way that they're distinguished as well. Okay, so, Hamza. One more time. Which hand are you raising? Hamza? Good. Now, ba. Good, right hand. Ta. Ta. Atha. Atha goes here. The tha goes here. Atha. Right. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll do that now. 
Okay, so everyone, if you have in front of you written the sun and moon letters, put it away. Just listen to me, okay? Listen to me. Okay. So we have al al hamza al hamza right? Now al ba, right? Al ba. So here, at ta. Raise your hand now. At ta. Good. Af. Af. Right. Al jim. Al jim. Al jim. Right. Because we hear the l. Al jim. Not a jim. Al jim. Al ha. Good. Al ha. Al kha. Good. Al dal. Al dal. Malik yawmid din. In Surah Al Fatiha, Malik yawmid din. Not Malik yawmid din. Malik yawmid din. La. Malik yawmid din. Okay. Azal. Azal. Good. Arra. Arra. That's almost a tricky one because lamb and ra are very similar. But that should be a hint. Since lamb and ra are very similar, the lamb gets absorbed into the ra. Azay. Azay. Okay. Right. I want to see everyone's hand, by the way. Even if you're wrong, right? Just try. Azay. It's over here because we're not hearing alzay. Azay. For the moon letters, we'll hear l before we hear the sound of the letter. Okay? So, azay, not alzay. Okay. Asin. Asin. Remember, I want to see everyone's hand. All right, brother. <laughs> Asin. One more time. Asin. Good. Ashin, Ashin. Over here, left hand. Ashin, because we're not hearing El Sheen. No, Ashin, Ashin. Okay. Asad. Good. Abad. A mod, right over here. Right. A paw, a paw, a paw over here. If it went over here, you would hear El paw, El paw, a paw, a paw. Okay. Allah, Allah. Remember, if it's tricky, if you're thinking, yeah, I thought I kind of heard the lamb in that, what should you be thinking? Definitely sun. If you're thinking, I thought I kind of heard the lamb in that, that's because the lamb is kind of close to that letter, therefore it's getting absorbed. Right? Um, I mean, if they're putting the lamb in there, then they're not pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, yeah. And a native, a native Arabic speaker, I, uh, a native Arabic speaker would, would err on the side of of not of putting moon letters, some moon letters in this category. They wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't really hear them say uh, like el el the el the, because it's more complicated to say. It, it takes more effort of the tongue to say el the. Versus just combining the two, al right? Whereas in some dialects, uh, in jim, you'll hear is uh, gets put in the sun category. So people say ajim or ajim, right? Even though it should be in the moon category. Okay, apa, alva, alva. 
Good. Al Ain. Good. Al Ghain. Al Fa. Good. Al Qaf. Al Qaf. Al Qaf. Al Qaf. Right. Place of Qaf is right in the back of um, the back of the top of the mouth. Al Qaf, not tip of the tongue. Al Qaf. Al Kaf. Al Kaf. Alam, Alam. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it's. It's kind of a tricky one. I mean, because it's a double lamb anyway. But yeah, typically the the scholars will say that that lamb. Well, lamb gets absorbed into lamb, but it's a double lamb anyway. So, alhamdulillah. Alamim, Alamim. Al Mim, right, on that side. Al Mim, and Noon, and Noon. Good. And Noon, Al Ha, Al Ha. Al Wow, Al Wow. And finally. Alia, Alia, okay, good. Now we have it: sun letters, moon letters. So on this next one, you can read Arabic now, right? So what is what does this say? Anyone translate this into English for me? Mm hmm. Translated into English for me. I'm not sure. I, I don't understand. El Islam. Is that someone's name? El Islam. How would you translate Islam? How do you say? How do you say Islam in English? There's not a right answer here, by the way. There are multiple answers. Okay, okay. I mean the, the Arabic word, okay. Islam is an Arabic word. How do you say Islam in, in English? You could say submission. I mean, you could, you could say Islam too. Right? Islam is a perfectly acceptable English word. You could write that in, in a paper, in an email, and it would be acceptable English, right? Yeah. So, translate El Islam for me. There we go. Islam. Yeah. Islam. But, alhamdulillah, you can read Arabic now. You can even translate Arabic. MashaAllah. Right? Right, so this. Repeat after me. Al Islam. Al -Islam. -Islam. Islam. Notice that this right here is a Hamza. Hamza. So it has to be Al Islam, not Al Islam. Al Islam, no. Al Islam. Al Islam. Now this one. We have here. What's the first two letters we have here? Alif Lam. Right. So we have Alif Lam. Now what comes after the Lam? A Ta. Which category does the Ta go into? Sun. So we can put a shadda here, and now it becomes. Can anyone say this word for me? Close. What's the haraka? What's the vowel on the? Close. I heard atuba. That's very close. Atauba. Everyone say for me. Atauba. Atauba. Anyone heard of tauba before? Has anyone heard of tauba before? Raise your hand. Okay. Those who have, what does it what does it mean? Mm 
Right. Repentance. Repentance. At Tauba. At Tauba. Repentance. Or the repentance. Yeah. Now, this last one. Once again, we have Alif Lam. Then what comes after the Lam? Ra. So where is Ra, Sun or Moon? Sun. So how do we say this? Anyone? Ar Rahma. Ar Rahma. Say ask me. Ar Rahma. Ar Rahma. What does Ar Rahma mean? Anyone? Mercy, right? Ar Rahma. The mercy. I.e., the mercy of Allah. Or. Right, the mercy that Allah has. Okay. And then finally, these three words over to the left here in the green. There's a difference between, well, yeah, of course, there's a difference here. Oh, there's a difference between the first two. The first one. Someone tell me how to say the first one. Go ahead. Not quite. Anyone else? It's a fatha on there, not a dhamma. But what did you have? Right. Atab. Everyone say for me. Atab. Atab. Do you know what you said, Yasmin? What I heard? Not quite, not quite. What I heard, well, it almost seemed like it was that was you were saying this one. How does this one sound different from that one? The Aleph is going to be the same for each. An Aleph is an Aleph. Sorry? On a shadda on the what? Exactly. Ta, right here. Ta is sun letter. Therefore, that lamb is going to be absorbed into that. So this is not el tab. It's not el tab. This right here is up above a tab. Everyone say for me a tab. A tab. But this one. Atab, atab. Make sure there's a shadda on the ta, right? One more time. Atab, 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 atab. Right. Like za, like aza, 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 aza. Good. Now, how do we say this this guy right here? First of all, break it up. Okay, we've already done this. How do we say that one? Atab, right. Not just atab, but there's a shadda on the tab. Atab. Okay, now how do we say what's... Okay, now put them together. Good. Not fi at tab, but what do we call this symbol right here? Hamza tell wasl. Everyone say for me again. Hamza tell wasl. Hamza tell wasl. Literally, the Hamza of continuing. So if there is a vowel before it, that Hamza goes away. So it's not fi at tab, it's fit tab, fit tab. Right? Everyone say this to me. Fit tab. Fit tab. Right? Just like how Allah is, in addition to being ar Rahman, He's uh, ar Rahim. But when we say in Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, 
we have what's happening. We have Ar Rahmani. There's a vowel coming before Ar Rahim. So it's not Ar Rahmani, Ar Rahim. It's Ar Rahmani Ar Rahim. Bismillahi Ar Rahmani Ar Rahim. Right? Everyone say that for me. Ar Rahmani Ar Rahim. Ar Rahmani Ar Rahim. Right. Right. Yes. Do we put one here for the Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Any time there's a sun letter. Anytime you have an alif lam followed by a sun letter, you put a shadda on the sun letter to show that that lam is being absorbed into that into that sun letter. Good. Any more questions on this? Okay. For the <coughs> the Shamsi letters. Mm -hmm. So the lamb turned into a Shimu second, and the following one would be. Right. Right. If you, if you write it down. Right. That's another way to think about it, I suppose. If you have. have this, I mean, in pronunciation, if you were to write down directly how you'd pronounce it, it would basically be like this. Right, since there's a shadda here, that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, since you're having a shadda there, the lamb gets absorbed into the sheen, therefore there's a shadda there. So in pronunciation, you could write, a shadda is that first letter without a haraka, followed by that, that first letter with a haraka, with a vowel. Right, and so a sheen plus a sheen means a double sheen, a shems. But you'd never see anything written out like that in Arabic that's combined to be a shadda. Right. Anyway, let's get on to the new stuff, the exciting stuff. So, basically, four things to to talk about today. Uh, kind of extra symbols to go through, I suppose. Um, and these symbols, we've uh, we've pretty much seen all these symbols before. It's just. Uh, different kind of uses or combinations of things that we need to go over. So first, let me make some kind of table here. So first we have Alif Maqsura. This is the name for it. Everyone say Alif Maqsura. Right, this is how we write that part of the name in Arabic. Maqsura, Maqsura. I would say Alif Maqsura. Alif Maqsura. Okay. What this is, is, okay, this symbol only happens at the end of a word, only ever at the end of the word, and we've pretty much seen this symbol before. What it is, is, is the symbol. When a word, when the letter's connecting to to this at the end, what what does that look like? What does that look like? It looks like a yeah, but what's the difference? 
no two dots underneath, or no line, i.e. two dots connected. Right. Nothing underneath. And so, Alif Maqsura is written like this. And if, if the letter that comes before it is not, uh, doesn't connect to it, then, then we'll see it like, we'll see it like that. So it's a Ya without dots. It's a Ya without dots. But what's the name of it? Alif Maqsura. So how do you think you pronounce it? If the name is Alif Maqsura, how do you think you pronounce it? Any guesses? Uh, it's an Alif, which is written a different way. That's what's going on. It's an Alif. If you were to hear it spoken, it would sound like any other Alif. But it only happens at the end of a word and it's written like this. For a particular reason. There's a particular kind of... Um, Origin for that it, it it gets down to the origin of the word and the root and something in the in that a ya yeah is part of the root and it has been changed the vowel has changed to a to a um, uh, to an alif from an e to an a but anyway there's a reason why it's a ya yeah without dots but the main thing is that we know how to read it we know that when we see this symbol we know it's just it's an alif. So, example. Let's see if this red pen works. Nope. Have to stick to green. Alhamdulillah. One of the favorite colors of the Prophet, peace be upon him, so can't complain. Um, example. On or upon. We want to say on or upon, as in like peace and prayers on Muhammad. What do we say? Ala. Ala. Everyone say for me. Ala. 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 So it's the same. If we were to write out, actually, this is. This is a word in Arabic too. Um, this, when we write them out, they look different, um, but they're actually two. They sound exactly the same if we were to pronounce them, but they're actually two different words in, in Arabic to distinguish. But the sound is basically the same. It's ala. This one is ala, and this one is ala. Same. If we were to transliterate it, we'd write it the same too. Ala. The difference is it's it's written differently in the Arabic. Here we have an alif maqsura. Here we just have a normal alif. Same thing. Ala. Ala. Um, means to be to be high. Ala. Yes. Yep. It's an alif. It's an alif right here. So both would be transliterated as with a double A at the end. You're right. Both would be transliterated that way. So it sounds exactly the same. Another example. The word guidance. Here we have it. Guidance. How do we say guidance in Arabic? Good. Everyone. Huda. Huda. Any questions about that? About the other Maksura? Yes. Like I said, there's a reason that gets down to the origin of it, the root of the word, something like that. As you go on in Arabic, you'll, you'll start to see why. Yes? Yep. Yep. That should be the name. I believe so. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, this is often actually often common to see on the end of female names, actually. Like uh, Layla, Layla. The female name Layla. That's it right there. Layla, Oda. Right. Okay. That's one symbol, Aleph Moksura. Next. Next we have uh, Aleph Madda. Aleph Madda. Everyone say for me, Aleph Madda. Alif Madda. Okay. This, this symbol, it's a type, uh, it's actually a type of Hamza. It's a type of Hamza. What happens when we have, if we have a Hamza plus an Alif, if we want to express this somehow, normally when we write uh, when we write in a Hamza, it can sit on top of an Alif. But remember, we're, we're saying that when we see this symbol, and there's a Fatha on it, is that an Alif right there? How would we say just this right here? Uh, uh, it's not an Alif itself. It's a Hamza sitting on an Alif. So this is a Hamza with a Fatha. It's not a, uh, there's no alif there. Ah, uh, it's just a fatha right now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So if we want to express when there is actually an alif there, hamza plus an alif, this is the symbol that we use. It's an alif with a squiggly over it like that. That's the alif manda. Mm-hmm. Right there. So, example. Um, depression in Arabic. Depression is Right there, right there. So, if we were to transliterate this out, first of all, what's the what's the first symbol that we have? It's a kaf. Then, what's on the kaf? A fatha. And then, what's the next symbol? Alif madda comes after the kaf. So the alif madda is it's a it's a Hamza plus an Alif. Hamza plus an Alif. And then what comes after the Alif Madda? Ba. And what's on the Ba? Fatha. And then finally, Tama Marbuta. Right, which since there's no vowel on that, we pronounce it like a ha, ha, since we haven't put a vowel on that. Otherwise, it would be pronounced like a, like a tap. Right, so this is it right here. How do we say this? Good, everyone. Ka'aba. 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 Right. So this right here is Hamza plus Alif. If, how do we say how would we say this right there? Not quite. What does this mean? How is this different from that? Do 
Just a what? Just an ah, right? This is just a fatha. The hamza is on the seat of an alif, but it's it's just a fatha. The alif is a seat for the hamza, but it's not really an alif there. Okay, so this would be kaaba, kaaba. Everyone say for me, kaaba, kaaba. Once we put, you know, or we could, you know, we could put, could put a sukun over there, which would be kaaba, kaaba. Remember, if you see a hamza on the seat of an alif, it doesn't mean there's an alif there. It means there's a hamza there. And so, if you see that there's a sukun on that hamza sitting on the top of an alif, it means that there's nothing coming after that. So this would be ka'bah. Notice that's, that's not the place that we worship. Uh, not the place that we worship. Oh, the, the direction of worship, that's the apostrophe is going the other way. <laughs> In uh, transliteration, this would be the Kaaba. Kaaba, it's an Ain. It's in Mecca. So, this is not how we say the Kaaba, the house of, of Allah, but Kaaba. 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 That's right there. Right. But if we were to put the mud symbol over it, it becomes. How do we say that again? Kaaba. Everyone again. Kaaba. Ka'aba. If we were just a hamza over there, Ka'aba. Ka'aba. Good. And this mud, if we want to write mud in Arabic, that's how it's written, right? Mud. Mud. With a fatha over the meme and a sukun over the dab. But I've been told this is kind of how it comes from. See this? See this right here? Mad. If we were to write out the word mad. Now look at this. You kind of see that? Kind of. I've been told that's, that's kind of how, where it comes from. That symbol. It's not just a squiggly line, but it has actually... There's a reason. Right. Now... What did I say about when, when we have this? Uh, yeah, I'll put it here. Actually. We have this. Is that an alif? What is that? That's a hamza. Okay. Since you're all good students, intelligent students, now tell me, apply that knowledge, think outside of the box, extrapolate, and tell me what that is right there. Good. This is also a Hamza. That's a Hamza too. Is it a wow? No. It's a Hamza on the seat of a wow. Yes. What about that? What's that? Good. <laughs> You're learning. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. This is also a Hamza. Hamza on the seat of a ya. Yeah. Only when it's, when it's written on the seat of a ya, yeah, you don't find uh, the two dots under it. For some reason. Although it's the seat of a ya. Yeah. So these can all happen in the middle of a word, at the end of a word. Remember, at the beginning of a word, at the beginning of a word, you will only see, no matter what the vowel is, no matter what that short vowel is on the Hamza, you will only ever see it on the seat of an alif at the beginning of a word. Al-Islam, Al-Islam, even though it's a kasra, i, we still see it written like this, only the, the um, Hamza goes below the alif. Al-Islam, or if it's a dhamma too. Al-Um, Al-Um, it's still the seat of an alif, but if it's in the middle of a word or at the end, you can see the Hamza on the seat of these different vowels. Now, there's a reason for which kind of seat Hamza it goes on. That gets complicated. We're not going to go into that for now. For now, just be able to see that when, when you see this, you know it's a trick. Right? 
you see the wow, you see the alif, you see the ya without dots written there, and you're like, it's a trick. It's a hamza. It's a hamza. So, um, right, right. All it means is that, is that there's a hamza there. So, for example, something that um, um, glass in Arabic is, how do we say this? Go ahead. Okay. Everyone say for me. Cats. 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 Now, glasses. The plural of uh, cats is. Close, close. What's the first vowel? Here we go. Kuus. Kuus. Yeah. No, 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 no. The only time you would see you would see a hamza below something is below the alif in the beginning of a word. You'd never see it below an alif in, in the middle of a word or at the end, and you'd never see it, um, um, and you'd, you'd never see, I mean, there might be some kind of stylistic uh, ways in which you might see it, but, but pretty much, no, the standard way, and you'd never see it below a wa or below a, a yeah, yeah, right. And so, this has to do with the, Hamza, all of this, all of this is just Hamza. So, as uh, as I've heard some teachers do it. Okay, right here. What's my name right now? Ustad. Ustad, what? Okay, my name right here is Ustad Adrian. Now. Now it's my name. What's it? Yeah, okay, my name's Ustad Adrian, but, but I'm, I'm sitting on the member. No, no, no. No, I'm not getting that comfortable. No, no. Ustad Adrian. My name's still Ustad Adrian. Right? What about, what about when I'm sitting up at the, at the top step? What's my name now? Uh, that's a hamza, it's a trick. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't matter what seat I'm on. My name is still Ustad Adrian, right? That's the point, okay? Okay? It doesn't matter what seat the hamza is on, it's still a hamza. And it's just a hamza. There's a reason it has a particular seat, but that'll come later, yes. Okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You can't just put it on any seat you feel like, right? You, uh, if there's a hamza in a word, typically you have to kind of memorize the, the, the word itself. And then sometimes you'll see that the hamza is just on the line anyway, at the end or in the middle of a word. It can be just on the line. But basically, just know that when you see it, it's a hamza. President in Arabic. President. How we say? How do we say president in Arabic? Good. Rais. Everyone say for me. Rais. 
رئيس رئيس see so here the Hamza is on the seat of a yeah but that yeah doesn't have dot when the Hamza is on the seat of a yeah it doesn't have dots just like here a long yeah but no dots underneath So it almost looks like Ham Hamza is sitting on the seat of a what? Of an other from a yeah. Almost. Now, finally. One final symbol for today. It's called the dagger Aleph. Dagger Aleph. In Arabic, uh, Aleph al Khanjariya. Khanjariya. Means the same thing. Dagger Aleph. <coughs> this, in Arabic, when you want to say this, this, it's. Not just hada, hada, but hada, hada. So note what's going on. I'm not, even though it's a long A, even though there's an alif in there, the alif is not written as a letter. The alif is written as a dagger alif. What that means is that the alif is not a special letter in itself, it's become a vowel. It's become an extra vowel that, that's, that's written around, around the letters, somehow. What this means, once again, just like the Alif Maqsura, it's written differently but pronounced the same. When you see this, you know there's an Alif there, only it's not written as a letter with the other letters. Hada. Everyone say this with me. Hada. Hada. What's an important way, now this is, this is where it gets exciting too, an important way, uh, important word in which this occurs. What's that right there? Allah. Allah, right? Not Allah, Allah, as some English speakers would like us to believe. Allah, you worship Allah? No, <laughs> worship Allah. Everyone say for me again, my favorite word, Allah. 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 There we have it. Putting all this together, Allah. First, we have Alif Lam, and the, the first symbol in Allah is a um, is a Hamza al Wasl. It's Alif Lam, and then that Lam after the Lam is a, another Lam, and so those get combined to have a Shadda. Now, Allah, Ah. There's an alif in that, but it's never written. It's not written. Allah. Allah. It's a dagger alif. Ending with a, what's the final symbol? Ha. Not a tamabuta, because there are no dots over it. Allah is not feminine. Although, you know, I have heard, I have heard it said that, that in the, there's the ha there, which almost looks like a tamabuta, which is an indication that, you know, Allah is... I mean, in, conceptually, Allah is, is beyond gender. He, you know, he, he doesn't have a gender. But, but we have to describe him in some way, and therefore we use, in English, in Arabic, we use a, uh, a masculine pronoun. So Allah is masculine in, you know, grammatically, but not masculine in conceptually, in terms of when thinking about, about him, even though we say him. 
it gets complicated when we try to express these things in our own language. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, good question. Good question. Okay. Here we get. Here we're getting to some exciting stuff. Okay. What's the name of this letter right here, or this one? Lam. Lam. Then why don't we say Allah, Allah, Allah? Do we ever hear that in Allah's name? Allah, Allah. Do you ever hear that when we're saying Allah's name somewhere? Do we hear that? Allah, Allah. How do we say thanks be to God? Alhamdulillah. How do we say in the name of God? Bismillah, not Bismillah. No. Bismillah. Okay, what's going on is that Lamb in itself, non emphatic. We say Lamb, we don't say Lam. Lamb, Lamb. Except Lamb is, is non emphatic, except in one word, and in that one word, only in well, in, uh, according to certain circumstances, right? That one word is Allah. Allah. This word itself, because, because Allah is just, I mean, He's... It's beyond everything, right? So for one, the vowel in His name is, is, a, is a deeper, it's a fuller vowel. That we have Allah, and so unlike lamb in any other places, this lamb is emphatic. This lamb is is emphatic in this case, so that the alif after it is going to be ah. Oh. Everyone say that for me again. Allah, Allah. Allah. Okay. The so so it's an ah sound after that lamb, except. Except when we have a kasra or a ya before that. So bismi, bismillah, bismillah. For certain linguistic reasons, when we have a kasra coming before Allah's name, because Allah's name starts with a hamzat al wasl. So this this sound, the ah uh, ah, uh, in Allah, it's going to go away when there's, a, when there's a vowel before it. And if that vowel before it is i, i.e. kasra or ya, i or i, then the, the lamb is no longer going to be emphatic. And the a goes to a. Uh, hence we say, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Alhamdulillah. Okay. And then here we have a shahada too. And this will be this will be what I end on. Inshallah, we'll have a, a few minutes for um, to go over some examples and things. And what a beautiful thing to end on. First, what's this first first word? We just go word by word. What's this first the word? La. Remember, lam alif written like this. La. La. Everyone say for me. La. La. 
And then what's this one? Right, Hamza de Kasha over what's the what's the whole word? Ilaha. Everyone say for me, Ilaha. Ilaha. Right, the vowel in the middle, yes, it's an alif, but it's an daga alif. It's a daga alif. It's not written out on the page. Or along, it's not written out along with the letters on the line. It's an extra, it's a vowel marking. La ilaha. What's the third word? Illa, illa. Right? It's not going to be illa because the lamb is not emphatic. There's only one case in which it's emphatic. La ilaha illa, illa. And then the final word? Allah. So when we combine these last two words, this is a hamzat al wasl. So it's not going to be illa Allah, illa Allah. No? How do we put them together? Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Everyone say for me, Illa Allah. Right, the combination of the words Illa. Everyone after me, Illa. Illa. And then Allah. Allah. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. So, La. Everyone after me. La. Ilaha. Illa. Allah. La ilaha. Illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. There we have it. Our entire face. Now we can read it in Arabic. And inshallah get a little closer to realizing what it really means to be people of la ilaha illa Allah. May Allah grant us the tawfiq to achieve that and realize that in, in our lifetime. Any questions about that? About what I wrote up on the board. I mean, if you have questions about La ilaha illallah, you might have to go to a shaykh. <laughs> but no, I mean, or oh, oh not. SubhanAllah, our faith is so simple. And that's all it is. It's all Islam is La ilaha illallah. We say the second part of the shahada, Muhammad Rasulullah, because the second part of the shahada is in reality, it's actually the same thing as the first, la ilaha illallah. If we understood what la ilaha illallah meant, we'd understand that also Muhammad Rasulullah. Because Muhammad Rasulullah is just a, another manifestation of la ilaha illallah. Anyway, that's something else to get into. But, la ilaha illallah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أزيجو start with the intention from Imam Al Haddad يا فتاح يا عنيم افتح لنا فتحا قريبا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نويت التعلم والتعليم 
والتذكرة والتذكيرة والنفعة والانتفاعة والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله والسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير وابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى O opener, O all-knowing one, grant us an opening soon in the name of Allah, the all-merciful, the compassionate. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and blessings and peace upon our master Muhammad, his family, and his companions. I intend to study and teach, to remember and remind, to profit and bring profit, to benefit and bring benefit, to encourage holding fast to the book of Allah and the way of his messenger, to call to guidance, to direct towards good, and to aim for the countenance of Allah and his pleasure, his nearness and his reward, exalted be he. Before we start, a few, uh, a few kind of, well, housekeeping items, I suppose, is, is the general term. In looking at the, uh, at the syllabus, I was, uh, I was thinking about what to do in the next few weeks because we have a bit more material to cover now, uh, today, and then it's uh, on the schedule is, is four weeks of, of review of our material. One of the reasons I put those four weeks of review and practice is because I didn't actually think I would get through the alphabet as quickly as I wanted to, and yet, subhanAllah, it happened. <laughs> so that was partly to give myself some, some leeway, and so we weren't, uh, I didn't have to extend class after, after those weeks, but, but it did happen, alhamdulillah. Um, and uh, another reason was just to, uh, to allow time there to apply all this knowledge, apply everything that we go over, because often we go over this material uh, and then kind of left to ourselves to put it all together. And I want to make sure uh, as much as possible uh, that, that I can help all of you by putting everything together. And um, so I was thinking about what to do in the next few weeks and uh, I actually kind of came to the conclusion that, well, it might be best not to go the, the full four or five weeks. And so, since, since this is something that I, I committed to you, that we would be doing this, I, I, I want to get your input on this as well. Um, the, the, I, have, I have an idea of that we, we finish up just a, a few things today. Then for the, the next session, we, we go over um, Surat Al-Fatiha. Uh, and everything that's said, uh, try to get through everything that's, that's said in the Salah, in all the different positions, M make sure we're pronouncing, uh, pronouncing things correctly, uh, and looking at the Arabic there. Uh, so that would be next week. Then the week after that, so in two weeks' time, um, kind of working collectively and individually on whatever you want to work on personally, if there are surahs or, or things that you would like to work on, then we can work through that. Uh, and then uh, any, any questions about any of the material and stuff and, and some, uh, some review. Uh, and then in three weeks time, having the assessment there. So basically moving the assessment up two weeks, taking, to week, taking two weeks out of, uh, of the schedule. So we finish two weeks earlier. How does everyone feel about that? Does anybody want, want the extra weeks to, to keep going? What are you thinking? I'm seeing lots of nods. I don't really know what the nods are. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not so well on the assessment that we possibly have a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah, yeah. That's always been an option, yeah. I mean, 
can take the assessment as many times as you want. You just you, you just have to coordinate with me as to um, as to when and how. You see? Okay, wait, sorry, would we? Like, would we have the the Well, typically, what, what I did last, last term was uh, during that, that period that was for the assessment, I went through the assessment, and um, by, the, uh, by the end of the, uh, of the course, you know, the course started with about 20 people, by the end of the course, there were um, there were four people there. And three of those people are the TAs who you who you've seen around. Um, um, Tanaya excuses herself. She she apologizes. She couldn't be be with us today. Um, she had something come up. Um, and so, uh, but when I did that assessment, you know, it was just four people. And so we did the assessment, and then um, I, uh, I I went over the assessment individually with uh, with with each person if they didn't get something quite correct and we talked about it right then in, in that setting. And so would, would that be would that be adequate for you as well? Okay. okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There would definitely be, be feedback on that. Yeah. I'm not just going to take the assessment and be like, oh, no. Yeah. Any other comments or questions or anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I kind of I, I want to set a time to to do the assessment just to have have that in mind, but I I I, I I've always said from the beginning that if if you want to take the assessment at another time, you can you just have to kind of schedule it privately with me, um, and so if 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 that's what you want, then fine. Would would there be any interest in and leaving two weeks in between the last day of review and, and the assessment to give people time to study or something? Or should we just do the assessment the next week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. So we'll go with that, in, inshallah. The, I'll, I'll email all this, all this out too, uh, and the details. Make sure everyone else who's, who's not here right now, who's still following the course, um, that they have it too. Um, so we'll plan on finishing up some of these things. <coughs> then next week, um, next week the homework will pretty much be just to take a close look at, at Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, then we'll go through that in class next time, inshallah, uh, and about things things uh, that are typically said during during Salah uh, and then the week after that any questions the um, that you have maybe uh, I'll bring up a few other points that kind of maybe brushed over throughout the course make sure we understand them um, and and then anything that you want to go through personally individually uh, and then assessment after that so having the assessment on the 13th of May instead of the 27th as is on the syllabus. Okay. So the amount of material that we have to cover today, like I said before, it's just, it's just a few minor points. Uh, if I wanted to, I could pretty much cover it all in five minutes, pretty much. Um, and so, I want to just, well, for one thing, allow this, which is all common vicar up on the board, allow this to kind of take us down a direction and, and talk about things using, using uh, these bits of vicar. But also, I wanted to, to start with having a conversation about about what comes next. 
and about about knowledge in general. You know, often we go through experiences in life and and we come out on the other end of the, uh, of these experiences thinking, well, you know, I wish I had known this when I started out. I wish someone had told me this or helped me with this thing. Right? The the oft repeated uh, kind of example of uh, I wish I knew this as, as a freshman or, or whoever that says like yeah or like there are always things that when we come out with experience we think oh I could have told myself I myself might have been able to if only I had the chance to tell myself at the beginning <laughs> you know all, all these things I, I would have had a more positive experience so I thought it might be beneficial um, as someone who's who Allah has blessed with uh, with with knowledge and on this path through Arabic uh, and for for several years um, to kind of give a few pointers uh, about the um, uh, about seeking knowledge uh, and about these kind of things. And inshallah, there'll, there'll be some benefit. Just to begin with, I don't make any presumption about about my own standing versus, versus your standing. Many of you may be uh, accomplished having studied in, in other different areas, but you're just uh, lacking in Arabic maybe, and that's why you came here. Uh, and, and much of this is also to kind of solidify myself to, in a sense, almost like talking to myself, <laughs> reminding myself of, of things too, because we, we all can use reminders in this regard. So a few, a few pointers to to those of you who, who are thinking about pursuing knowledge and, and going on and everything. Um, first of all, what are some of the points of, of pursuing knowledge? Knowledge in general. Why would we want to? Why would we want to do that? Thoughts on that? You look like you had something to say. So. For career or for a particular subject. Okay, good. Any other thoughts? Why why pursue knowledge? Okay, let's build up let's build off that point then. Seeking knowledge for career or for some specific objective like that. Specific material objective. Every every knowledge that we seek it has a reason, like there's a reason that, that we're pursuing it, there should be a specific reason, otherwise we wouldn't, I mean, seeking knowledge isn't easy. So there's something that, that drives us. So what is the best thing that, that could possibly drive us? Allah. Allah. Alright, good. <laughs> I thought I might have to, you know, pull it out a bit here and there, but you said it well. Allah, the reason that drives us. What is the best knowledge worth knowing? No, you're doing so well. You're doing so well, yes, man. You just say that same answer again. <laughs> what is the best knowledge worth pursuing? Knowledge of? Allah. Allah, there we go. <laughs> knowledge of Quran, yes. Knowledge of Islam, yes. In so far that they are knowledge of Allah. Because knowledge of Islam and knowledge of Quran can lead to knowledge of Allah. But too often, especially these days, we get so consumed by everything else that it is so... When we're trying to aim ourselves towards the thing that we want, it's so easy to stop at certain things along the way, certain things that should be tools the tools then become the object of our, of our desire. That there are many people out here in this world, many, many, many Muslims, I'm talking from personal experience too, may, uh, may Allah continue to improve our state, but many Muslims out there who are worshipping, not Allah, they're worshipping Islam. It is possible to worship Islam. It is possible to worship the Qur'an. 
is possible for anything that Allah has put in this world in order to help us get to Him, it is possible for that thing to be a veil to Him ultimately. If that is our goal. If our goal is to read the Qur'an, we can read the Qur'an, but if in that whole equation, if Allah doesn't come into it, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. And so this is one, number one common pitfall, not, you know, not number one in, in its gravity of, of what it can do to us. Because, because it, can, it can do something for us on our path to knowledge and it can do something for, for how we understand others who have knowledge as well. In a sense of we, can, we have to understand teachers as tools to bring us closer to Allah, to our objective. Too often, we, too often they, they can become veils for us too. And too often the knowledge itself can become a veil to the knowledge of Allah as well. And but there's a reason that, that Islam has, has a set structure. There's a reason that the, the Arabic has a grammar and has a structure. But when, when the companions were, were learning the, their knowledge from Rasulullah wasalam, what was fiqh to them? What was fiqh? them. Anyone know what that, what that word meant to them? Fiqh. Yeah. Means law. In the common usage it means law. What, is, what does fiqh mean? Fiqh. This right here. Fa Qa Ha Quran talks about those who have fiqh and the dina yafqahun. What does that mean? Does that mean they have knowledge of of, of law? Does that mean they've, they've studied the the rules of tahara and they've studied the rules of of, of salah and they've studied the rules of this and they can tell you what's written in that book and that book. Is that what well, is that Alladina Yafahun? Close, close. One of the one of the basic understandings of, of fiqh is uh, one of the basic meanings of fiqh is understanding. Understanding. Having clear understanding. Fiqh. Fiqh is understanding. So so fiqh in the time of the Sahaba, Allahu anhum ajma'in, may Allah be pleased with them, didn't didn't mean a system of rules. Fiqh meant understanding, and this is what Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. This is what the Messenger of Allah, of Allah taught them. He taught the Sahaba understanding. He didn't he didn't go through a list of rules saying, okay. When this happens, you do this. When this happens, you do that. It came. We develop. Yes, we developed those those rules from his speech. His speech was replete with rules, but also replete with all kinds of other guidance too that we often forget. What about Sharia? What was Sharia in the time of the Sahaba? Anyone know? Yeah, go ahead. Right, they followed what the messenger said. Okay, good. The word Sharia. Has anyone heard what what Sharia is? Brother Musa. Sharia is the way. Follow the right the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Like know you in the best of ways that you know what he's doing and saying. Right. That's good. That's good. It's it's a way. 
literally, and some of the scholars talk, talk about the Sharia specifically means a, a, a way, a path to water, a path to a watering hole, right? But subhanAllah, you just, you look at that, you look at that and you think, how many times in our lives has our goal been Sharia? I want to establish Sharia in my life. I want to be praying in the best way. I want to be um, wearing the best kind of clothes in the best way. I want to do this. Yes, that's all good. That is all good. But as long as that's hollow and that's the only thing that's there, it's pointless. It's pointless. And we look at, at that term and what Sharia means to us today. And specifically, what what other people think Sharia means. Often in, in this country, we you know we get so so indignant when when states in in the in the U.S. Uh, making sure laws against against Sharia law, and we say you know they don't understand what Sharia law is. Well, one of the one of the points that uh, scholars of uh, of purification and of the heart science talked about and so they, they talked about ways that you can figure out ways that you can learn about yourself ways that you can learn about um, about the defects of yourself and how to improve one of the ways is by listening to what your enemies say about you that's how you can learn about yourself too often we hear we hear what our enemies are saying and we say oh there are enemies they don't know anything when really they often have a very clear perspective those people who don't understand us and have a, 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 an agenda against us. So those in this country who have an agenda against Muslims as, as, they, as they see them are against Sharia law. And we say, well, you don't understand what Sharia is. Do we really understand what, what Sharia is? Is Sharia a path to us? Is it a path to our spiritual water or, or, or is it a, an objective that we make you know, I don't I don't want to push so um, you know I don't want to shatter anything or uh, you know don't get me wrong like I've said before Shri is good <laughs> learning how to pray well is good learning how to dress well and eat well and make do proper tahara have proper purification will do any, everything that's all good but, but often we just, we just lose sight of the essential. And so, common pitfall in knowledge is losing sight of the essential and, and, and having aspirations be mastery of some specific thing for that specific thing. And what that engenders, I mean, first of all, uh, it should be enough that it brings about distracting us from the real point of everything, which is Allah, everything, Okay, that's enough. But also, um, what it can also engender is is a uh, it can also engender failure. What happens when when we don't do well on that path to get a specific type of knowledge? There, there. Are, well, all of you are, are here because you, you don't know something about, about Arabic. You are here to, to learn something about Arabic. All of you have your particular issues that you're going to have difficulties with. Uh, you'll learn some things quickly as you go on in Arabic or whatever you study. There are some things that will be hindrances for you and will take a long time for you to get past. Some of you have particular letters that you're really having trouble with and often doesn't seem like uh, the, all that you practice, it doesn't seem like you're getting better with those letters, or it doesn't seem like you're improving and putting everything together, putting all that knowledge together. For some of you, that will never happen. There are people, there, Allah has created people who cannot pronounce the scene. Even one of the letters that, that we have in English, there are people who just cannot pronounce a scene. And so if their objective is to be able to pronounce Arabic well and learn Arabic, they're going to be failures. They're going to be failures in that. But if their objective is Allah, then when they succeed, it brings them closer to Allah because it allows them to understand things and, and access sources that, that bring them closer to Allah. When they fail, 
What happens then? You still get closer to Allah. Perhaps even more when you fail in a certain thing, perhaps you get even closer to Allah than when you succeed. Because, because when that happens, we realize how much we're in need of Allah and how much we don't know anything and how much we, He provides us with every single thing that we need if only we were to realize it. And we realize what the point is, that the point isn't me learning how to pronounce the scene correctly. The point is me understanding how my struggle to, to learn the scene is going to bring me closer to Allah and how if that struggle doesn't work out exactly as I wanted it to, it's going to bring me closer to Allah regardless. Because every time we see a defect in ourself, that's, that's a window That's a little crack in the walls that we put up around ourselves. That's a crack to which light can come. When we see that we can't, we can't rely on ourselves anymore, we can only rely on Allah. And the only thing to do is to return to Allah. Therefore, in a path of knowledge, every success, when we have the right orientation, that's why, that's why we start every day with, uh, with, with the intentions. Because as long as that intention is there, as long as the intention is there, and as long as the beginning is for Allah, and the end is for Allah, and really what we mean by that is that we realize that the beginning is for Allah and that the end is for Allah, because the beginning and the end is for Allah regardless of what we're doing. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Verily, we are from Allah, we belong to Allah, Lillahi, we belong to Allah and we are returning to Him every moment of our lives. So, uh, if, if we're not putting Allah in the beginning and the end, we're just in denial of what's actually going on anyway. But in a path to knowledge, as long as those, those things, as long as we allow those to be set in their proper place, then the whole thing is for, is for Allah and the whole thing is, is in its proper place. So that's one common pitfall. That's the main thing, as I said. Other common pitfalls too is, is natural things that, that you'll see with... Um, I mean, you, you could talk about anywhere. Like in, if, if you go to college, they're not going to talk about, about that, that thing we just... We just talked about <laughs> the point being Allah. <laughs> SubhanAllah. We have so many people of knowledge these days, but SubhanAllah. We just, often as I said, the, this pursuit of knowledge just brings us even farther from Allah um, than, than when we started. So as uh, Imam Abdul Latif mentioned in, uh, in the class he had just a few hours ago today, so often when, when, often when we increase in knowledge, what we're really doing is increasing in, in a vocabulary to, to speak about the, about the faults that we already had in our mind. Often, often we, see this, we see this pattern that when there are people in the community, or even ourselves, you know, I can tell you from personal experience, I've seen it myself, that I, I go and I learn all the rules of wudu. What that allows me to do is, is tell myself how everyone else around me is doing wudu wrong. I can say it specifically. I, 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 and before I study, I'm in a state of thinking, you know, I don't think everyone else is doing wudu right. I'm going to learn how to do my wudu right. And then I do learn how to do my wudu right. And therefore, I can say specifically why everyone else is doing that wudu wrong. That's often a paradigm that you see in, in, in the pursuit of knowledge. Anyway, that's a side note. Other, other considerations is, uh, as well, just to, just to keep in mind that, that diligence is, is, is very important. And that um, we, can, we can become too dependent on, on teachers too. Um, and so, uh, that's why I, it's, it's exciting uh, for me to see in, in two weeks, inshallah, um, what you will bring 
to, to, to the class and to me and say, this is, this is what I, I want to know about, this is what I want to learn. Um, often when we're not given direct things to, to do, we, um, you know, we don't know what to do with ourselves. Um, but that's really where a lot of growth happens when, when we're creating work for ourselves too, not just the work that others place upon us. Uh, it's it uh, reminds me of the story of Surat al-Baqarah. Um, why is Surat al-Baqarah called Surat al-Baqarah? I don't remember that the story of al-Baqarah. First of all, what does al-Baqarah mean? The cow, right? Al-Baqarah, the cow. So what's the what's the story of al-Baqarah? Anyone? Even if you just remember a few details. Okay. I started worshipping the calf. That's, I mean, it's about the same people, right? Both, both those stories, both the story of Al-Baqarah and of uh, the, the calf, Al-Ajil, uh, is... Um, um, they, they both have to do with, with Bani Israel, with the Israelites, the tribe of Israel. Uh, but they're slightly different stories. Al-Baqarah, the story of Al-Baqarah is not when, when they worship the cow. Anyone, anyone know? Exactly. What happens when, when they're called to sacrifice? Um, they kept asking questions like the color, the size, the Exactly, exactly. This happened. Rabbuna, our Lord Allah tells us in the Quran about what happened to Bani Israel when, when Musa said you have to you have to sacrifice a cow. Right. They said, Well what? <laughs> which which one? Right. What color is it? Which one? Okay, now that we know the color, well describe it some more. Okay, now you've described it some more. Go back to your Lord and, and, and say exactly specifically which one it is until they get they have this back and forth, back and forth, until they finally, it's pinpointed the exact cow that they need to slaughter. And they're like, okay, finally, now we know. Now that they don't have to do anything and use their own kind of reasoning and just go with what they were told to begin with, that's when they're finally comfortable slaughtering the cow. And it says in the Quran that they slaughtered the cow, but they almost, they almost didn't do it. You know, they didn't do it with their full, with their full hearts. That's often a, a, a metaphor that we get stuck into in the pursuit of knowledge. The, uh, Allah, Allah tells us in the Quran, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Allah tells us, know that there is no لا إله إلا الله. Know that there is no God but Allah. And oftentimes we're just sitting back and saying, well, psh, I don't know how to get there. Okay, I suppose like maybe learning some Arabic would bring me closer to Allah's word. So I'll start there. I know I should I should be learning Arabic. I don't really know how though, so I'll just wait for my teacher to tell me exactly how to, to get in this path. We need we need a teacher, um, but but we also need a lot of initiative and diligence on on our part. So often, often teachers. Specific, uh, in, in any discipline, but specifically Arabic, get asked, what is the best book for me to study? Um, what is the best book for me to study Arabic? Uh, one of the best answers I heard to this, to this question was, uh, was related to me from Imam Zaid. Do you know what he said? Any guesses? What the best, what the best book for you to study Arabic by is? Sorry, Quran. Uh, could you open up a Quran and, and just learn and learn Arabic from the Quran, or would you kind of need need some help in the maybe like some kind of textbook or something, a dictionary? Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Good. Good answer. Good try. Good try. The Quran. Yes. I mean, the Quran should be vital to it. That should be a central point of your pursuit of Arabic. Um, but you're not going to be able to really learn Arabic through the Quran. You're going to need something to help you, some reference guide or something. Any other ideas? Uh, 
I heard that Imam Zaid said the best book for you to study Arabic by is the one that you finish. The one that you read from cover to cover. There are many ways to different knowledges. There are many ways to knowledge of Allah. Many, many different ways. And one of the common ways in which we get stuck is by taking a certain path and then getting distracted by the other paths that are around us. A path is not Allah. It is bringing you to Allah, but it is not Allah. Therefore, that path is going to be imperfect. And there are going to be strengths and weaknesses of other paths. And so, if I'm heading... If... If I'm heading, heading to... Um, I don't know, North Berkeley, from here. And I decide that I'm going to take Martin Luther King Boulevard to North Berkeley. It's going uh, all the way up. It, do, it does go all the way up, pretty much to North Berkeley, right? Tells you how much I drive around here. Anyway, so I take, I'm going to take MLK to North Berkeley. At a side street, when, when I come to an intersection, I might see that there are other cars uh, down a few blocks away. Maybe I can see all the way to a few blocks down, down to Telegraph or, or down to Shattuck or something. Parallel roads. Right? And I can see there are other cars there going in the same direction. They're heading to North Berkeley too. It's in this metaphor of the spiritual path or a path to knowledge, it's very easy for me to go see those other cars on that other path say, hey, they're heading to North Berkeley too, and their street isn't, you know, isn't filled with so, so much traffic, it looks like. And you know, they got some good stores along the way that, that might be nice driving near. Oh, I'm going to go over there. Right? Uh, so now we're on Telegraph. Uh, now we look over and there's, there's Shattuck. I'm like, oh, that's actually a really nice drive. There's some grass there uh, along the side of the street. And, you know, it's not so filled with crazy people like Telegraph is. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go over to Shattuck. And then we get to Shattuck and on and on and on. Often when, when, when we take paths to Allah or on any pursuit of knowledge, um, we, we see the defects of our own path. And that means uh, that, that takes us away from, from taking that path. Yes, there might be hierarchies in which one book or, or one uh, teacher or one system is better than another. But in general, the best book to learn anything is the one that you finish or read from cover to cover. Because you're not only going to learn that discipline through that book as well. You're going to learn some humility there. Um, and you're going to realize that, that that path is imperfect and therefore you don't rely on the book or on the teacher, you rely on Allah and as long as you're relying on Allah, He'll take you, he'll take you to Him. And so that's also a common, a common pitfall. Thinking, oh, you know, this isn't quite working out excellently, I'm going to try this. Oh, this isn't quite working out excellently, I'm going to try this. Oh, I'm going to try this one. Going back and forth, street to street, street to street, street to street. And we're not going in the direction we need, we need to be going in. That's another common pitfall. And then finally, um, sometimes we, we also lose our humility and we think we can do everything ourselves too. Okay, wow, now that, now that I know the alphabet, like I'm set. I can just pick up a grammar book and I've got it, you know? I got the alphabet down. Yeah, I mean... Uh, that kind of knowledge couldn't be transmitted in a book because it's about pronouncing and uh, uh, you know, reading certain things. I needed someone to help me. But now that I've gotten that down, now you know, I, can, I, can, I can do this on my own. That's another pitfall too. If we look at our history, the history of our Ummah, the history of our revelation, we as Muslims, are a community of knowledge, but we are not a community of books. And it is very easy for us to forget that. 
that a lot of us get into the mode of thinking, okay, if I read Quran, then I read Sahih Bukhari, then I read Sahih Muslim, then I read this, then I read that, and that's my, that's my path to, to Allah. But what was the best generation of our Ummah, indeed of this world? What was the best generation? What are they n known as? What's their name? The Sahaba, right, the Sahaba. What, the, what does Sahaba mean? Companions, right. The Sahaba were who they were because of their companionship, not because they studied a specific thing or got a specific knowledge. If Allah wanted, if, if the book was the point, if the Quran in between two covers is the point, Allah could have just sent it down. It could have just dropped out of the sky. And people started reading, it, would start reading it, and then, think, and then they'd, they'd start fixing their lives, and that would be that. But, the shahada is not, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna al-Qur'ana kitabullah. The shahada is not, I testify that there is no God but Allah, and that the Qur'an is the book of Allah. What's the shahada? Testify that Muhammad is the Prophet of Allah. That's the key, that's what we need. We need Allah, then we need the Prophet of Allah. We need Allah, and we need the teacher to bring us there. Someone who already realizes something and therefore can help us realize something for ourselves too. In any area of life, this works. This is, this is one of the hidden wisdoms in which, uh, you know, we, we think we've, we've, we've advanced so much because now we have, uh, we have so much knowledge, alhamdulillah, and we have the system of, of harakat. And uh, do you remember me telling you at the, at the beginning of the course that Arabic, as it was originally written, was without vowels and even without dots? This came later, after, after the, the Qur'an was, was spreading, people started making mistakes. The scholars realized, they said, okay, some of them at least, said people are starting to make mistakes, we need to start coming up with a system that will preserve this knowledge. Because the Sahaba and those knowledgeable people uh, among them or who learnt from them, who know the Qur'an, they're starting to die out and we're worried that this knowledge is going to be lost. The dots and the vowels and the whole writing system even is not the point. The point is what happens in here and everything else is just there to preserve that and to prop it up a bit. We forget that too. The point is Allah and everything else, Sharia, prayer, wudu, Quran, that's all to maintain that and to keep us going on that. And so, and so if someone wanted to learn, learn the, the Qur'an in the early generations, the whole system was there whereby if someone had basically taught themselves the Qur'an, any other Muslim would be able to tell that instantly. Because if someone were to take the book of the Qur'an and learn it from that, they'd have all kinds of mistakes in terms of, because they wouldn't have the dots, they wouldn't have the vowels. And so they wouldn't, they wouldn't even know how to pronounce the words, let alone get the meanings of it. And the whole system was that you needed a teacher to bring you through the text. And now that we've built up more systems uh, and all these different ways of codifying our religion, all these different ways of, of, of preserving things, we've lost track of what exactly it is that we're supposed to preserve. And therefore, in everything, it's essential that, that we, we have a teacher who can help us down the path and, and help us get out of ourselves, basically. You know, if, if, if I'm really fat, 
and I have an eating problem. I'm not going to be able to, the, the most, most effective way, most sure way of, of me helping myself is to going to a trainer or someone with experience and saying, what do I do with my diet? What do I do with my exercise? Help me along with this. <clears throat> and the best trainer is, yes, the best trainer is the one who will ultimately help you then or ultimately help me be able to be independent with myself. Yeah, that's true. But, in the beginning, and all along that path, until I reach my goal, I'm going to need that trainer to, to help me do these things. Otherwise, I'll just, I'm the one who got myself in this mess. So, I'm not going to be able to bring myself out of that. We often forget that. We think, I know exactly what to do with my deen. I don't need a sheikh or a teacher or anything like this. I know how to purify my heart. I know how to do this. But we forget that we're the ones who got ourselves in this mess to begin with. So we're not the ones who can bring us out. We're not. As also, as Imam Abdul Latif mentioned this uh, just a few hours ago, we're all we're all dirty rags, and and too much of the time we think that that we can clean ourselves by just taking ourselves, if by taking ourselves and rubbing ourselves against ourselves, right? A dirty rag cannot clean itself. If you want to clean a dirty rag, you don't clean the dirty rag by taking it and rubbing it against itself. You use another rag to take that dirt off. Or use some water and some soap, something else that will purify it to take, to take that off. And you won't even realize how that rag is dirty or, or exactly how it's supposed to be fully, unless you have another rag to compare it to, as well. Anyway. So, inshallah, there's, there's been some, some benefit in that. May, may Allah guide us all to Him and to what's important. Uh, and allow us to return to Him in every, every single second of our lives. Because that is truly a high station and a high blessing from Allah. Any questions about anything? Or any comments too? I want to hear some comments. I want to learn from you guys too. Uh, SubhanAllah. Like I said, I have a lot of work to do. It's, it's easy when you're up in front of people to think that you have all the answers and know a lot more. But this has its own trials as much as I can, inshallah, benefit others. SubhanAllah. You have to keep a check on yourself. Any other comments? Please. <laughs> Right, keeping the ultimate goal in mind. That's good. Oh, that's good. Anything else, Brother Musa? You you always have good things to say. About knowledge or about? About everything. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I just specifically about what you were talking about is that, uh, about, you know, basically uh, being in the right company at all times. And that's a good one. Basically, is the key to that, to that knowledge and that cleaning up. And that's what I reflected on a minute ago when we were talking about it is that what you hear, see, and read is absolutely unique as well, you know. Supposed to be real pure, so otherwise don't touch it, basically. Don't go near it. Mm -hmm. So if people talking about, uh, you know, not, you know, nothing to benefit you, you just don't want to be around that company. Or food that doesn't really benefit you to its fullest, you know, as small as it can be, don't eat it or drink it. Mm -hmm. You know, or things that are going to benefit you when you look at it, don't look at it. So the same thing with hearing. The biggest problems I see is that people, they want to practice Islam and they watch their old programs and listen to their old music and that kind of stuff. And I mm -hmm. see that as a 
complete contradiction because because you actually point to yourself. I mean, old old programs and stuff, yeah, as in like the, the stuff that they used to watch. TV, yeah, they would keep watching the same programs they watched before. They'll be listening to the same old music that they listened to, not well, there's a good music that they listen to, but the music that really, it's not, they bring them down, not really. And that kind of stuff. Um, you know, like people come to Islam, for example, from, uh, from different backgrounds, and they still watching the same old stuff. And go with the same old company, and they try to practice as well. And it was really helpful. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. Purity of many things and yeah, yeah, yeah. good company, good company. As the hadith goes, I, I believe, Amaru ala dini khalidi, fal yanzur ahadukum man yuqadid. Right? That, uh, 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 a person is upon the religion of their companion, of their friend. So let, let every one of you pay attention to and think about who you are making your intimate friend. Any other comments or questions? All right, so let's finish this material up. So, this first one, this is all common dhikr that we find. What's the first one? Subhanallah. Oh, it feels so good to say that. Subhanallah. Okay, right. Sub, subhana, everyone. Subhana. And make sure that that ha is there. Subhana. Allah. Allah. So put it together. Remember, what's what's this guy here? Hamzatul Wasl, right. So when we take one word in the, each word individually, it's Subhana and then Allah. But when we put them together, it's not Subhana, Subhana Allah. No, that Hamza goes away. Hamzatul Wasl means that it goes away when there's a vowel before it, or really when there's any word before it. Subhanallah, everyone. Subhanallah. 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 Right. Glorify, uh, glory be to Allah, or glorified is Allah. Right. Now for the next, the next one, I have to get into just a few points on the new material. So there are four particles, basically. Four. The most common are uh, there are four of them. Four particles that. Um, that have meaning in themselves, just like alif lam means the, um, but in English we say the house, the chair, the blank, two separate words. Whereas in Arabic, that join together. Alif lam is attached to, to, to the noun which comes after it. Similarly, there are four particles that have meaning, have grammatical, uh, grammatical function, uh, or really meaning, um, and, um, and they're also attached to, uh, to, to what comes after them. So one is fa. which Loosely, often translates as uh, uh, as so. So you'll see you'll see this uh, in in the Quran. Um, yeah, one example. 
I'll write the example in red. This means no, it's a command, no. Notice, um, this is Hamza Tawassal that it begins with, right? No. So in the Quran, we find, we find this word, no, I'lam, everyone say this, oh, sorry. I'lam. In the Quran, there's a, there's a part of the Quran that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. Know that la ilaha illallah. Know that there is no God but Allah. That specific verse is fa fa i'lam anahu la ilaha illallah. But what, what happens here? It's Hamza al wasl, right? So, is it, for one, is it fa'i'lam? If this is Hamza Tawassal, is it fa'i'lam? How would we say it? Fa'lam. Right, this completely, this goes away right there. So it's just fa'lam. Even though this seat of the Hamza, of the Hamza Tawassal, this alif is still there, fa'lam, fa'lam. So literally, it's, it's pretty much so, know that there is, uh, uh, there is no God but Allah. Fa'alam. Everyone say this for me. Fa'alam. Fa'alam. So here we have the so. We have fa. Is added to i'lam and, and then joined together. Just like alif lam is attached to, to what comes after it. So is, is fa. <coughs> Another one. So all these, uh, all these are, are particles, uh, kind of, um, and, and so they, their meaning really depends on the context. But this is an approximate meaning of B is approximately with. So, so let's jump actually to down here to talk about this. What, what is this line right here? Did anyone get a chance to take a look at this? This, this one right here. Right. Has anyone not heard this before? Not heard this sticker? Okay, right. La, everyone after me. La, hawla, wala, quwata, Notice, this is a wow with a shadda, quwa, and then since we have a fatha on the tamabuta, it's not quwa, it's not just a ha, since there's a vowel on the tamabuta, it's pronounced as a t, wala quwata, 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 illa, now we have, what is this, it's Allah, and then B. B and then Allah. So for one thing, they're joined together. It's a particle. There is no, no change literally or no happening. No change and no power except with Allah, in Allah. Uh, B is, is often, it's hard to translate precisely, you kind of have to do it just in context, however it is. But, in Allah, with Allah, Billah, Illa, Billah. So for one, 
the ba here is joined to Allah. For another, we don't say be Allah, billah, billah. We say billah. Even though Allah's name is Allah, we talked about in a previous session that the lamb here is emphatic. It's the only case in which it will be emphatic in the name of Allah. Therefore, we, the vowel that comes after that lamb is ah and not a. Ah. Everyone again say Allah. Allah. Right. It's, it's emphatic. It's mufakham in Arabic. Except when kasra or ya comes before, before that lamb. Except when we have a kasra or a ya before that lamb. That's when it goes, it, it stops being, being emphatic. That's why we say bismillah and not bismillah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Because there's a kasra before that, there's an i before it. And so therefore the emphaticness goes away. Did you have a question? Right, when it's a vow, yeah, yeah, when it's a vow. Okay, one more time. La hawla wa la quwwata La hawla wa la quwwata Illa billah Illa billah La hawla wa la quwwata Illa billah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Any questions about this? No? Okay. Another particle that's joined to what, what comes after it is is wa wa it almost always means and pretty much and So, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah means I testify that there is no God but Allah and I testify that, um, that Muhammad is, uh, is the messenger of Allah. That you'll often, uh, you'll often see that. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa ladhaleen wa ladhaleen so, and. But it can also, in certain contexts, it can also mean by, as in, uh, as in an oath. By, as in, uh, has anyone heard, wallahi? And someone says, wallahi. Like, by Allah, as in, I swear by Allah. And then Allah also swears in the Quran, too. Wadduha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-jim. Wadduha. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَاد That's the beginning of Surah Al-Duha. Allah isn't saying, and the morning light, and the morning, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, what and the morning? Right? It's, it's by the morning. Allah is swearing by, by that. وَالدُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَاد And by the night. Right? So sometimes it's by, but almost always it will be and. This is, um, um, so this is also uh, attached to what comes after it, but um, it's not so important as the others because you don't really see that it's completely attached because wow does not connect to what comes after it. Right, so you can't really tell. So here, here, wa, and here, wa. You can't really tell that it's, there's no space in between them. But essentially, there's, there's no space. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And then finally, we have 
li. Notice I'm doing, I'm writing the initial forms of the letters here because they're connecting to what comes after them and not the, the full standalone forms. <clears throat> so li pretty much means for once again approximation because you can't give an exact translation for all these things for or belonging to that kind of thing also in some contexts to li sort of how we say um, actually before we get to that when I say um, I'm learning Arabic with the book, as in like by the book, the book is helping me learn Arabic, I will say, well first of all, the book is Al-Kitab. That's the book. Al-Kitab. Al-Kitab. So when I'm saying I'm learning Arabic through the book or with the book, I would say Bil Kitab, Bil Kitab, just like that. That is attached to Al Kitab. When I say I'm learning Arabic for the book, as in maybe, I mean, you know, conceptually, I, I could say that. Like, why are you learning Arabic? Well, I'm learning it so I understand the book of Allah. Right? I'm, I'm learning Arabic for the book. I'm learning Arabic lil kitab. If I wrote, if I put a li in front of here, <coughs> like that, it, it doesn't look so, so pretty. For one, here, yeah, okay, also, as, as we talked about, if we have lam alif, we would write it like that. And now this looks like La, it looks like la, as in no, la al kitab, la al kitab. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. There might be other reasons for, for, uh, for this, other things to consider. The main thing is that when you have alif lam, and then you decide to put li in front of it, this alif which is the seat of the Hamzat al Wasl, goes away. Therefore, it's written Lil Kitab. And this is the only one of these four particles that this happens to. Those Lam, the, the, the seat of the Hamzat al Wasl, that Alif, goes away, it's dropped out in the writing. Even though for all of these, the Hamza Dwasal goes away in pronunciation anyway. But it's still written there. We still see it written. So, la la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We still have the Hamza Dwasal right here in billah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But if we're saying lillah, the Hamza Dwasal goes away. Therefore, we see over here. What's this right here? Alhamdulillah. Good. Yeah. Good answer too. Yeah, this right here is, is Hamza al Wasl, but right, I meant the whole the whole phrase. Alhamdulillah. Therefore for Allah is right there. Lillah. Lillah. And this is also something powerful about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu, Allahu. If you reduce this down, first now we have Allah, God, right? Allah. Say you decide to, to take away from the name of Allah, 
take that away. Look, I've taken something away from the name of Allah. What have you actually done? When you take away a letter from the name of Allah, you end up with Lillah, which means for Allah. You've actually added something. So you try to reduce Allah and you end up actually getting the reverse. <laughs> You're confounded. Okay. That's just an interesting point. Allah, to take away that alif seat, you get Lillah. Uh, now if you want to take it further too. No, we haven't covered this, but you take away the lamb, now you get this is lahu, which means literally for him, for him. So you still have a meaning here. First we had lillahi, well first we had Allah, then we had lillahi. So first we had God, then for God, now you take away the lamb. We had for God, now we have for him, which is pretty much the same meaning, lahu. You take away the lamb, you have what? Who? Who? Means he in Arabic. Who? Or huwa. Sometimes too. Huwa, if you were to complete, if you were to say the last vowel on, uh, on the word, it would be huwa. But the basic sound, if you're stopping on it, is who. That means he in Arabic. Allah is irreducible in his essence, irreducible. And then also, you know, you get interesting notes on, on that name too. Now that we know how to write Allah in Arabic, we can see that if you take a, uh, this is an interesting one I heard of when I was, when I was doing Omar in Saudi Arabia. Um, if you photocopy your hand, like just Wait a minute, right here. You take, you take a snippet there. It pretty much says Allah. Does everyone kind of see that if you look at your hand? Had anyone heard that before? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then there's that too, and then I've heard, right, 18 in Arabic numerals. We haven't gone over the numerals actually, but you're right. 18 in Arabic numerals, then 81, you add them together, you get 99, as in the 99 names of Allah, right? Anyway. Okay, so that's, those are these particles. Any questions about, about these particles? Anything? Yes? Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd kind of have to know, have to know the word, but, um, but you should, you can typically tell from, from context, right? So for example, the word fiqh, the fa is, is part of the root, it's not, we're just, I'm not just adding the fa, because for one, it's not fa with a fatha, it's, it's got a kasra on it. Um, also say, um, to a certain extent, a synonym of fiqh, as we were talking about it, is fahm. Fahm also means understanding. Um, here we have fa, right? But if this weren't part of the word, then we just have right, which uh, that can't really be a word. Ha and mean with with no vowel in between them. That can't really be a word. So we know that fahm. Is the full is the full word, right? So I mean, in different ways, you figure out in context which um, uh, whether a particular uh, letter, whether it's it's this particle or this this letter is part of of the original word, and it's not something added to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the spacing isn't really a big deal. I mean, right. 
next, like, thing would be, like, the next word, you know, like, the first word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in general, I mean, yeah, you should be paying attention to um, two spaces. So, for example, um, here, wait, what's a better example? Um, okay, yeah, right here. Uh, we have this word. Uh, okay, Muhammad, uh, no, this is the best example, I guess. Sorry. What what This means I testify that ashhadu anna. Um, so the dal does not connect to to what comes after it. Um, so if this this is two words right here, I testify that. Um, we we want to make sure there's there's space there because. Um, it would, if, if we're not putting much space in between the letters, then it looks like this would be all one word, which it could possibly be because the dal would not connect to that alif with, with a hamza on it. It would look, it would look the same with less space. So we want to make sure that there's some space there. Does that kind of cover your question? Okay. Yeah. So do make sure that there's space in between words. Right. And now the final kind of point that I wanted to cover or new bit of material is that which is called tanween in Arabic. Tanween. Actually I'm gonna write the name now that now that we all know Arabic. Alhamdulillah. I'll write the name of it in Arabic. Tenween, tenween. In the intentions that we read, we have the word ta'alim, ta'alim, teaching. Ta'alim means teaching. The root of it is ain, lam, meem, ilm, knowledge. Root of teaching is knowledge. But, but the word that's produced from it is ta'alim. This is in a similar form. Tenween. So the root of the word is tanween, is noon, well, noon, right here. If the root of this word, tanween, is this, what does this say right here? Noon, noon, right. Tanween, just as ta'alim means to, um, to make someone have ilm, to give someone knowledge, to teach means to give knowledge, right? or to make someone knowledgeable, make someone have knowledge. Tanween literally means to make have a noon, to make have a noon. Often uh, in, in early, like, English books written about Arabic grammar, they say nunate, to nunate, a word. What this means is the tenween um, is a type of, um, uh, it's a, a type of vowel symbol. Basically what you'll see is that we learnt we learnt the harakat, we learnt the three vowel symbols Fatha, Dhamma and Kasra We can do something additional with them We can double them So You'll often see this written out Now when you see the double vowels written out, that does not mean double the short vowel, i.e. a long vowel. When you see two dhammas next to each other, that doesn't mean that it's u plus u, meaning u. This is not equivalent, a, this is not equivalent to a wow. This is not equivalent to a kasra, etc. 
what it means is that it's that vowel followed by noon. When you see this symbol, the way you say it is un. An. In. Right. Yes. Sorry? That's right. That's right. Fathan. So, so one final thing to, to note here is that um, is that you'll see you'll see these three symbols: the double dhamma, double fatha, double kasra. Um, the double fatha actually needs a seat of an alif. It's the one tenween that needs a seat of an alif. Okay, what does that mean? That means that when I say uh, when I say uh, it like in the intentions, iftah lana fathan, the word is fath. Fath means an opening. Now, the vowels that come at the end of words have to do with grammatical function. And so it doesn't really change the, the, the meaning of the word, it changes its, its placement in the sentence. The way that it's functioning in the sentence, the grammar to do with it, is the reason that we, we have these, these tanween symbols um, on the end. And so when I say, uh, grant me an opening, or open me an opening, literally, in the, or open for us an opening, in the intentions, iftah lana fathan. Fathan. This is what happens. I put double alif up there. Tanween, uh, double fatha. Tanween fatha. But tanween fatha is uniquely, it needs actually the seat of, of an alif. Just like how Hamza needs a seat, tanween al fatha. Uh, almost always needs needs the seat of an alif. So fathan, fathan. Fathan mubinan. So that, that doesn't mean, once again, that doesn't mean this is an alif right here. It means it's a seat for the uh, tanween of fatha. Mubinan. Yes, question? Uh, so it's right after it. Mm, mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, a, another point is that um, since the, the alif is, is written here, um, what that means is that we don't, uh, when we stop on a word, we don't say the vowel at the end of that word. Um, and therefore, if, if we stop here, there's an alif written. And so if we're stopping there, then it, it becomes, a, it's, it's an alif. We stop saying an alif, even though it's not really an alif there. That's kind of a, a minor point that might get a little complicated right now. So if we're reciting to Tajweed, then, then uh, I say Fathan Mubina, Fathan Mubina, if I stop there. If I, say, if I stop here, I'd say Fatha, Fatha. I say it as an alif, but if I'm going on, I would say the, the tanween there. Fathan mubina, or fathan mubina. Right. Right. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. In a general rule, when pronouncing the best Arabic, and especially when reading Quran, is that you don't you don't say the the last vowel on that word. You don't say the last vowel on that word. Right. And so here, an example. Um, And we're almost done. Sorry for going slightly over. Okay, someone tell me, what, what is this right here? What does this say? Good, everyone say it for me. Muhammadin. 
Muhammadin. What, is, what does this say right here? Right, if we're saying all the vowels out, Muhammadi, Muhammadi, right now, Muhammadin. What does it say? Muhammadu. Right. Now, this? Muhammadun. Right. Muhammadun. And then finally, Muhammada. Now, if I add another fatha, what do I need to actually put on the end? I need an alif seat for that. So what is this right here? Right, Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Okay. Right, so... So finally, we'll end with the... with the Shahada. I've written this out, and now it's, it's our turn to, together, put the vowels in. Uh, actually, if I could have a courageous volunteer to, first of all, let's say, Ashhadu Allah Ilaha Illa Allah Wa Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasooluh Okay, so now everyone is going to have to do something like about two words or so So, first person Okay, yes, me. go ahead Yeah, just tell, just tell me if you know. what, what is it exactly? This one? The shed is on the alif instead of the lamb. Can we put a shed on an alif? No. No, not quite. The shed. Uh, oh, you mean it was? It is. I think it's no. I think it's. I think it's in the right place. Yeah, it's right above the lamb for both of these. Allah, ilaha illa. Right. Any any quick corrections? Yes. Good, yeah. You should. Yep, if you're putting all the other vowels in, you need to put sukun. Always need to put sukun. Yeah. One more thing in this word. Shadu Allah ilaha illallah. That would be La ilaha illallah. Not quite. The shahad is La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. This right, written right now is La ilaha illallah. Ilaha. Ilaha. But La ilaha illallah. It's what? The little alif. The dagger alif, as it's usually called. Right. Just like in Allah. We have, we have a dagger alif here. There's one in ilaha, ilaha. And then finally, Allah, it's a, um, it's a hamzat al wasl. Right. Okay, so everyone, ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Ilaha. Illa. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasooluhu Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasooluhu Any questions on that? Okay, Jazakumullah khair.
See you next week, inshaAllah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.